friends, welcome to The Stretch Run. I'm Chris Walsh, and I'll be joined by my partners, the oldie captain, Mike Oldham, and Justin Sampson, who is live at Keeneland as a credential member of the media. We've got a jam-packed agenda for you on this Master Saturday. Steak Saxon will be showing live from Keeneland and Laurel, as well as racing from Aqueduct Tampa and Golden Gate. We have full car Keeneland race sims, as well as Laurel and Oakland Stakes action. Chris Laramie will, uh, from Bet With The Best podcast will join us around 4 o'clock to go to the last five races at Keeneland. Oh, and we have Moncton, too. Let's get to it. Oldie, how you doing? Doing great. You know, it's Moncton's big day. Why wouldn't you be excited? Exactly. And Justin, live from Keeneland in the paddock. What's up, uh, brother? Shout out, shout out to Keeneland for letting us show the races as well as getting uh justin a media pass that's just awesome how's your trip been justin it's good the weather today is amazing this reminds me of being at home to be honest like it's 70 it is pure blue sky as you can see uh the last two days was a lot of rain uh it's great though i had i played in in the tournament yesterday and master of the seas beat me and that was fine and then of course this morning we're out at Godolphin, and who do we run into who's walking across the way? Oh, Mr. William Buick himself comes over, says hi. It was great, man. It was a very cool experience. We got to see Frosted and Nyquist and, you know, a bunch. And, of course, Cody's Wish. It, you know, I mean, it, I've, I've never got to experience that, so it was really cool. You know, Brad included me. Equinage user is awesome. He's here. We're staying at the same hotel. You know, it's they're a great group of guys. Howard from he has his own podcast, right? He got second in the tournament yesterday. So, you know, he won an NHCC. It was great, you know, and it's packed though. Like it is sold out today. People are out. It's it's beautiful though. Awesome. Yes, Howard with the HHH podcast. Uh, very good content there uh, as well that you all should check out. So we've got a few minutes to go before the uh, next, the first race at Keeneland. Uh, are you playing in the grade one gamble today? I am. I, I had already played. I'm just playing one entry, I think, with everything going on. And I, I talked to, to Scotty this morning. He's like, just play one. And it's the right move, to be honest. Like, um, if I would have won something yesterday, I, it might have changed that. But, um, yeah, it's – I think especially with doing this, just trying to focus and – you know, you got to play minimum plays, know the races you want to play, you know. So, um, yeah, I'm going to play. It's There's a lot of people in it. It's a big tournament. Yeah, we uh, will certainly be here to uh, root you on. Uh, Gary, Scott, Bluegrass, Dan, Alan, Karen, Kent, Douglas, Wiz, Anthony, good to see you all. Thanks for joining us today. Should be a fun day of racing, and uh, we will get into it here shortly. Have the uh, uh, I can't believe it's Buick, <laughs> uh, Father's uh, old, Oldsmobile, that's for sure. Yeah, that's that is for sure. The horse is in the paddock yet. I can't, we can't tell. No, Coming they're over. not here yet. What, what's that? No, they they should be soon, though, right? What's um, what time? It's yeah, they should be here soon. Not here yet. Okay. Um, Oldie, you want to get into an early pick five at Keeneland? What do you want to talk about handicapping wise? Yeah, I mean, we can do an early pick five. We have the the race sim, so we can start with the uh, with race one at Keeneland and put together an early pick five and talk about the race sim. So, um, you know, that there was definitely some. Interesting notes here, so I'm I've yet to put this actually together, but if I did, based on the the race sims, the twelve would be my single here. So we're going to reorganize, and you know, so I think that race five was probably a little deeper, but um, you know, what I did was I kind of organized the race sim for everybody in my notes here by tier as well. Okay. So you have the A's, the B's, and in some cases, the C's. Here, as you click through, and and you'll see in my notes. So, um, 
you know, I, I think you might be able to just get away with the six and the three in, in race two if you want to go narrow. Um, I'd agree, Odie. That's that's a good race. Uh, I, I might, you know, the the first race is interesting too. I think, but yeah, yeah, I I, I think that the race two is a great betting race to be honest. All right, so here let, let me share the race sims, and we'll, let's start with race one. So give me a second, as I mentioned uh, to uh, to Chris, I have to reshare my screen in order to make this work with the uh, with the media player here. Here we go. All right, so race one, and they're off. Uh, hold on, we didn't bring them in. Hold you guys on. gotta share. Yeah, I know. It's shared. It just needs to be added to the screen here. There you go. Really, you know, in the race sim, it doesn't look like anybody's really coming late. No, Nobody no. really changes. They, the position. horse just wires the field, right? I mean, yeah, that's the way it seems. It jumped to race four. Hold on. <laughs> I don't know why it's doing this, but that should have been where it was. We had uh, tuned in early, Justin, and they were uh, they were singing uh, my old Kentucky home there in the paddock. And, and now it's stuck in my head. And I told Oldie that if we get 500 likes today, Oldie's going to sing it next Saturday on the show. <laughs> that would be great. I was talking to David Harrison when they were doing that. I, it, David had called just to see how it went. I appreciate it. It was awesome. And, he, he called that they were singing. They did a good job. That was awesome. All right. So that, that's race one. I think one, three, four, eleven. I mean, the, the ten's showing a little Horse, bit there. Horses in the saddling arena. Or not in the arena. Saddling here. Uh, I'll be best. Looking right here. Mm, hey, you almost over. perfectly have set up what my uh, screenshot is. Yeah, you just got to find that tree. That's the 12. Out. That was the 12. There's the one. I, I, I think the one's got a legit shot here, to be honest. It, yeah. Looks good. You can flip your camera around, too, Justin, if you want. No, I need to. Hold on. That go. was the 10 horse right there. There's the floor. Too many horses and then the ponies coming through. Nine horse got stuck there. You do have to always pay attention, right? Yeah, don't get run over. You might, you yeah. might, you're, it might take your media pass from you. The, the yesterday, you know, they get loose in the paddock. You got that was the one thing I would say I appreciate from owning a few horses and the the Penny family. Um, you know, they taught me at least like about horses because you got to pay attention, right, Chris? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. Uh, getting kicked is not fun. Uh, I've been kicked. I, I I have surgery for it. It's not good. So I'm trying to see if there's a way to make your screen bigger so everybody can see it better. No. Mine? Yeah. No, that's the max it says it goes is one times. Um, so go ahead. Try the landscape. Try the landscape mode, Justin. There you go. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Sweet. All right, it's good to know. Well, we don't need to see that, though. Hold on. <laughs> Clearly scared some people off of the street. No. How are you? How are you? 
I'm doing good. Good luck. What's yours? I'm just here with people. Or one of them yours? No. I have tips. Love it. Oh, they wear That's green cool. jackets. They wear green jackets there at Keeneland Elto. Yeah. <laughs> What's the ten? The ten is uh is, is the ten the ward the ward horse here? Was that the ten here in this race that has a? Uh, I'm not sure the jockey who was riding that. Might be race two, but I think it's this race. <laughs> And horse is. Are you wanting to saddle? Yeah, ten horses a one horse. Buffalo Mike next year. Obi and I are going to Moncton. We'll we'll get to Moncton. We're we're going to have some Moncton capper here today. Who else has a race simulator at 24 Furlong? <laughs> right? No one. All right. As we look live at the Keelan Paddock, as the horse is going to be holding you on and on. Ready for race two? It's it's cool that they have the saddling area back here and like they did such a good job. I feel like of how let me know when you want to start race two. Okay. Once they leave the paddock here, we'll get moving on. Let me take a look else at what we have coming up. Uh, Laurel and Tampa coming up. Yeah, Laurel and Tampa. We may be get, able to get out there once. Uh, we've got about 19 minutes to post here for the first at Keeneland. There's the one looking good. I thought the one had a big shot here. It's Let me get over to Keeneland. Beachfront. Uh, Keelan race one. Gloriette. Gloriette's a horse to watch, uh, Oldie. 73% uh, in the money, 37% on the win, minus 12% on the ROI. You do get a nice PSR bump here going from 52 to 68 for uh, Ben Colbrook. A couple of money back in this race, the four. And the seven. But the one is top two star. The two, uh, or excuse me, the nine, Mikey Magic Gal. And it's the first time started for Wesley Ward. Edgar Morales rides. Been working uh, out in India. I'm going to mute Justin's sound right now because it's difficult to hear you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thanks, James. What time is Bruno's grammar lesson? He is an awesome addiction, addition. Yes. Yeah, he is. Um, those shows are going to get better and better. They're, I think they were just finding their stride uh, and, and making all that money. But great time. Still circling in the paddock here. Mm -hmm. Yep, but uh, Scotty and um, Bruno will be back Thursday night, and then Scotty will be back with David Harrison for the road to the NHC on Friday. The penultimate day of racing at Keeneland. There's the one that we talked about before that does look very well, and we all think has a decent shot to win this one. Yeah, Anthony, it should be uh, interesting to see how the track plays today versus uh, when it was just sloppy and muddy. Sloppy and muddy like us all. 
Yeah, uh, Oli is not in the Butler cabin today. Actually, five years ago, I was uh, I wasn't in the Butler cabin, but I was at the Masters, and uh, that's a wonderful experience. If you ever get a chance, make sure you do it. Bring lots of money uh, because they, they that that gift shop they have there is super cool. Jackson arrives, so saddling, and then they'll be hopping on here probably in a minute. I will. All right, Oldie, why don't you uh, why don't you put that ticket back up there again? Oh. And Yeah, there is a good report for for the one from Bruno for sure. Yeah, I think that coming over from Turfway, right, gonna look like gonna be on the front end and could be dangerous. The dirt has been so so speed speed favoring, right, for for a long time. I mean, it's just been the whole meet so far has favored the, the speed. Yeah, Tyrell, uh, he was not happy yesterday. Uh, neither was uh, Zach Johnson. He fired off a uh, an FU to the fans when they all applauded his triple bogey. But Tiger is off. 25 straight cuts, beats the record by Fred Couples. I'm sure Tiger has let him know that. All right, only I'm sure he has to. Yeah. All right, Oldie, I'm going to add your screen to the stage here uh, in just a few as this three horse goes by. All right, you're up. Hold on. Just building a ticket here. No, I don't think we need to go. Um, or, uh, yes, hold on. Eight. Three and seven. There we go. No idea how much you have a ball stick there. So there we go. I got a fifty-six dollar ticket to. All right. Open at Keeneland, uh, but let's watch. While we still have a few minutes here, let, let's watch another one of the race sims if we can. Sure. We hey, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm gonna go hop off, and then uh, I might come back with you for the next race, to be honest. Uh, but I'll be back, okay? Yep. I'll watch for you down at the bottom, and when we see it, we'll add you up. All right. I'll talk to you guys soon. Talk to you soon. See you, Justin. Bye. Okay, Aldi, you let me know when you want me to add. There you go. All right, we're going to play race two. And they're off. He gets a nice healthy lead. Mm hmm. And kind of comes back a bit too, right? Yeah. It's, it's three fires. It really looks like three six there. Is it? The format for the grade one gamble contest. I have that up here. So as Oldie gets to that, I will get you some information on that. All right, on to the next one. Let's go to race three. The 12 horse, at least in the race, sim looks like a single. And why is it not? Okay. 
All right, so the grade one gamble, uh, you can play that on Express Bet, Naira Bets, uh, New Jersey Bets, HPI, and TVG. It's a live money uh, contest. The entry fee is $3,500, with $2,500 of that going to a live bankroll and $1,000 to the prize fund. Players must wager a minimum of $400 in at least five races at Keeneland. Prizes include cash with an estimated 75 for first place based on 300 entries, as many as six Breeders' Cup betting challenge seats, and 10 NHC spots based upon the number of entries. Once we get uh, the standings up and everything else, we will follow along and keep you guys posted on who the leaders are. Right now, everybody at 2,500, looking through how many they have. Um, I'm showing 148 entries right now. I'm sure that will increase. Uh, it's a live money one, so if you do bust out, I do believe you can buy back in as long as there are four races left. It might be worth it. 12, 10, 8, 4, try box at Keeneland in race three. So the 10 and the 8 are big prices. Mm -hmm. And at the stretch, it looks like they'll be right there, and the 10's the one moving late, besides the 12. Also, a, 10, a 12 10 exact up based on the race. So, and then race four. They're off. I'm pulling up the, uh, the, the, the rules, Stephen. Just give me a minute. As they hit the stretch, the six fades a little bit. Fades a lot. Yeah. Three, it really six. looks like the three and the seven. But I wouldn't count the six out there at 31% and eight to one. So we might want to add the six there and play all E picks. And then the last really looks like it could just be one, two, but here we go. Last segment, we should have time to, to talk about the ticket again and make a few changes. 12's dangerous on the outside. So, Stephen, it's win, play, show, double, exacta, and or trifecta wagers. So, no pick three, four, five, or six. Super factor, super high five wagers are eligible for contest play. That's pretty much the same format as the Breeders' Cup betting challenge, with the exception is that Keeneland added in trifecta wagers. Um, though you do have trifecta wagers in the BCBC. That, that is correct. So, yeah, it's pretty much the same format as that. Player with the largest bankroll after the final race will be declared the winner. That's why I didn't have the seven there. The seven scratched. Okay. Yeah, you can't have the seven. I cannot. But if you want to add some prices here, there's the eight, four, and two. Ah, that's not a bad ticket. Is that the same one that you had before? Three, six, one, two, four. Yep, same thing. Yeah, it, it just depends if you want to add some prices here. I'd probably do away with that. Maybe you take a chance on the uh, on adding the two first-time starters there and play it like that. All right, Elite. Well, we have uh, about two minutes. I think uh, Laurel is going to go off, and then we can get back here to Keeneland. Anything that interested you at Laurel in race two, 
I see yeah. we have a horse to watch, the six Crusader Rabbit, who is uh, 44%. And 78% in the money, eight minus 8% on the ROI. Top pace, GSR, top EE pick, top EE morning line, and top win percentage. So kind of a lot going there, but it looks like the money's going to the seven. Which is interesting because I like the six here. It will. All right. You want to flip over there? You're still on Keelan. Give me one sec here. Laurel, race two, I have the six marked down as a key horse. Not getting back, which is interesting, like you mentioned here, Crusader mm -hmm. Rabbit. And this is kind of, I shouldn't have cleared that. So let me pull back up the Keeneland and I'll just switch screens. Got a price to start off the, if you're playing Laurel, by the way. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's leave Keeneland up there. Let's switch here. Um, Laurel race two. I mean, the six here. Second time out for uh, Brittany Russell. First time winner. It pretty much is a touch them all in terms of uh, E metrics here. You know, if you notice also, even though the ROI is minus 8%, which is still good overall, it actually wins at 44% when you have these combos rather than the 29% showing there. And that's what I'm starting to look for in these new horses to watch is when the, when the win percentage is higher than the actual win percentage. Um, those are horses I really want to use. And when it's lower... Um, those are ones that I either I'm going to spread or avoid. Exactly. Uh, and that's probably a good way to go through this. You think this horse is going to get crushed right at the, uh, right as they load into the gate? I mean, you would think, but this four also first time out winner and one pretty big. So, I mean, maybe people know something and honestly, you know, this one's not terrible either at seven to two, but I just thought the six was one of those horses you could play as a key horse here and, and, and hope for, and I, I'm shocked that you're getting three to one right now. Yeah. Stick with the colors. Super simplify. Super simplified. Yeah, I'm gonna turn the Keeneland bugler off. We'll see what happens here. Um, you could play a pitch three here and single the six. And I would go six, one, three, four, six, nine over Super two, four. Rabbit. If the six holds at five to two, I'll down out sound two to one. Probably be the nine to five like as, as they turn from home. And they're off. Probably. Well. Crusader Stick with the colors. Crusader Rabbit early speed. A discreet ops in between them racing in third position. Super simplify. Good night and God bless us. Five off the early pace. And Determined Blue is last of them all heading for the turn. Stick with the colors down on the rail. Leads away half length from Crusader Rabbit. A discreet ops right in behind them racing in third position. Two more lengths back. Super simplify. Good night and God bless. Still five or six to make up with three furlongs left to go. Determined Blue outrun. Stick it's with the colors time. going strong mid way on the turn. Here comes Discreet Ops in between horses with a nice bid. Crusader yeah. Rabbit is next and Super Simplify. Good night and God bless racing outside of that runner. Past the quarter pole and Determined Blue trailing the field. Top of the stretch now. Stick with the colors trying to stay. Stick with the colors. Discreet Ops gamely up on the outside in second. Then it's Crusader Rabbit. Good night and God bless is fourth. Just three to close now with a sixteenth of a mile left to go. Discreet Ops. Good night and God bless trying to pick up the, right. the fire outside. Here 
Here's discreet ops, discreet ops does it from good night and God bless a solid second. Sick with the colors and Christina Rabbit. One minute to Keeneland here. I'm getting you there right now. Okay, Oldie, so if I remember correctly, you need the 13411. Yes. Stuck on you comes forward. I'm stuck Long on you. Beach. Let's go, Brandy moves into line. Glamorous. Last to load goes in at the post. And they're off. There goes Gloriette right out for the lead. Stuck on you and let's go Brandy there I'm from the far me. outside. Get by is away running in fourth vacation. Fifth missile about. between we'll horses down toward the inside today. in the sixth yep. position. Fancy Prance moves up from seventh. Igwazu is eighth onto the far turn. Glamorous will be wide near the back of the pack in ninth. Followed by Andrea Beach who's back toward the inside in tenth. And Mikey's Magic Gal, last of the 11, 22.2 seconds was the time for the opening quarter. It is Gloriette who leads, and Gloriette leads it by two legs. Stuck on you is second Moving as they come toward well. the quarter pole. Missile tries to move up toward the inside, tries to get engaged here, is still third, now taking second. And then Let's Go Brandy is fourth behind that one. They've got to catch Gloriette, who's opened up on a six-length oh. lead, coming to the eighth pole. Gloriette yeah. by seven. Let's Go Brandy to the outside is challenging Missile for the second spot. Stuck yeah, on you really has even. lost ground, drops back to fourth, Doing 16th well. pole. Gloriette, Lawan Machado, the race is over. Gloriette huh. has the won it. Over. The battle does continue for second. Let's go. Brandy gets up to the outside and takes that second spot on the line from Missile, who is home third. Going to be close for fourth, either Whistle. Andrea Beach or Mikey's Magic. Wow. Much, much, much the best. Much, much, much the best there for sure. Um, wow. That was a pretty impressive performance there. Nice way to start out. It's hard to tell if anybody particular is closing or not. Uh, I think with this yeah. group, I, I don't think I would just come right out and say that we have speed, speed, speed again. But you want to take our crew through um, Gulfstream, 13 minutes. Second here. Let's... Steven, I think um, in, in a live money tournament like this, where um, you don't have that many mandatories, uh, I think you, for at least for the guys that I know that are playing and playing a lot of these, uh, they really don't look at the leaderboard quite yet. They're going to just stick with their opinions first and, and try and cash some tickets, get some bets down uh, that are successful. And then obviously leave some bullets for the end to kind of figure out uh, if you need to make up some ground and how you're going to do that. Uh, BCBC is a little bit different because um, more races to play, two days, so on and so forth. Here we go. Gulfstream race one. Six horses, a horse to watch. Awesome wind. Does look like it has a significant pace advantage as well here mm -hmm. you're getting a decent price gsr is very low though. for carlos and his david yeah and joe and his bravo yes you know so synthetic though right has this horse run on the synthetic before oldie it did yes last oh. time out and it, it it stopped against uh a better level of competition yeah taking a pretty significant drop here as well um palm uh, off track workouts so we're not going to get any videos from those the the current favorite a lukewarm is the ralph nix who i believe today is his last day before retirement yeah um, moving back out to visit his daughter stevie in california But yes, yeah, this is, you know, he's, he, he's going to have a little Fleetwood and a little Mac. 
going on there. Yeah, Fleetwood Mac and Cheese. You know, second time Knicks. Last 14%. time. 14%. Last time Knicks. Yeah, last time Knicks. We'll find out what that plays out to. This horse really hasn't ever passed anybody or ran. Um, Joe Bravo you know, had it during the week, either Thursday or Friday. I remember a CMP Dial tweet about it that uh, horse learned something new and finally passed horses. So, well, but I, this one does not appear. It, the, this one's taking a big, big drop, though. Yeah. Um, I will point out that all its works are one star works. Make all your works one star works. Yeah. yeah. You do have a big GSR on this 12 horse. Steven, be good. Yes. And, you know, there is this one positive synthetic effort at seven furlongs. I don't love this horse. Um, Do you have any video, workout videos for that one, Oldie? No. No. Remember, you can just click the stopwatch and it'll take you right there. That is true. And then that'll do that for every race that you roll through. Uh, good little tip there when using, if you just want to look at the works. I think that the nine looks pretty solid. You have the seven who is a former Chad Brown, but off a claim. I don't expect the seven to run as well off that claim. Uh, you know, the, the price is kind of right. Everything's lukewarm here. Yeah. Um, I'd probably take... Uh, take my chance on the the six. I'd probably play a six, eleven, nine um, exact a box here. Six, eleven, and nine. Okay. I mean, the prices are right. It should, but, 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 it should pay pretty different, decent. I mean, so let's look here. So at the probables, the six. To the 11 pays 31 to 1. The 6 to the 9 pays 39 to 1. Those and are good. yeah, the 11 to the, the 6, 23 to 1. The 11 to the 9, 21 to 1. And the 9 to the 6, 40 to 1. And 24 to 1 to the 11. So pretty good prices. No, those are all good. I mean, you just need to obviously like connecting is key, right? When you when you want when you want to play these, um, you're going to do a, a three horse box that's going to what run you six bucks for a dollar, uh, yep. at multiple times and hit it multiple times. If there's two horses you like in that three horse box, uh, definitely just box the two of them and uh, and see if you, you 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 can connect there. And the other one's kind of a saver at that point. Um, you had mentioned earlier that you kind of thought old Goldstream was a little chalky, at least in the early part. I just didn't have, wasn't just that it was chalky. I don't know that it's chalky per se. I just didn't really love anything. Um, you know, scratches definitely have affected this five for a long race where you in race two, so maybe a double two, you, you might be able to get this four home on the lead. Yeah, it does have a significant pace advantage. I guess you would be uh, guessing that the one or the eight might be up there with it. The one probably it needs to break and get yeah. out. Um, so we've talked all the time about how difficult that one post is on the Gulf Stream turf. Yeah. That's not a bad double. Will we go back to race one? Uh, and let's look at the problems and the double. Um, with the three horses that you were looking at for your box. All right. So the six to the four, 28 to one. Mm -hmm. The nine to the four, it just flashed and changed 30 to one. And the 11 to the four, 18 to one. Yeah. And that's, that's a decent payoff there too. Those are uh, dollar wagers here at Coldstream. 
we should have done a double with that one at Keeneland in the first race. We missed absolutely. That. We absolutely missed that. So we'll when we get back to Keeneland, we'll certainly look at a double. Um, oldie. Okay, I don't see Justin, so we're good there. Um, where are we at time wise here? <clears throat> Uh, Oaklawn first race is going to go off in right now. We're not going to cover that because we don't have Oaklawn live, but we got five. It might, might be worth a win bet on the two. There. As I just take a quick glance at that. I've Norman. seen worse. I don't have time to come up with a double because it's zero minutes to post the bet two and yeah, five yeah. to one what is the um as i look at that one as well oldie that is a silver horse to watch right uh, it does appear to be silver it's only a 14 percent to win but it is a top well let's see if this actually was a qualifier so six match anything, yeah. The six is tied for top. So that this was a in the old system, this would have been um, a EE top SOR long shot qualifier. Now the long shots changed a bit, and we are currently tracking that. So we'll let you guys know too once we have enough data to be able to see if that angle still works. Yeah, well, what we've been seeing all day in the new system is that the um, the the Scotty picks are doing well, uh, right around what 30, 35 percent. And I think blended with the top pick running first, the second pick running second and the long yeah. shot running uh, either first, second or third. It's somewhere in the 68, low 70s. They're going to post drag here into Gulfstream, it looks like. Oh, well, that would be just about right, correct? Yes. So I'm just looking at a, a double maybe to Spurrier. You also have another. Uh, and here's a case where this one horse who's a long shot, the... Uh, horse to watch algorithm is actually the win percentage is actually worse yeah so look for those two as ways to say yeah maybe i don't want to use that horse mm -hmm. for sure like i have a note on the three stumbled break that doesn't not all that helpful i love when i give myself not very helpful notes chris huh well, let's see your note Stumbled break. Okay. That was from. Did I miss it? Hold on. There should be a button we can hit where we can go directly to the note. We'll make a note. I don't even see it. I click on the wrong horse. I don't know. That doesn't give you the date you made the note either. No, might have to start typing that in there. All right, let's see here. So they're loading at Oak Lawn. We're a minute away from Gulfstream. We want to take a look at the horses on the track at Gulfstream. Sure, let's do that. And uh, you can take the viewers through. I will uh, be right back and hit the like button, subscribe. Uh, we do appreciate you guys uh, joining us today as we get kicked off here. We'll be looking for Justin shortly uh, as we get closer to Keeneland. Thanks, Mike. The 11, beautiful horse there. And they're off at Oak Lawn. The two is on the lead. Let's see if the source is good enough. 
getting some pressure from the five. Ended up getting two to one, on, uh, four to one on the two. Ladies and gentlemen, we do have a late scratch from this, the first race. It's number did. 12, Stephen B. Good, who's a late scratch. Refunds and exchanges available at well, all windows Stephen for 12, healthy, Stephen right? B. Good. Acting on vet advice and by the order of the steward, scratch to 12, Stephen B. Good. Keep down in Louisiana, down in New Orleans. Stephen be good tonight. Go, go. Go, Stephen, go. Nope. Two got caught by the fave there. Two, seven, eleven, it looks like, at, uh, at Oakland. All right, we're circling the track. Looks like a couple more minutes to Wapner here. Especially after that scratch. Guys, how's my sound today? I'm using a new system. Happy Lexington Day, David. David, of course, co-host of the of NHC Live, former NHC former NHC champion as well as the defending now silver champion from NHC. Uh, thank you, David. So uh, you know, please make sure you tune in to Scotty and David on Friday afternoon, Friday mornings as they take you through the important things you need to know when playing tournament play. We had a scratch. Stephen B. Good wasn't good enough and scratched. Oh, that was the 12, right? Yes. <clears throat> Top GSR. No, oh, you didn't. David Harrison in the house. Hey, David, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Good show on Friday as always. <clears throat> Got yeah. Lexi here as well. I know Lexi. That's uh, that's that's it's just criminal why they won't let people in the state of Washington play in tournaments. Justin had to fly all the way to Lexington. Horses is all right the gate. It's now post time. A lot of gap and moving in for race number one. First of 10 here today amidst beautiful weather conditions for horse racing. First race favorite is the 11 fast Chad. You are reminded the 12 was a late scratch here. Refunds on all wagers with the 12. They're working with the chorus. Johnny from Boston. Pickup ride there for Fernando Hara. Commercial from Boston. Vinny and Leo, Titan, then T.O. Tony and Fast Chad. Ten races on the program this afternoon. Back in right now, Tony. Hold on. Anthony. Looks like it could be. Me. It's working for me, Anthony. Refresh. Shut your browser down. Are you on mobile or desktop? That's always a good question to find out, too. Yeah. We've got kind of a golden they gate. Put in uh, Vinny and Leo. Golden gate. Area. Titan. Load going on. Then Tio Tony and oh, Fast Chad. Thank you, too, Elaine.
Fast Chad to take the outside. Tracks are fast. Turf is firm. We're set for a start. Racing at Goldstream. Awesome. In the middle, Awesome Wind gets the first call, taken on by a chorus down inside, splitting horses Vinny and Leo. Titan joins the top flight. They're almost four in line as they charge into the first turn. Amazing Jet saves ground toward the rail with Johnny from Boston. Then it's a length and a half back to Kuwait Towers, racing with the favorite Fast Chad. They're a length and a half in front of Morning Eagle, who drops better than 10 lengths off the lead. Second last with pace ahead of him, Will of a Warrior, and the early trailer here, and about 15 lengths behind at Trailer Looks Morning like a Eagle. Race. To the back stretch they go, 23 yeah, and 4 good. for the opening quarter. It's a stacking, packing group. Out three wide, awesome wind. Four wide, Titan. Two path, Vinny and Leo, and along the rail, a chorus. They were a length and a half in front of Amazing Jet, who gets Everybody a good setup for first behind, the, fifth behind the speed. And it's a length and a half to Johnny from Boston, encouraged already. Improving in traffic is Will of a Warrior. He's inside of Kuwait Towers. Out the back, T.O. Tony and Fast Chad. And Morning Eagle is still last of all through a 48-second half mile. They leave the backstretch and move on to the far turn. Three furlongs from the wire. A chorus has the lead. Titan three wide. Dropping back is awesome wind. Looking for room out the rail. Will of a warrior. He continues with some forward momentum. Amazing jet angles to the far outside. Then it's T.O. Tony as he right? past the quarter mile pole. From the back, well, it's Fast Chad trying to get underway with seven lengths to race. Plenty of hopes here. Kuwait Towers. He finds his best stride and comes on next. Off the turn in the stretch drive, it's Titan who wheels for home with a host of pursuers oh. on the far outside. Fast Chad is closing good ground. He is Fast Chad over the top for Jose Morelos, front and center at five to two. Fast Chad going away. He'll win on the class drop by two and a half. Close then for second. Vinny and Leo or Tio Tony. Fourth is one of a warrior. Then Titan win. in one four. Yeah, he got uh, at least one win. I think he's got a few horses uh, in today. All right, Oldie, uh, let's get back over to Keeneland. I've got you up on the screen. I'll get the video teed up here in a minute. Keeneland, let's look at, so we got 10 minutes to Keeneland. It yes. looks like, let me see if I can get Aqueduct to load here. Aqueduct race one off. Okay. We, we have try on race one coming up. Well, we'll get uh, towards the inside, Pichi Wichi towards the outside. The favorites are in between them as Hydra's trying to battle on. Diva Banker is right there trying to get to the entry mate as well. Here it looks beat, like gold. The big long shot's still there. Peachy Wichi down the center of the racetrack. Hydra just can't cut in the margin and trying to catch them all as trade secret on the grandstand side. It's Peachy Wichi who's now put a nose in front. Back Peachy Wichi. Battles on not giving in. Peachy Wichi back by gold. Down to the line. Back by gold. Back by gold. Comes back. Wins the photo over Peachy Weechee. Type third. Nice photo. Peachy Weechee. In the opener in one minute, 11 seconds flat. All right, only we got Tampa coming up here in two minutes. We are, to, I let Brad know that uh, people are having some problems. Uh, I'm guessing we're getting overloaded due to the grade one gamble. El Hydra. I feel like I've seen that Hydra horse at uh, an Aqueduct lose a bunch of races as a favorite. Or not a favorite, but just in general. It looks like it's lost every race it's been in since July of 23. So... Don't see how those two horses were sitting at three, at three to five. At Aqueduct. Yeah, you're right. I mean, look at this. That this is the pairing. So Diva Banker has won since uh, 2022, and Hydra has that one win at Saratoga, but you know, really hasn't done anything and really isn't dropping in terms of SOR. 
Correct. Can you get over to Tampa? Will it let you load Tampa? Here, we will give it a shot. We're on the turf here for race three at Tampa. I thought there was a lot of pace here in this race. Yeah, you've got the five, which is a uh, bronze. Should be up on it for sure. Yeah. You know, you, I thought the four was a little interesting. The three, who's the long shot. The three is a little more pace than I want here. Um, you know, the two with Camacho coming late and the one, you know, beat 62. So the one really feels like to me it should be the favorite. Thanks for that, Jay. Appreciate the, uh, Kind of words and good luck to you as well. Yeah. I know the team's working on the EE issues as we speak. Uh, Oldie seems to be doing okay. I'm having issues. I think it's uh, a little bit um, sluggish at the moment. You got a note on the two, Oldie? I do. It says game effort, late, too wide. Story of my life, I'm always too wide. All right, so maybe a pick three here? Sure, why not? All right, I'm gonna, I put together another ticket, so I'm gonna have to clear this stuff because you're not gonna play that. All right. You wanna try and beat this five or? I do wanna try to beat this five. Do this. Okay, we're uh, we're going in the gate, sir. You better hurry. Yeah, I don't think I'll get it in time. Five. Who's your top pick to beat the five? I like the wand. One. One's been better than this group. And your note was on the two or the four? The two. Okay. So I'd do something like that for eight bucks. There you go. One, two, three, four with two, three, five, seven with the five. Eight bucks for 50 cents, 16 for a dollar. Fire. Bam. Ready to kick off that middle pick through, pick four rather. Fire. There in the gate. Jason Beam on the mic. And the race is on. Caught him at a Beam good time. Katie's a lady from the outside. Covenant lady also forwardly placed those two as they come by the wire. It's going to be Katie's a lady, the favorite. Adamar Santos, intent on the lead, has it by a length and three quarters. To any port who's now up to second, Covenant lady on the stretch out settles back third. Timeless Rose, that one stable mates toward the inside fourth. A length and a half more to a million dollar monkey. And at the back early on, I'm blushing as Katie's a lady makes the lead pretty easily here, almost in front by three with six furlongs left to go. Katie's a lady. Bet down to three to five. And yeah, five she's five running five, a four, 22 and four. Five furlong race. Miles, Katie's a lady. Mm -hmm. Barrels onto the back stretch that three and a half length lead. Second Eddie Port. It's another three, three and a half. Back oh, to she's the third, a stakes horse. Monkey, Covenant Lady, their third and fourth. Timeless Rose is back. Given that, that colors I don't, seven or eight off the lead. That's, that's, fast. that's, that's a fast pace. I mean, let's see. Half mile happens. left to go. Still leads it by two. To any port, trying to slow it down up front a bit. Katie's a lady. The rider just took a peek over the shoulder. Sees no, two men advantage. Slow it down a little bit. Forty-seven to one, opening half mile. Katie's a lady past the three eighths, pulled the lead still two. To any port, million dollar monkey in the yellow jacket moving up on the outside. Come on, monkey. The second, timeless roses fourth now. Three and a half off the favored leader. It's another Comes two. The monkey. Back. Covenant lady, I'm blushing his trail throughout. Around that turn, Katie's a lady oh, went hard early horse. on. Here comes a run from Million Dollar Monkey on the outside. Eddie Port tries Long to shot. slip up the fence and rally up. Timeless Rose going to swing to the center of the course. Katie's a lady is surrounded. Eddie Port down at yep. the inside. Million Dollar Come Monkey. Up, Timeless Rose down the far three, side. Final six three. to go. Eddie Port coming through inside of Katie's a lady. These are the two that go on. Eddie Port, Katie's a lady. They drive to the wire. Full nice. finish. Might have been Eddie Port. It's very close there with Kitty's a lady. Yeah, had a camera guy to today. Do. Another one here in race. So put a note on that too, Oldie. Don't use again. <laughs> Don't 
please and thank you. Do not Basically, use. Basically, if yeah. you played that pick three, that that's a boom start. Yeah. Um, I am now three legs into the Tampa early pick five as well. I already have my single home. Excellent. So. And this is what I'll show you what I have left here. Same, so it's the two, three, five, seven. But I was in the last. Justin. What's up, buddy? What's happening? Uh, you know, watching some races. Holy just uh, got a Scotty long shot in. Nice. Off of I, I, so, I, I like it. Two, nine to one, beat a three to five favorite. Well done, man. That is perfect. Uh, they are, hold on. We're out on the balcony. There's this balcony. I'm in like row two. So down below, we're on the fourth floor. Uh, they're way on the dirt. Um, I got Brad here with me. Hold on. He's coming to say hi. And you should be able to talk. Hey guys, hey, how are you? Not bad. How's things going? Yeah, finally a beautiful day here, Caitlin. Finally. Excellent. Excellent. You got to let us know uh, who your picks are when when the uh, when the races come up. We won't give them out till they get yeah, you know, go I'm, out. I'm, I'm playing this race. Brad is not. You're not playing this, right? No, I, I'm probably race seven before I get involved. That sounds about like right, Brad. Um, Brad doesn't typically get, get involved till the end. Uh, yeah. Justin, stick it. Uh, well, you got the phone on, so you can't do it uh, in terms of texting us. But let us know when you uh, when these guys go off where you're uh, what you're thinking here. I don't think anybody fired in race one. Uh, no, somebody did. James Williams, a bunch of people fired in race one. The one that one horse was the best. That would have been my top pick. I actually liked the one eleven there. I didn't play it obviously, but the one took so much money. I assumed a lot of people probably played it. So you know, it it, it for sure was the speed of the race on the dirt. It's been speed favoring, right? So it wasn't a surprise. And the horse looked good in the paddock. You know, when we were in the paddock. So that's the current leaderboard there so james williams uh i don't know what he bet in the first one but after race one he luck, went all the way up from 2500 to 8960 uh, so John, they're they're about to go let me you don't want to see the back of people so Looks like we got the six still to load on the outside and then the seven, and then we should be good. Yep, they are getting in. I have got the race up Going in. now. They are at the post. I keep the seven for third place in most bets. Roja Bay the, from the, the inside. Three over the six, and now here's Sassy Walker from the outside. Leon Champ and the Roan the Runner horse. kicks in. The Roan Runner moves up, takes the lead from Sassy Walker toward the far outside. Now Sassy Walker puts a neck in front as they head up the back stretch and continue their battle. Liam's Champ is between that pair in third. Roja Bay is fourth down toward the inside. St. Benedict's Prep. Is Wait a minute, back to Justin? In a gap of three more lengths Yeah, back. the three over the, the six, eyes seven. Of gold. I keep the seven last and third, though. 22.31 seconds. They had to try. Turn. The Roan runner yes. is the leader. Leads it by three quarters of a length. Sassy Walker second up on the outside by a length. St. Benedict's Prep swings up the far outside. He's moves up looking really relaxed into third, Still right two now. lengths off the lead, though. That Liam's Here champ between sex. horses as hmm? they round the far turn. And Roja Bay tries to find running room. Does move up two positions against the rail, but still third. Five lengths off the lead as they turn for home. The Roan runner is the leader. St. Benedict's Prep two lengths away. And second in a gap of two Back to Roja Bay, who's third toward the inside. Liam's champion so not run. coming to the eighth pole. The Roan Runner still leads by two and a half, three lengths into the final pole. St. Benedict's Prep is still trying, still second. Roja Bay third to the inside. 16th pole, the final try on, for St. Benedict's Prep. And St. Benedict's Prep will oh, just, no. just keeps moving and gets by St. Benedict's Prep, Luan Machado. That, to win it. That, that was close. I'll the Roan Runner was home second. Roja Bay was under the wire third, and Liam's champ was fourth.
remember the race sim from that race too had the had it six three and really nobody else close. Mm-hmm. Six just got up in time there. All right, Oldie, where are we at now? Looks yeah, like we've let's got... Take a quick look at, let's take a quick look at that race sum again. Okay. Maybe. Laurel Park just had a $31 winner in the five. Yeah, I thought Laurel had a lot of prices today. Well, Oldie, I believe that keeps your Keeneland pick four going, right? Pick five, yeah. We were just three six. Five, yes. Yeah, you were uh, three six there. Yep. Single with twelve in the next race. All right. So you want to here pull up my screen for a second? Sure. I mean, how killer, as Scotty would say, how killer is the the e race have been so far today? So. Called the first the one horse in race one, and tell me that other than the fact that it has this middle move by the six here, and then the three coming on, mm -hmm. but it called the six by a nose too. Yeah, it did. I don't know what that is at the. The top of Scotty's screen there when he recorded the stuff for me, but uh. training double for Ben Colebrook. Yes, and 1788. You always know it's in Keeneland if um, if you get those funny numbers and that change. All right, let's see what we have coming up here. Uh, we got nine minutes to Gulfstream. We are, if you played our double. At Gulfstream, which I'm trying to get. You got Tampa up right now. I know. I'm waiting for you to, to catch up to my fingers and let the fingers do the walking. Aren't we all? All right. Let's see. We're Here we go. We are alive to the four horse in the double. Mm-hmm. And if we look at the will pays here, that doesn't look right. <laughs> it was showing the three there. So let me just refresh here. Here we go. There we go. So we're alive to a $16.40 to one double. I played it for 10 bucks. I don't know how much you play, paid it for played it for um, at home, but, you know, seemed like a, a good aggressive play there. Also no, live. Good. In yeah, a good aggressive play there because you, you played against the the bigger favorite there and you got rewarded. Uh, you got rewarded with, um, with the Scotty Longshot. Well, and, you know, you're taking the favorite in race one. And the favorite in race two, and you're getting sixteen dollars and forty cents to one. Yeah, not bad at all. All right, so we still have seven minutes here. We could do a pick three, a pick four. You know, if we really like this four horse, this could just be a magic horse here. At Gulfstream, we don't have to. To play this all that big. Man, I am just not having any luck at getting EE to load for me, Oldie. Yeah, it's working fine for me. Well, that's great. The rest of us would like to get in too. Yeah. I'm doing a real full reload, so. I do wonder, you know, as I look at Gulfstream, what do we think of this one horse? 
Could you make a hat? Could you make a brooch? Could you make a pterodactyl out of this one horse? Um, you'll probably make a brooch out of it. You make a brooch, okay. It does look like the three and the five are solid plays there. Two hasn't won in a while. The other horse that's a little interesting is the please a horse off the clay off the move from Maselli. Mm -hmm. And then the one horse, long time Gulfstream horse guy, whatever you want to call it, Boca Boy. Yeah. Uh, I think I'd take a pass on Boca Boy. But, you know, for 24 bucks, you could do worse than this. Mm -hmm. You get the four home, you're probably in pretty good shape. I don't know why I tried to regenerate that when I didn't make any changes. <laughs> I do that all the probably time. using too many horses here. We can look at while well, we have time, we have five minutes. We can look at the Bruno works here in race seven, race five. I mean, you know, you have this Fletcher horse, second time on the turf, two star works, your e top pick, your second pick, shortening up, losing a little GSR. Also, two-star works. There's a back three-star work from a while ago on the dirt. You got your long shot. Nobody really seems to be working like it's a maiden special weight. No. But the Mott Curlin horse is a little interesting to me. Look at the, the GSR bump going back to the turf. Didn't run the first time going seven and a half, though. Nope, not a lick. No factor. And then Lewis, second time. Not great with her second time numbers, but just missed last time out. Does get Luca and his Panici. I cannot get Here, It's a different jockey colony now, too. True. You got Maker and Zayas on this two horse. And this horse could be sneaky. Big GSR jump. There, I would probably add that horse and take off something you don't like here, like the you know, I'd probably try tossing this eight horse. Who's the favorite? I know you like tossing favorites, so. I do. Right now, I'd just like to be able to log in. All right, that's what I would play. And... Karen, Karan doesn't agree with us there on the four horse. He likes the three horse. What do you guys like at home? Or at the track or wherever you are. Hopefully, sorry, you are at the track. So if you get the single home, I think you got a pretty good shot. It's all about this first leg. As we near Gulf Stream. They 
Can we pull Gulfstream up here? Yep, getting there right now. Saddle, just one minute away from the early pick four. Best of luck. Best of luck. This is on the Ford Gulfstream. Just for once, it would be nice to uh, get an easy lead here. Which one? The four horse. Well, welcome. Welcome, Warren. Uh, yeah, it, everybody loses a lot. Uh, that's that's just part of the game. But hopefully we can give you a couple of tips or two to uh, help you catch a couple of tickets today. Who are you on here, Mike? We are single four horse. And the pick four, first leg of the pick four, and in the double. Here. Still time for your wagers. It's race two at Goldstream. It starts the early pick four. We're sprinting on the turf. I'll take, it looks like we're five minutes from Aqueduct. I'll take a quick look there and glance there and be ready for you. Uh, we have a Brad Cox horse is getting crushed at Aqueduct. First time starter. Welcome, Tony. It's about time. Tony, what do you think of this four horse at Aqueduct? I don't seem to get off the works that this horse should be one to two. Mulkey for Manny Franco. Uh, it's been a while, Holdy. Could this be the day? It is a four horse. He could jump off. He could. It's, it's a happened. four horse in a maiden race. So, yeah, I mean, it could happen. Got a gun runner in here, Holdy, for Linda. Two gun runners. Mama's got a gun. Two star works across the board. You got Jose and his Lascano up. Linda's got a gun. I mean, even the David and his dog doesn't deserve to be 27 to 1. No. You are correct. Which one's your top pick to beat the fave? The one horse. Okay. Tony says the one horse at five to one was your favorite uh, or second choice on the morning line. Approaching the gate. Last chance to wager. First chance to wager. Only, uh, only, only 453 more likes for you to sing my old Kentucky home next week. Ah, uh, don't you guys, you guys got to hit the like button so that I can sing my old Kentucky home because otherwise I'm not allowed to sing on the stream. That's or so I've been told. Yeah, 500 likes is what'll do it. Hit the like button. Uh, Goldstream Tony the Four. The horses are at the gate. It's now post time. A lot of up and moving in for race number two to kickstart the early pick four today. Race Thanks favorite more. is for Queen Karima under jockey Edwin Gonzalez. She's very quick early. But First start of the season yet? for ticker tape home.
Let's see if we have some start back. going up now. Queen Karima, Why blue colors of Hee Haw Racing Stable, draw me outside. It's Yeehaw. right up front to complete the line. David and Tony on the Five furlongs on the turf, start of the early pick four. They're in the gate. And we broke some. And nope. they're off. Bad start for hunting Coco at the back. Queen Karima away alertly and right to the early lead from the rail. My Lady James comes out firing. These two get acquainted and they work two better than Shagu, who comes away in third. Up in the middle, it's right up front. And in between horses, it's three girls. Then comes Ticker Tape home. She's about four lengths off the lead in traffic. At the rail, hunting Kogo and Loretta is last. And leader, My Lady James. Taken on again by Queen Karima. They're now heads apart. Shangji is now racing into the clear from third. Outside fourth goes three girls. Far outside, right up front. Sliding through, hunting Coco. That'll shuffle ticker take home at the back. Angling Slavretta. They're at the top of the stretch. Off cover now. Here comes Shunji to take on Queen Karima. An eighth of a mile to go. Queen Karima still in front. Shunji is second. Loose for the drive. Hunting Coco down the stand side. Slivretta with a late rally. They come home for the wire. Queen Karima has the lead. It's Queen Karima in front. Close then for second, Shunji or Slivretta. All right, Oldie. Let me show you something here real quick before we get over to the duct. Uh, let me get my screen ready here. That's a that was a ten dollar double for me there. Very nice, Oldie. Very nice. So take a look here. Who's in third place, Oldie? Uh, let me get that shared so you can see I, it. I was going to say, I have no idea because I can't see it. There you go. Gotti and his McKeever. Went from 271st place to, uh, all the way up to third there. Don't know what his wager was, but obviously uh, he had something good. He's made two bets, uh, so he has three left. All right, he's got three left. Let me see how many people actually um, are in this. They were expecting 300. Looks like they got 282, so they were a little short this year. So, Aqueduct, I'm just going to take a shot against the favorite here. Oh, we got a trainer in here. A uh, recently retired trainer. He just retired. Evan Tromer, Dylan Donnelly, Eddie Olchek in the house. One wager in. Not a winner. Carl Broberg. We should really have a nickname for Carl Broberg. He's the slayer of Texas. Uh, of the Texas Racing Authority. Yeah. Ellis Starr, Matt Bernier. Looking for Justin. Scotty McKeever has two entries. Yeah, he has not played on the second one. They're going in the gate at Aqueduct if you want to pull that up. Sure. In my old Kentucky home. Hey, hey, don't tease him. I do my best Jim Neighbors impression singing uh, Back Home Again in Indiana. Oh, yeah. That was a tradition for the, uh, the 500, for sure. That's Mulkey. It's Mulkey who's the favorite. Is Would you use here, Oli? The three? The outside from Eastern Star. I played again. I used the five, the three, a nice trip is the two, and the one. Third is now a length and a half behind the battling duo. They are about 10 lengths in front of the box. Mama's got a gun. Moves towards the inside here of Lafayette. 
Lots of pressure on that four. The front two continue to throw it down and try to join them three wide as Lake Alamaki holding the rail. That's Mulkey. The favorites got the lead. He might. Horses. Here comes Eastern. Maybe he'll grow Coming one of those. Uh, journey up on the outside. Sitting just off of those pace setters has now got the Bruno Magic Lights. It's Mulkey who battles on, but Lake Abenaki nope. at six to one has now put a neck in front. It's Boom. Lake Abenaki and Della Davis kicking away inside the final 16th. Lake Abenaki can open up by two. Lake Abenaki nice. wins it. Mulkey second. Then That'll work. Are holding on for third. Over Even three. favorites all over the place right now. In one minute, 11. 0. One minute, 11. 0. 0.5. I, one to two just made no sense on that horse. I could not. Based on the works I was seeing, it was getting bet because it was Brad Cox. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's actually what I played. All right, there's your ticket there, pick four. Let me get a little screen grab of that so we can follow along. And again, you don't have to play giant pick four tickets if you have strong opinions. Correct. Uh, I saw one this week for two bucks that someone had sent me. Uh, was it uh, Turf Paradise? Um, short, small ticket, $24 cost for a $2 base, paid two grand. Yeah. Yes, Steve. Uh, the hurdle tracks mm -hmm. are, and the only only one to really play is Moncton, because they Can go. We show, do, after Tampa race four, which is coming up right now, uh, we're alive in a pick three there. I'm alive in the pick five there as well. So let's uh, let's go to Tampa race three, and then I think we'll have time to show a Moncton race them. Sure. And, you know, Moncton, go, they go 24 furlongs there. They don't mess around. Those Tryon people, they go like 17. I mean, come on, man. If you're going to do it, you got to go 24, 24 furlongs. And and Moncton is crazy. Uh, I don't know if the steeplechase got back to us and whether or not we could show it. I don't want to get us in trouble but and show it. But they actually, like, run over a, a two-lane road that they put about this much dirt over. So when when people talk about the crossover at Santa Anita, I don't want to hear it, man. These guys are running over a road. We'll have a little Kentucky's Finest here, uh, Oldie. Sounds good. I'll pour one for you, too. Taking my daughter out tonight for her 18th birthday to downtown Chicago. Nice. Happy birthday to your daughter. Everybody here uh, sends her best wishes. The cool thing for me uh, is that Oldie's daughter is going to um, going to school here in Florida, uh, be near me. So I uh, hope to see you down here uh, frequently. I hope that, I mean, I don't want to intrude in my daughter's life. I want her to be able to enjoy college without me being there breathing down her neck, but uh, hopefully I'll have several opportunities to come down there. Yeah. All right, Tampa. We miss it? No, uh, they are getting ready to go to the gate. I will get that up here on the stage. One on the seven derby gift. As Glitter Girl, the gray, moves up to gate six. Here's Cozy's Palace. Charlie Marquez coming forward. Derby Gift coming up. The green gate. What do you got, Martini's Amicus? Green light, is that the, will be all set our light the color there? The ultimate six getting underway. I think so. I, know, I still can't log in. Here. I didn't out. log out, so that Here's might be why. Gate. Really yeah, I'll uh, I'll deal with that. The inside later. Rail. As long as you can log in, then we're good. Just don't expect a lot of commentary for me. I can't spot anything that I can't see. Right. I could try on mobile. You can always say, "Hey, head back behind the starting." Click on this and look here. Yeah, we have Laurel Race Four. We have the race sim coming up. There as well. How much time do we have? We got two minutes. We can show. Once again, heading forward. Hey, Greg. Greg. Greg the ultimate Welcome. six here. 
Now Glitter Girl acting up there in gate six. So once again, about set for a start. Heavenbrook, amazing. Yeah, race is on. Glitter Girl came away last. Derby Gift got off to a fast beginning and goes out to the early advantage. Gigi's Dark Star from the outside. Dever Warrior driving through in that second flight along with Cozy's Palace time to Salsa. In behind them comes Fiddler's Hot Pleasure in the Red Silks, who's back sixth. Glitter Girl off to the bad start, rallies up from seventh, takes over sixth. Three more back to Martini Zamico, who's the trailers. Derby Gift takes him to the far turn. Time to Salsa. Moves up closer now on the outside. Draws to Always the neck. time to Salsa. By the three-eighths pole. Time to Salsa on the outside of Derby Gift. They're two lengths clear. If Dever Warrior, GG's Dark Star in the pink colors, out four deep. It's another three and a half for four. Back to Cozy's Palace, who's fifth. Dropping back there is Glitter Girl as they wind around to the top of the stretch. Time to Salsa is the leader. It's time to Salsa in front by a length. Down on the inside, Derby Gift. You're happy, you're running out wide, Dever Warrior, Gigi's Dark Star. Um, the, the two horses side. that are running Time into each other. Leads it by the eight pole. Plus the Salsa. two in the side on the inside there for Derby Gift. Time for Salsa Derby and Gift. And the Here three comes Dever Warrior, running. Gigi's Dark Star. Four of them fan across the track. Dever Warrior and Time to Salsa. Some value Dever out of Warrior this. just in front. Dever Warrior got it. Yeah. Those two horses could have Confident. not run into each other. One of them probably would have won. Overtime. Likely. Uh, all right, where are we going now? Keeneland, Oldie? Uh, Laurel, we have a race in to watch real fast. So let me get that up. Okay, I've got Laurel keyed up and ready to go. And then we can get to Keeneland right after that. Let go. All right, waiting for you to get the sim up. It is up. There you go. And we're off. So big pace advantage like they mentioned. Also an EE horse to watch. Coming on late is that two horse in Intrepid Daydream. So the, the race him thinks that sweet child of mine will get caught. I love that name. Little Guns and Roses. By Intrepid Daydream, which is also easy for somebody else to say, but not me. Um, but is also the uh, the one to five favorite there. And at Keeneland coming up, we also have our single in the early pick five. Yep. So do we have, can we pull Laurel up here? Now, I'll sweet shot of the line. Sorry, just texting with Scotty to try and get these issues resolved because I can't even get to intercom. Objection at tamper. I object what at tamper. The the tempo? Well, if it's you, not, I'm sure it's the, the seven on the five or the five on the seven. <laughs> Probably right. Not gonna help you. It's fine. I mean, I'm in the pay lag. Yeah. Just ain't gonna pay as much as it would have if one of those other two horses won. All right, Oldie. After this, we're gonna go um, fast and furious down. over to Keeneland. Well, let's just keep an eye on King. 
Keeneland, I'll keep one eye on there in case we have to switch there. We got to switch there. Cats in the timber. Second wire finish. Yeah, I would switch it to Keeneland. You want to do this? Yeah, we can go. But I go Keeneland sound. Sweet child of mine is first away. Dr. Abby up on the inside. And they're off. I like how the two horse. Seca Diabo was off a step slowly. Even though it's in, comes a Beezer out oh, for the lead. Sir Grayland paved in gold between that percentages. pair up close in third and the opening stride. Summon your courage. Moves up to the far outside. Now taking fourth. Moving to Kentucky. Moves with that one in fifth to the far outside. Then a gap of five more lengths. Back to Irick Ridge who is sixth to the inside by just ahead. Unreasonable trail seventh to the outside of that one as they head for the far turn. And then further back east from west and Zeka Diabo at the back 22. 0.65 seconds was the time for the opening quarter. Sir Grayland against the rail leads it by a half length. Paved in gold goes second by a length. A summon your courage is going to be wide around the far turn. Moves in the center of the track is third. Still a length and a half off the lead. Moving to Kentucky is fourth. Hugs the rail around the far turn. Beezer drops back losing ground now as Irick Ridge moves by that one into fifth as they turn for home. Sir Grayland is the leader. Leads it by three lengths with a quarter mile to go. Some Summon your courage, trying to find more as they move off the far turn and into the stretch, but is still in second. Irick Ridge takes to the outside from oh. third, coming past the eighth pole. Oh. Sir Grayland chased by Summon Your Courage and Irick Ridge. That pair still five Not lengths away courage. as Sir Grayland strides on by the 16th pole. Irick Ridge goes to second, but Sir Grayland and Ray Gutierrez Sorry, in front to win it. Irick Ridge was home second. Summon Your Courage was third. Yeah, and then we got the two over there, Holdy. Pretty much what the uh, pretty much happened exactly the way the race him called that one. Yeah. All right, let me get your screen back up here. I just got an email. Yes, Buffalo Mike, uh, Tampa. The Scotty picks have ruled there. That's primarily why the change was made. Uh, to go over there, uh, I have a links oldie that Scotty just sent me that I'm going to try and get into. We have a horse to watch here at Gulfstream. We're also alive to the pick four here, I believe, which was, I can get that up here. It's coming. <laughs> there we go. So we're four, five, seven, eight here. So we have none of the firsters, but we have the three to five shot for Sano, Sano who I would never trust with the three to five shot. No. We have fastest for Cassie. Um, interestingly, not putting Edwin up there. And then you have Safi and his Joseph. Got Scotty in the house. What's up, guys? Uh, technical difficulties. So I just tried the link you sent over and. Uh, yeah, it's, it's telling me invalid email or password. You should be good now. Um, from what I can see, I don't know what. We got hit with something, and Brad is on it right now. Um, but I think you guys should be up. But I sent you a test link as well, but I think you guys should be good. 
Yeah, it's still giving me invalid email. Oldie's able to get in, so that is good. But okay. thanks for joining. It's always good to have two on here going yeah. through everything. Um, hey, I see you're in third on the damn. Yeah. This is awesome. Yeah, I've got two entries. I haven't even played in one of them. and We saw that too. <laughs> yeah, and so, but uh, yeah, I think, uh, are the, I think the servers are up, you guys. It, um, refresh your screen, and I think you should be okay to go. Sorry about the issues. You know, with um, some of this software, it's sometimes, as you guys know, it can happen. But um, we had that big long shot just win over it. Came, I didn't play the race, thank God, because I, I wouldn't have had that first time starter, but that horse was ready to rock, wasn't it? Yeah, we, we were single to the 12 there. Um, yeah. But how about what the race sim did the first two races, Scotty? In, insane. Yeah, insane. And and Buffalo Mike has been telling us that, and I, I saw this yesterday, but the last couple of days at Tampa, the, the, the the, the the Scotty picks that are back are killing it there. They are killing guys. I told you I was testing it for a month and a half. Remember we were going over that, and I said, guys, you are going to die when you see these these new algorithms. And they are. If you look from the very beginning, there's not been a down day. There really has not been a down day. Yeah, and and you know, just so the folks know, uh, uh, we were on what like for three and a half hours the other night going through all of this stuff. We yeah. were, you know, uh, we, we're, we're not just having, you know, fun, you know, high five conversations. It's really digging into the data and looking at everything and making sure that, uh, yeah. that it, it gets it right. That it gets it right. And, and so that's why it took a while to test. But I mean, if you look, it doesn't matter. You go to any track and you'll see it's like they're, they're killing like Tampa today again. Yeah, it's true. Like, let's look at Tampa real quickly. I'm sorry if I was interrupting anything. I know you guys were doing a ticket, but but like Tampa Bay Downs, the Equinage second pick beats the Equinage long shot over the Equinage top pick. Race number two, the Equinage top pick over the Equinage second pick. Race number three, the Equinage long shot pays 2160 over the Equinage top pick over the Equinage second pick. And in race four, the Equinage top pick beats the Equinage long shot, which beats the Equinage second pick. That's in the yeah. first four races. You would have yeah. had all the times. Don't go look at don't go look at Remington because it's just killing it there too. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah. No, and, oh, I, Anthony loves Remington. Is Remington doing good too? Yes, Remington is doing well. Uh, I got done with the coaching class last night. That's all I did. And it oh, was so good. We, had, we had 11, 11 folks on yesterday. So. Wow. Oh, you're able to get 11 people on there. That's we were awesome. able to get. Uh, I tweeted the living hell out of it to get as many as we could out there, uh, and definitely it's something that you guys want to do. Go to equinedge.com. The coaching classes are free. They're uh, Wednesday, Thursday, or Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, various times of the day and night. Alfredo does one in Spanish. What day and time is that one? I think he does. Fridays, I think. No, I'm the only Friday. But I'm not sure what time it is. Uh, what time that is? But yeah. um, don't come, don't come Friday and speak Spanish because I will not be able to help you. Uh, I, I can okay. point and look at stuff, but let's see. Okay. I'm looking. I'm looking at. I'm looking at. Uh, well, I'm trying to look at Remington Park. If it'll give it to me. Let's see oh. here. And Scotty, we're alive on this twenty-four dollar pick four. At Gulfstream. Oh, you are? Oh, yeah. Remington. Yeah, you're right, guys. I'm sorry. Remington just, yeah, crushed it last night, didn't it? Yeah. Ask Manny. I won a lot of money at Remington last night. Way to wow. go. Okay. So, oh, what were you telling me about? What tick, What are you live to? Oh, we, uh, we got the single yeah. home at Gulfstream. Okay. On this $24 pick four, we already hit like our race one to race two. Uh, 16 to one double. You guys singled the first time start of the two? No. In race two? Who did you single? At Gulfstream, the four top In which race? Yeah, but race we had, the, uh, he had the, he had the double with race one to race two, beating the, uh, uh, three to five shot. Yeah. So we gave out a, 
a double to this four that paid sixteen dollars to one. Um, Got it. We, oh, there it is. I see. Queen, queen. And then there. we're alive here on this twenty-four dollar pick four as well. And you are alive to the three and five in this uh, race number three. The I'm running the simulator right now on this because the the five looks very fast. The four is going to duel with this five, believe it or not. The, the the four horse is moving up in GSR. Five is a little bit low in GSR, and they seem to duel. The five in the simulator, anyways, backs up a little bit, and um, which could help you. And the three makes a, a nice move, actually. So, hmm. I, I think you guys have a big shot in there. Well, the, the three, so are you looking at race three at Gulfstream? Because we're four, five, seven, eight there. Hold on here, race three. Four, five, oh, the, let's see, four, five, seven, eight. Oh, okay, so the simulator shows the seven horse winning the race over the four. Now, we don't trust Antonio Sano, though. No. You know, the, the uh, horse is burnt money. Or not really, it was a long shot. And now it's the favorite. Because it ran well as a long shot. Look, guys, I'm famous. Luis says Financial Times guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was yeah, that was a good article. Man, we got so many new customers from that article. It was amazing. Oliver did a really nice job. MVR for thirty bucks. Nice. You saw um, that. What's that? Boom. Oh, that truck, the truck that you drove over to the track with him in. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, he was, uh, he liked my driving though, Chris. My driving was good. <laughs> driving, you know, I'm curious about the truck. The truck sounds cool. I have a cool, well, you no, know, my new truck is even better. I have a, I have the, I have the, um, the green Sequoia, Toyota Sequoia, it's like the um, the army green. Mm -hmm. So good. It's actually my favorite vehicle of all time. I actually am really enjoying this this uh, this car. Nice. Oh, I all missed right. the exit. Oh, that's right, Dan. Thanks for the reminder. Uh, yeah, I missed the exit. I don't know. He was asking me questions. We're talking. I wasn't paying attention, and I missed the exit. That's true. <laughs> Dan good never forgot. Dan never forgets anything. It's amazing. No. Yeah. And, and and he'll also write you a limerick. He, Dan will? Yes. Oh, Bluegrass. Uh, no, um, Buffalo Mike is the is the limerick guy. Okay. He's, he's the limerick some guy. Good ones. Okay. All right. We got uh, Goldstream coming up here, ready to go out there when you guys are. Thank you guys for your comments, by the way, if I missed it. I, we, we appreciate it. And, uh, I felt so bad for you guys when the system went down. I'm like, I got to get up and 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 uh, and talk to these guys. And and uh, so, anyways, so you you guys get back to it. I'm I'm gonna I'll, I'm I'm just I'm just looking at Keeneland race number three or race number four right now for the tournament. So, um, how how am I doing in the tournament right now? I don't think they've uh, did, oh they must have updated after race number. Oh shit! This guy named Kevin Smith is at seventeen thousand three fifty now. I dropped down to seven. Yeah, Kevin Smith is, you are correct. You are down to seventh. Wow. Like that's, guys, I mean, I know it's $2,500 start, but like this is going to be a high scoring tournament. Yeah. There is, uh, if I can get this up here. There's the leaderboard. Kevin Smith, 17,350 with a $2,500 st start. Scotty still in, se in seventh, down from fourth, hasn't made a play on this, but also has another ticket with five bullets ready to fire. Dan's in the tournament as well, he's saying. <laughs> he's in the BCBC contest BC. today. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, in the BCBC. BC. Oh, okay, got mm -hmm. you. Oh, in the feeder. That's right. He, he, yeah. Dan had said that. That's right. Hey, what's um, up, Dave? Dave in the house as well. Mr. Nelson. What's up, Mr. Nelson? 
All right, you guys, listen, I'm going to let you go. Do your thing. Get back to it. Good luck. I, I, you know what? I'm going to stay in. Horses are approaching the starting race. gate. One minute to All race right. three. Sounds good. I'll, I'll do it. We don't get some good comments on the three at Gulfstream. And the three here. Let's see here. Let's run the simulator and see what happens. Once we wrap up today, I'll do a complete reboot and see if that fixes my login issues. So the 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 three horse, the system shows losing by a couple of lengths, not not too much, but considering it's a first time starter, that that's that's not bad. You never know what can happen. So, um, you know, the seven horse, the star of the beast. I understand your hesitation. The more I look at this, first of all, the Equine Edge Morning Line is seven to two, mm -hmm. and you know, but that horse did face eleven horses last time out. And if you look at the group before that, that was just a really salty group, and it was the first off a layoff. The horse does draw good right now as well. I mean, you maybe give that horse one more try. But do you give it a try at three to five? The horses I are mean, at the gate. I certainly would, this wouldn't be a single time. for me, that's for sure. But I've been moving in for race see, number three. You might three see a good effort from this horse right now. But if I'm looking to beat this horse, the beast. it certainly would be from a second-time starter like the eight horse in who ran back to the time out fastest. Chris and had Trainer some issues Chassis. and showed some good signs running now, forth Callie against Man. 11 other horses. So I, li I like and using the eight. Star of the Beast and Calypso Charlie. So, Scotty, someone in the chat said that Kevin Smith had $1,000 on that horse at Keenan. Calypso, Charlie, and Miguel uh, Vasquez to starter. take the outside game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good play. They're in the gate. They're always good when they win. Well, that's true, too. And they're off. Caliban off slowly. Fastest the one in the middle, like away quickly, and reaches out for the early lead. Star of the Beast no. moves to a mummy outside. No. Calypso Charlie is on no. the far outside, tightened up for racing room as Boomchero. He's toward yeah. the rail. In between horses, friends with Fidel getting started far from a star. The trailer is Caliman. Into the far turn they go, fastest, and Chris Landeros are at the moment. They're a length and a half in front of Calypso Charlie, second. Boom, Chero is third at the inside. From fourth, that's the favorite star of the beast. He's in traffic and under pressure. They need to find a way out and kick it in here. From the back, it's Caliman circling horses at a big number. They have fastest to catch. It's fastest, and Chris Landeros nursed off the turn. Two on top. Off cover, Boom, Chero to the yeah, attack second. Right. Calypso, Charlie, and star of the beast are next. They come past the eighth pole. Yeah, right. Fastest trying to hold together. Boom, Chero runs at him on the outside. Here comes Boom, Chero after fastest. Boom, Chero's getting up. Boom, Chero and Jesus Rios to win on debut, going away. Fastest with second. That's tough. First time starter. Bunch of three-star works. It did have mm -hmm. some three-star works. Yeah. Yeah. Those Boom, Chero would have been a great name for the show, too. Boom, Chero. <laughs> uh, looks like uh, our, our resident roving reporter is back. Let me add him in. What's happening? There he is. What's going you, on? Uh, just, you know, I came down to the other paddock. I was down in the saddling area and he came down here. They're going to come down here shortly. I was just beating the rush because there's always this massive rush from kind of the saddling paddock area down to the other side. So uh, nicely done, brother. I saw you. I tried to key the seven in third place in that race. Uh, I played the three over the six. You played the six over the three, I saw. So, well done. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, you know, we're there's some high scoring in this tournament already, Justin. I know. I saw. I did. Yeah. 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 It's uh, it's going to take a lot, I'm sure, to be honest. Yeah. You, you know, there's, I think, 300 entries I heard, Scotty. Yeah, 292. Okay. It's nice. Yeah. 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 That's solid. That's solid there. You're going to have to uh, to fire. Sky's going to have to uncover his second bullet at some point in time. And, uh, and they're just in, in the paddock with some great shots. Look at the crowd. Um, very well done. He's been floating it's, around. It's, it's so packed out here, <laughs> like downstairs. is. I think it's sold out. I'm almost positive. 
you caught such good weather, Justin. Well, the the last two days were not good, but this today and tomorrow, I'm glad I stayed till Monday because it's supposed to be beautiful again. So, yeah, it's it reminds looking me at, of. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, looking at those trees, you would think it's fall. I mean, how beautiful is that? Oh. And then there's there's the construction they're doing behind that green wall, right? If you uh, up above on the fourth floor, you can see it's all dug out and there's holes and they're building a whole new area that will have all of the administrative offices and hospitality and then a, a, like a rooftop, I think like a rooftop restaurant or rooftop bar and stuff. It's supposed to be very cool. Yeah, it's nice too. The relationship that we're building with, with Keeneland, um, J Jim Goodman took care of us big time. You got a media pass. I mean, what I the hell is going on here with a media pass? How do you do that? You fill out the form, Scotty. You yeah, fill out yeah. the form, you meet the requirements and the, the, the pass they give you. And yeah. the horses are coming back down this way. So, and you pay attention. We talked about that in the beginning. You know, you still got to pay attention, right? I know yesterday I was watching and one of the horses almost got loose in the paddock. So the horse, the horses come down from like the saddling area and then come down and then you kind of get a rush of people. Well, have a good time over there. Are you going to be reporting like periodically all day? Is that the plan, guys? Yeah. Yep. Sweet. That's the plan. Sweet. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta figure out. I'm, I'm definitely playing in a couple of races. So, uh, here I'll flip as the horses come one more time. Hold on. Where's the one? Beautiful. Great pictures from Godolpa this morning too. Very nice. Yeah, that was a very cool trip. You got to see what Cody's wish and Frosted. You know, Frosted I keyed in one of my first ever pick fours that I ever played. That's great. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Nyquist got a Nyquist was really friendly. It was interesting. You know, a lot of them are obviously super friendly, but Nyquist came right up to the fence. And you could you could pet him and everything. Nice. Six makes a really nice appearance, guys. Six looks super good. Mm -hmm. That's that. That's that when it's long shot, right? Is it the? Uh, it is. It's also thirty-five percent. That's a uh, teen idol. Yeah. Very nice. There's the nine. Mister Long shot, I think, it showed really well in the uh, in the race there. The six. Yes. Yeah. All right, uh, Scott Free, are you talking about Dave Weaver souvenirs? Because that's probably going to be hard to bring home on the airplane. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Souvenirs. 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 See, now you get like. Oh, the, uh, they're going out to the check. I see. That nine's the first time starter that looks really good. But it's only got two percent win. I don't know. It's it's the two to one favorite right now. It's got some three stars, but I don't see any notes from Bruno. Do you guys see any notes on the nine? On our on our side, anyways, I don't see any notes on the nine. Just stars. Yeah. You're correct. Okay. All right. I will be back, Scotty. Good luck. Uh, Thank you. I'm Same to you, go. Justin. I'm going to go grab a little bite to eat. I'll be back, Chris, probably maybe around race. Is this race four or five? Is this race five? Four? Four. Thank you. Uh, I'll probably be back around race six or seven. Okay. All right. We'll see All you right. then. All right. Good luck. Okay. Lots of positive comments on the Friday show and the Bruno show. Uh, I think the Bruno show is really starting to kick into high gear. You guys yeah. are an odd couple. It is so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Bruno's a character. He's, uh, he just, he kind of just, uh, does his own thing. Like he just, he just, he just goes. And, um, and so you kind of have to roll with that and, and, um, and do the best you can. And at the same, cause you don't want to, you want to let him be him at the same time, making sure it's an enjoyable experience for people to listen to. Right. So, people, uh, people are loving it. Yeah, it was only our second show, so you know it's just going to continue to get better. But I, 
you know, I'm 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 analyzing each of these shows and trying to figure out how to make this as entertaining as possible. And 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 why not just uh, yeah, embellish it a little bit, make it fun. And uh, so I I just started uh, thinking I'm just gonna kind of give him a hard time and just see how he reacts to it. And you know what? He just you know, he just went. He was okay with it. You you were there, Chris. He was he was uh, he was funny. God, he's funny. He is. He, never, he, he is a kick. I mean, when when you were like. <laughs> When, when, when you said we had a discussion about these, like, I don't know about a discussion, but you had a lot of words that I listened. <laughs> I, was, I remember that too. It's so funny because that was definitely not pre planned. And no. when he said that, it just hit me. I remember I just, for about a half hour, listened to him go on a rant about this. He's like, We had a conversation. I'm like, I don't really remember the conversation. I just remember listening. It was just, he's uh, he's like that. If I get him on a phone call, forget it. I'm not getting off that call. It's just no. not happening. I, I I love the, uh, the 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 first race you guys did, and and he had a lot of commentary on a horse. And you were like, I am so done talking about this I horse. I was. He, 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 he talked he's about the horse. Impregnating your brain too. Oh yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's Jack Lemon and Walter Matthau. It's awesome. Oh. Well, it has some potential. I, you know, too. I love doing the thing with David too. David, you know, he's he's had a rough year, and um, and David is a trooper. And he went. And we've been going like the NHC show. I have to try to figure out how to make it a little bit shorter because it's it goes a, a while. And um, and David just offers so much insight, right? I mean, the mm-hmm. 2022 uh, NHC champ. He's he's really he's a good dude. Hey, yeah, Chris, we, we got happy. We're alive to the five in the pick three, and I'm alive to the three through six, eight, nine in the pick five. There, where at uh, where Tampa? Oh, Tampa. Okay, I'll get over to Tampa, but yeah, we should have Dave on for uh, for you know, maybe not four hours or something on a Saturday, but have him come out, yeah. especially if we get off uh, 420 is the date where the Aqueduct Turf Course opens up so we'll all be looking forward to that obviously and dave being a big naira guy that would be a good day to bring him on the turf does look great out there only we got one minute to laurel and 14 minutes to tampa no tampa is in the game yeah we hit uh man the, the picks are just they're rolling at aqueduct today too aren't they Anthony was just pointing that out, and they're just – they are. They're – well, first race, the first race, there was a big long shot. Right? Race race number two and three is just in front. good. A vindicated tiger. But as they run anyways, the guys, uh, I'll let you get to it. Away by four lengths to first slew and Imperial Curl. Or there you go. Who are you, you, fourth and fifth. David's and always got an invitation. Joe in the sixth position. Oh, right? yeah. that one fire baron is yeah. seventh. Like that more back. All right, hero. we'll uh, we'll get that set up for sure. Yeah, I'll make sure that we. Who are we rooting for here for you guys, anyways? Quarter mile. Milchin takes them out of the back. Street. I did a pick three for the group that single to the five here. Out three. Um, but I'm three through six, eight, nine in the pick in the early pick five. Admiral okay, like his outside. They four is who I'm actually rooting for. Two legs clear of noble hero who advances up on the outside of fire baron. Welcome to the defense audio show. The similar race has the five dropped out last. 46 Beating seconds the, the uh, mile. Milch into the far turn. The eight horse. Vindicated Tiger and Ragman. New challengers coming, though. First slew up the inside. Now rallying up to take over second. And uh, the, the top six of the is first. Milch is the leader. Well, four first slew now swings out to the two paths. He has any horse. Half behind. Noble Hero you guys have the eight? march forward on the extreme outside. Yes. Is carried out wide. Okay. Adios Joe trying to close in. Also following the move is Admiral Curl. Milchin has to make I'm another furlong. On the outside, here's First Slew. Adios Joe going to look one one right between the two of them. The first three. Slew, here comes Adios Joe three's right on through. Three. First on, Slew, six. Adios Joe. We these are the three. two that go on. First oh, Slew, Adios three. Joe. They drive oh. the wire. Here it is. Six, six, oh, finish. Six. Oh, I think the six. I have no idea. That, that, one. that is really close. Long first nose. I'm pretty sure it's the Maybe over Three ran huge, though. Milchin. So it was 6.32 to the 3 and 4.18.95 to the 6. That, catching that favorite in that last race when the the two horses that were going to win ran into each other Here's the, killed uh, the value on this. Finish what are you guys thinking about Keeneland race number four? I'm wondering uh, maybe you guys can help me with a play oh. there. 
That's so close. Can't separate them on that one. Photo finish. We'll go to the. Can we got a dead heat so I get paid by both of them. That would be cool. Now you think that helps you, but it really doesn't. I know. It dilutes. It dilutes your payout. I know. I'm just. Yeah. Well, are you able to get over to Keeneland? I put your. Screen. I am able to get over to Keeneland. So, I have the three and the six as as the A's off the uh, off the here that this is dead. So let me just go to race four. I have the three and the six off the race sim here as the. Uh, still not showing. Hold on. Now it's showing. There we go. There we go. Uh, You're keyed up the uh, favorites. Up I have the six being a second time starter here for Asmussen, who's very strong with, with second time starters, I think is a an excellent price. Um, if you're looking for a tournament play, the eight or the four might be interesting. So I mean, the four was finishing up strong in the race sim in 19 yeah, one. It is. That's actually a really good point. That's a first time starter as well. That's actually uh, that's a good point. I, I do like the six horse here. I just have not really been a big fan of uh, Asmussen at the Keeneland meets. But <laughs> I mean, but this horse has every right to run good. It's nine to two Equine Edge morning line, thirty five percent. Pop GSR. By the way, the four horse has a nice GSR as well. And you're right. The simulator has this horse only losing by a couple of lengths at the finish. Um, it's got the three horse winning nicely, 15% and eight to five on the Equine Edge morning line. So I think the reason you're getting those kind of odds right now is because people are having a hard time judging this horse off of the races at Turfway Park on the synthetic. So let's see. The, the system says the horse really won't be that too far back. Could save ground on the inside. I think the three horse lose legacy is a is a is a is a fair look. And the ten horse should get a really good trip. The first time starter for Mike Maker. I'm gonna guess when I look at all these horses, each of them seems like they have a shot. I'm gonna take the newcomer, the ten, Red State. I think that's the horse that's gonna win the race. So Scotty, it actually did go dead heat. Wow. So I okay. think, so I, I'm looking for the prices right now. There and of course they moved it off the screen and before showing what the pick five prices are. So I'll just have to we'll see if the ticket. Let's see what they paid the ticket. Five oh two ten. So I made it didn't double. It wasn't a dollar, but it, it was still better than the six than the six winning. Not the end of the world. Okay. Um, all right, so Keeneland. So if you didn't want to use the ten and the two, well, they're off already. Oh, they're off. Okay, that right. I was going to use the ten. The inside lose over the three, four, eight, six, eight over the three, four, six, eight. eight. That's what I was going to do. As they had the I was going to play front, Red State against the uh, rail and Shadow Surge right alongside three, four, six, eight. 22. 22.9 seconds the, the time 10? for the you opening quarter. Teen Idol the is third. On the outside or on the inside? Off the oh, the plays upward from the rail. Nine's on the outside. Okay. To the inside. And then Fracture, who's fifth in between that pair, moving up fourth. Holy. And now taking third, still four lengths off the lead. They round Who's the third, third Red right State now. Shadow Surge still it. side by side, contesting Whoa. the lead just over a quarter mile to go. Fracture changing lanes, looks toward the outside oh, third. Still four yeah. lengths off the front pair, though. Then Coach Campbell, uh, lose Legacy course. comes next. Seven from the front. They turn for home. Shadow Surge and Red this State going run at it for the lead. Fracture third on the outside. Comes... Lose Legacy is fourth and trying to find oh, running room. Has to change yeah, lanes toward the outside, but the leader's moving by the eighth pole. Red State. Red State in front by five. Fracture is second. Shame, lose Legacy third, 16th to go. There. Red State in front. Fracture and then lose Legacy. Is probably... It is Red State in front. Fracture so I hit then the lose try, Legacy. Guys. Red That's State oh, hanging thanks. on. Red State. Oh, one and a half length. Fracture second. Yeah, lose Legacy across the line. 10, in third and then Coach Campbell fourth. Three, four, six, eight with three, four, six, eight. But again, how amazing is the, the ticket at the race set? Yeah, it's amazing. So that was a dead heat at Tampa. Yep. So it ended up instead of the four hundred we, I was gonna get on the uh, six. I got five hundred. 
Well, the two first-time starters drawn to the outside. There will be an inquiry, I imagine, with all the bumping the going on. And Luis yeah, no, the I think the three... Guys, look, what happened was the nine, nine... From what I can see, the nine came out, but the four's coming in right there as well. Mm -hmm. Well, but the three may have tried to fit in a space that wasn't there. Too. No, well, I don't think so. I think seven, the nine seven, came out and squeezed three, the three. Dead, six, five, and, kindle four. Oh. and then the four came in some as seven, well, eight, five, nine, but nine wasn't in, it, it wasn't in the money. So what we're looking at is an inquiry most likely between the three and the four, and the four could come down for seconds to third. So Stuart, the uh, Stuart is making his first appearance here. Uh, that's I he say, do. I think the four comes down and the three finishes. David liked that five horse. Um, who who are you talking about, Chris? We have a, an imaginary character called Stuart the Steward. Oh, that's okay, oldie. Got you. That's oldie. Oldie is Stuart the Steward, and typically he's he's always taking horses down. So the fact that he's talking about the three trying to fit into a hole that wasn't there. Um, it's concerning. Who did you have there, Scotty? Ten over the what? I was, I was going to do it. I was putting in a trifecta. Ten over, yeah, I told you. Uh, ten over three, four, six, eight over three, four, six, eight. That's what I was, I was putting in, and the race went off. I, that's a bummer. It's official. That's frustrating. Yeah, that's a bummer. I was halfway in too, and I, I wasn't paying attention to where the race was, unfortunately. Peanut at the track. Uh, it really showed. I mean, the four was the only horse coming late in the race sim, too. Yeah. Yeah. Double 1420, pick 306 dollars, 35 cents. Pick four. Wow. 47 dollars, 40 cents. Pick five, 2,947 dollars, five cents. Yeah. That's also why, Scotty, I've been taking, when I've been doing the shows, I've been just taking light notes on the uh on the race sim where i have where i kind of have a's and b's or a's b's and c's separated right you know part of my decision making in 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 choosing the 10 was based on the pace number because i figured the 10 had that outside post the 10 had a really nice gsr it had the third top gsr and it would sip a sit a really good trip from the outside and it was equine edge's second pick and it had two three-star works, although there were no notes on the horse. And that's why I thought the 10 horse, you, you have to make a call based on trip. You know, yeah. um, I'll tell you what, I was talking to, to Bruno on the phone yesterday, and he made a point to me because I said to him, and it's not that I, I lack confidence, but I said to him, I suck at wet tracks. He said, I'd never want to hear that come out of your mouth again. And then I wanted this, he went on this big rant. It's like, and he's like, okay. What okay, I, I wrote this down. I get the gist of what he told me, but it was it, it was really poignant, and he's absolutely right. Um he said, look for the horse that's going to come back clean in a wet in a wet track. And if you think mm -hmm. what he meant was it's either a front runner. Or a horse with an outside post that's going to get a good trip and not get all muddy. He yep. said, those are the horses that are winning on the sloppy tracks. And I thought that was really good advice. No, it is. And, you know, when, when he was going through, I think it was in the early part, and we were looking at a work, and that horse had that high action that he was talking about and wasting energy. And yeah. uh, that is good stuff to listen to. And then the way that the riders go, uh, we talked about that a lot last night in the coaching class, looking at the at, at the workouts in terms of where the riders' hands are, their elbows, how they're working the horse, and what they're trying to accomplish. Good, good stuff. Also, high action is something good to have on 420 when the grass comes out. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that tweet was made for uh, um, Rennie Time, who is uh, on Twitter uh, and constantly yeah. wakes up and fakes, but for for that uh, for the for the for the, the day to open up four twenty is awesome. So, what's coming up at Goldstream Park? Anthony's asking about that race. Can we beat the favorite? It, it's a pretty chalky race. The three and the five. Um, well, surprisingly, at Goldstream, the six is the the favorite there. 
Let's see. Here. So there's some value there. I, I would. If you let me run it. So it looks like the five perfected daily gets an easy lead, and then the three comes late. The three Ron and Bow is interesting because it's a it's thirty eight percent. It's even money on the Equinage morning line. The simulator doesn't even like the the six horse. Interesting. Um, the five horse is thirty two. The six is one to one. Yeah, I, I like. I think second off the layoff, and the horse can rate just a little bit, and the horse has tactical speed. Should be there won't be anybody faster than the five horse sitting on the outside turbo. We talk about a good trip. I I would definitely like the five horse. And I think the three will will make a, a late move and finish. I don't think the six has to win this race. Fix it. I mean, there, there's a claim there or a, a trainer move. Only let me throw I don't know. I just don't get, I don't get the one to one price there. I don't either. And like at Aqueduct when I didn't get the one to two price. Oldie, I've got your uh, EE screen up. You're at Keeneland. Why don't you flip over to Goldstream? Yeah, I'm just looking at, at how do we monetize this. So maybe a little pick three. I think the five the five horse has got to be a key. I'm, I'm going to bet the five, and then I'm going to I'm going to plan on the I'm going to bet the five to win, and then I'm going to plan on the three do a five three exacta, and then I'll do a trifecta five with all with three. Is, is how I'm going to play that. And so my key will be the three and second or third and the five winning is how I'm going to play that. The five Oldie, is going to get a triple trip, that I know. Oldie, you've got another note on the two at Goldstream. This is the second one today. The first one didn't work out too well. Last. We talked about this one earlier, about the, the notes I write myself that aren't useful. <laughs> yeah. You're going you're gonna to go with three five there or are you just going to single the five? I'm keying the five on top. He's keying the five. I I actually like the prefer the three. Because I you're think Boca Boy, the one, is going to go fast. Yeah, you're getting a good EE morning line angle there. Uh, even money, or as you like to call it, one to one. And yes, I do like to call it. Five to one. Yeah, I give, I give him crap about that all the time. All right. I will take a page out of Scotty's book. I'm going to play a three all all try. All right. And I'm also going to play a three five to the one two four seven twelve double. So we have a guy that asked a question on intercom. Says what happens? So he must have had the, that dead heat, you guys, as well over at Goldstream. What happens in a pick three if I had both horses in a dead heat? I'm assuming you're just gonna you're gonna get you're gonna get both horses, correct? Yeah, you get the yeah. win. So Oldie, go back to that uh while we're you know fooling around at Tampa, go back to that uh race at Tampa where the dead heat happened and show everybody what the results were. I so, the screen here. That's the wrong oh. one. Exotics panel. You're on the right race. I know it wasn't showing me any will pays. Yeah, or, just you know, go, to the, will pays, uh, go to the Sorry. Paths. Here we go. So you'll see there are multiple pick three paths there to the six and the three. So the, right, exactly. Okay. And see, so you have multiple pick three paths, but on the pick five you get it for a dollar. So that's how it ended up at a little over five hundred. So ten three five nine at Keeneland, the four did come down. Yeah. That's a look like. Thank you, Racing Downwind, a.k.a. Dave. So now I would have lost that trifecta, guys. So it actually worked out that I didn't play it because I didn't have the five for third. And actually, David Harrison had that five. Wow. But I don't think he – I don't think he's, I don't think he's playing in the tournament, though. So, But that's huge. I didn't see him in there. We're getting a little bit closer here at the Royal Palm meet at Gulfstream Park. Scotty's on the five. Oldie is trying to beat that five with the three. 
and the public was on the six, but now the five's the favorite. Yep. And a three five or five three exacta paying about ten to one. Wow. It's not bad. Blended blended that's probably around five to one, four and a half to one, something like that. Turf yeah. Teddy said he got um I guess he got he got he's gonna get paid if the three wins. He's he got a good price that he couldn't refuse. Yeah, and you know those folks over there uh, across the pond, they do get some nice options that we don't get as well. Nice racing downwind. Yeah, nice going. Dave's a great handicapper. Um, he is. Uh, he's got a good building, a good following. Um, it, it's always interesting the uh, the good stuff he's got on his feet. So, yeah, I'm. Uh... I still have to put in. I'm I'm playing in the in the qualifier. I didn't play in the feeder, but I am playing in the qualifier that uh, Dave's Dave's in, and I'm I still have three more races to put my plays in at Goldstream Park race number ten and Keeneland Park race number ten. Those are two of them. I have to I have to do. Anybody have a strong opinion in those two races? Goldstream Park number ten. So let's look yeah. while we're sitting here. Let's uh let's get this race off while they get that teed up on your screen. As soon as they cross the finish line, I will get yeah. you over there. Did you call it Keeneland Park? I think I, you said. Did Keeneland. I say Keeneland Park? I Keeneland Park. Okay. Keeneland on, Park. on behalf of Equinetch, I just like to apologize for Keeneland for calling it Keeneland Park. So please, <laughs> please don't hold this against us. Yeah, don't please. Yeah. So. It, it depends what you need at that point, though, Scotty. That's the thing. Like, well, it's a pre. It's a. It's you have to. It's a pick and pray, so it doesn't matter. Contest. The free yeah. contest. So I, I'm. I'm actually. It, I. It's well. It's the. Uh, it's no. It's pick and pray. It's not free, but it's the. I you basically just have to. I just need winners. So I'm. I don't. I won't take favorites unless I'm confident. You can't be wrong when you take favorites, um, and. So I'd rather if if there's I I don't mind free squares at all. No, the system loves liberal arts. Um, I thought the long shot the ten horse was a little interesting as well. In Kingland race ten, is the five really three to five right now? It really uh, is. I guess so. What the hell? All the late money. They heard us talking. I'm taking my. The horses are at the gate. It's yeah. now post time. Lining up and moving in. Six yeah, long starting point. Race number three the on, on the program. And the Storyline here is Turbo to get taking on the comeback um, Toxic the, Gray. The Second start off the shelf for but Turbo. You can get a really Sonic good deal for the trip a horse might get. A little over and a year ago. When we, when we look at this race, I mean. The five is just going to sit a really nice trip behind the one horse. Five might even have the lead. I won't be surprised. To complete the line. Toxic Gray and the fourth. They're Remigate. And they're off. Good start for Absolute Grit from down toward the inside. He's ridden hard to try to gain the advantage. Moving out the rail, that's Boca Boy on to challenge. Turbo is away in good shape, and on the far outside goes Toxic Gray. In the middle, Braun on the brow, and the early trailer is Santos to Wilson. And they run to the half-mile point. It's Absolute Grit who has the lead three parts of a length. Turbo, Zayas has him right where he wants him, second on the hip of the leader. A length and a half back to Toxic Gray. He's now third in range ahead of Braun on the brow, then Santos to Wilson, and now the trailer is Boca Boy. Around the far turn they go, three-eighths of a mile away. Absolute Grit working overtime to hold the lead. Turbo moving to him right now, and Toxic Eight Gray space. is three wide. Prawn in the brow looks for a way through. He's got some run in the black cap, pink colors, two lengths behind. There's a quarter of a mile left to go, and Turbo sent on with the task. Toxic Gray right up alongside second. Absolute Grit fighting back toward the rail. Prawn in the brow is fourth as they straighten for the drive. Toxic Gray really on the like outside. Look back. at Absolute Grit. Aptly named. He's digging in gamely toward the 
rail. Turbo's in the middle and Braun on the brow is fourth. They come past the 16th pole. Inside, absolute grip. Outside, toxic gray. In between, Turbo, photo finish. Wow. Absolute grip. He's in the end photo with toxic gray. Braun on the brow charging and Turbo was right alongside in 110 and three. The three did That's not. That's what racing's like all about, right? Right there. Oh, That's yeah. a who do you like finish. The three did not like the kick out, and when the jock got him on the outside, oh. he started running. You could see he had exactly, his head exactly what happened. So uh, in the tenth race, sorry guys, let's the tenth race at Goldstream. I'd love to to look at that if you don't mind, Oldie, and see um, if maybe the uh, five horse would be a horse that I could use. First time starter. Hey, golf stream. Race tab. First time starter. Uh, Jesus, I don't think it was a terrible ride on the three. I just think that he doesn't realize that the, the horse doesn't want Watch her for Reyes or with Reyes. Let's see what these notes say. Vacation Dance and Storm Ready worked a half mile in company for Pletcher, and the pair went well, finishing heads apart. Storm Ready slightly in front along the inside. Storm Ready continued on nicely after the wire and galloped out a few lengths in front here. So the Storm Ready is this five horse. Okay. Let's just see. I'd like Storm Ready better on the gallop out here, too. So. You know, the, this horse looks live. Maybe it was getting close to being ready. I don't know what happened between February 23rd and March 20th, though. So. so over at Gulfstream, 2653 was the official order of finish with the four running in uh, fifth. <sighs> That tenth race is wide open, and there there's a lot of horses in there that that look average at best. Um, and it's so the, usually in situations like that, you would take a first time starter. It's obviously a Pletcher horse. It did have a three star work, uh, like on February twenty third, from Bruno, and the three star work on January nineteenth. Um, February twenty third. There there's a gap from February 23rd to March 20th in the workouts. Don't really know what that's about. There's a, there's. And it came back and he's not rating the workouts as well either. Yeah. And maybe the horse is just ready and been waiting for a, a race to go in. And those are maintenance works. I don't know. Yeah. But I, I will say the, I mean, the four just missed last time out at the service and distance. It did. It, it does did. look like it has a pretty good size pace advantage. It's It does. It's interesting because the simulator is saying that at the stretch, the th the at actually the second call, the three is like a quarter of a length back and then passes the four, and then the four comes back. So the simulator is kind of inconclusive. From what I'm looking at right now, I can tell you it's interesting. The nine horse, first time on the turf, the system has the nine closing like a champ. Maybe worth maybe worth using. It only loses by two lengths on the simulator. So what about the stretch out on the eight? I know it's only one percent. The the simulator doesn't like it. It has it losing it. by by many lengths. Six is a second time starter. Actually ran pretty well last time out on the turf with the justify horse. Got a nice GSR, ran good. Jaramillo is jumping on. Castellano's not here. I, I I would have to agree with you. And it's still working pretty strongly. A little bit of pressure for Kevin Smith, John Fisher, 
um, 14,369. Let's see here. I better get into the game and figure this out, huh? 15,550. So the, okay, so Kevin dropped down a little bit. I'm in ninth. I haven't made a play, though. Uh, I got him right where I want him, guys, the way I look at it. Uh, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> so once you uh, once you look at the leaderboard here, as I Brooks, this, bro, what up, Brooks? I miss you, bro. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah. we haven't seen Brooks in a long time. I know. Like Brooks is one of the originals. I like yeah. absolutely. I, I, right. I always think of Brooks and wonder where the hell he's at. I hope you're doing well at work, man. Man. So there's the leaderboard. Uh, you're still in seventh. Or you got ninth. down not ninth, you dropped down a little bit. But yeah. you've got a, a a full other holster without any bullets fired. So yeah. I, I, I need to play. I need to get going. Uh Greg, yeah, absolutely. Like I, there's I had Christy on one time. She's like, I'm like, Christy, there are three quarters of the races have gone and you haven't made a play. She goes, Yeah, but my kids were playing Pokemon. <laughs> and no, she comes back and wins the tournament. It's just, she's insane. She's so talented. My God. So, so a question talented. from Justin, Scotty. The yeah. probables on Equinich, where do they come from? Are they coming from Equibase? They're coming from Tote. Tote. From United Tote. Okay. By the way, if they ever, like, don't show up, refresh your screen. We have a, a bug that we're working on. It doesn't always do it, but if it does, just refresh your screen. Got it. Man, Dean, I, I have not paid attention to to the the Derby as of yet, to be honest with you. So I, I'll be no help on that. I'm, but I'm bad that way. Usually, Oldie and Chris, they're on top of that type of stuff. They know they know every horse. I can't tell you until the same week of the Derby who the hell's running in it. I'm telling you, I'm just that way. I'm I look at the race in front of me. Well, the race in front of us right now is at Tampa Bay Downs. Uh, yep. They're getting ready to go to the gate. They're doing their dance. Oldie, guys, thoughts? I'm gonna, I'm gonna let, you, I'm gonna let you guys go, and I'll okay. come back and visit if you don't mind having me. I'll come back, but I'm gonna focus on this tournament a little bit. All right? Yeah, so take a focus, Scotty. We got an hour before Chris Laramie joins us. If you wanna pop okay. on somewhere after four and talk with Chris, that would be great. That sounds great, you guys. All right. Talk to you later. Good luck. Okay. Bye. Bye, Scotty. All right, Oldie. What do you got for us here? I think this looks pretty chalky. All right. Tampa. So you, if if it looks chalky, how do you how do you pound a bet here uh, using the good chalk? I don't know. I probably this probably would be a race I would not play. Would be my you, you think the eight's a slam dunk here or what? I think the eight sits a perfect trip behind the uh, behind the two five and one. Here, you tell me why. I mean, there's no real late pace here. The seven needed the seven maybe is a little interesting, but th there's just. For me, this race isn't worth my dollars. Fair enough. Well, we're going to show it anyway. Yes. And, you know, I will tell you, I'm a little interested in the one horse at Laurel. Mm -hmm. At 13 to 1, the long shot. The gate, just one minute. 14 okay. to 1 now. We'll get over to Laurel right after this one. I have a Laurel and Hardy handshake. My very common comment. Mm -hmm. So Stuart, the steward was right. That four did come down to Keelan. Stuart's usually right. You may not always be all that happy about it. And the horses have reached the gate. It's post. Stewart's usually right. Now for today's sixth. 
Field of eight here at five and a half furlongs. Favoritism toward the outside. Number eight, Imperial King. Gabriel Maldonado for John. Why Perry. is this four? Oh, we forgot to tell Scotty about the uh, Here's Dazzling Truth moving up. Perry's World and Hermila Gomez back. to gate two. Henry what was King. that? I'm sorry, I missed that. 500 likes. I'm going to sing my old Roger Kentucky home next week. Scotty round. would sing it with me if you guys can hit the like button. Yeah. I mean, you get both of them. They do a duet. Imperial King and Sam Tequila. Be like air supply. It's about set for a start. Today's late pick four. Kicking you you'd have no air because you'd be laughing so hard. We'll do that on the uh, penultimate tequila, day Mary of uh, Tequila on the outside. Next Saturday. And Sam Tequila goes in. They're in the gate. And the race is on. Caught him in a picture-perfect line. From the center, Mr. Banjo Man came away in good order. Down to the inside, Henry's World flashing some speed is up to second. As from the far outside, Sam Tequila puts a nose in third. Roger McQueen. One thing I love about Tampa is the Imperial King, four of them yeah. lining up third Tampa through six. All match. Two more than Stop. back to Gone Nuts, who's seven. And two and a half after that to Dazzling Truths, who's the trailer. I couldn't make Mr. out Banjo half of what you said. The leader. It's Mr. Banjo Man. I said, Man, if you look at the, uh, the jocks, Henry's world on the inside. The caps, the opening quarter it all matches the saddle card. Mr. Banjo saddle Man continues card. on. Henry's World second. Imperial King, the favorite, is third. The five is green. Three off two the top. White. As they come to the quarter pole, Mr. Banjo Man and Carlos Rojas in front by two to the top of the stretch. Imperial King, Maldonado trying to close in on that leader from second. Up the inside, Whistle While You Mow, Henry's World. Gone Nuts has made up a little bit of ground. Is fifth right now. Mr. Gone Banjo nuts? Man trying to finish the job here. Gone nuts. Still a length and a half in front at the 16th pole. Imperial King now two lengths back. Mr. Banjo Man just keeps on going. Mr. Banjo Man at four to one, one at two and a half. Imperial King Five, eight, second, four. third went to God. No okay, I'm going to remove all these and then re add them. Okay, I, I like the one at uh, Laurel, but you're also getting a lot of value on the seven. And nine to two. Midsummer's Eve. Nice, Tony. Tony hit the tap of pick three for two bucks. Let's get it back in red wine time. Twenty-four dollar ticket. Very nice. Just gonna say I don't understand the four is the favorite here. Then come morning. Bay Street, four to five. Brooklyn Girl. My Sugar Boo Michael Sanchez. Worst in his voice on the. One mile second finish line. Trainer of the five horse here, I believe. No, the jack. In the gate. In there or off. And uh, red wine time, it appears. Still back in the gate there. And so Angel of Canterbury's out to the front. Angel of Canterbury. One of the horses didn't break, street. I believe. And on the outside, Brooklyn Girl is moving to third. Cover the spread. Settles in at fourth position. Golden Charm is next, followed by Midsummer's Eve. And back to Then Come Morning. And my Sugar Boo is last of them all. They home for a far turn run. Angel of Canterbury sets the tempo solo. Leads it from the favorite Bay Street. It travels in the second spot. Golden Charm is on the inside. Brooklyn Girl is in fourth. Cover the spread is in fifth. Another two, Midsummer's Eve is next. And they're followed by, then come morning, my sugar boo. Far turn run, Angel of Canterbury, just at a steady pace. Bay Street trying to get closer there from the outside. Golden Charm is asked to move forward on the far outside. Here comes Golden Charm out there three deep at Angel of Canterbury for the top of the stretch run. Turning for home, Angel of Canterbury, quarter mile from the second wire. Golden Charm 
Bay Street flattened out a little bit in third, and it's another five lengths back as Brooklyn Girl just picks up fourth in Midsummer's Eve. And here's Golden Charm. Golden Charm and Angel of Canterbury driven on the inside. Now they're both driving past the furlong marker. Not much between them. Golden Charm, Resilient Angel of Canterbury on the inside re-kicks. Brooklyn Girl is third. Angel of Canterbury. Angel of Canterbury at a big price. Golden Charm there on the outside. And Angel and now of Canterbury from Golden Charm. Boom. Big price is one, two, and six. Very nice. Very nice, Aldi. Told you there were prices all over the the uh, screen on Laurel today. Excellent. Seven to, ended up getting 17 to one. Played a five, played win place show there. Also played a $5 double to the three in the next. Oh, love it. Oh, look at your face. <laughs> Mr. Info loves it too. Oldie, way to go. Hopefully that little bump isn't blamed on the one horse and there was no other bump there hopefully uh oh Stewart. Stewart the steward has to be he's very uh observant and he does not uh take into account what his bets were or what all these bets were because it's a separate person oh okay okay well we can either go to the howard b newton stakes at mahoney valley or we can go to keeneland um uh, I, as much as i want to go was it the howard b newman stakes noonan noonan oh noonan so we have caddyshack instead of uh seinfeld mm -hmm. because if it was seinfeld it would be hello yeah. newman hello newman there is actually a um a video on uh, youtube It reminds me of Radar O'Reilly on MASH, playing the bugle. The Scotty leaves the, the scream, and I immediately hit a bomb. Yeah. Tell the bomb that you can't come back. I that hear you knocking, but you... How about you tell him he keeps on knocking, but he can't come in? <laughs> well, I can't prevent him from coming in. Um... Certainly not going to kick him off his own setup. So I'd like to be here next Saturday. All right. So let's see what I'm going to look at what the probable. I did not look at what the probable on that double was. The three I had listed as one of my uh, key horses for the day. Mm -hmm. And all right. So the probable 36 to 80 for a buck to the three. Not, oh no, I'm looking at the wrong, I'm looking at well pace instead of probables. Yeah. You know, sometimes not the brightest. Oh, 378. Have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's fifth. For a dollar? You know, five times? Tina. I read 329, sorry, three, 129 for a buck. And you have know, a five. And I have a five, so. I'm going to keep an eye on the input. There is an objection. So Stuart did see that properly. Hmm. I'm going to create a Twitter account for Stuart the Stuart. <laughs> the one's worth a bet here at. Uh, Moving into line, race five. At Keeneland. Oh. It's giving us fits today, Oldie. I don't know if it's just a whole lot of traffic or what, but. No, it sounds like there was something going on from. There you go. Uh, Wiz has a comment for you, Oldie. Him bark oh, moves into down. line. Here's Rack and Toos coming forward. Parker, and if, yeah, if you're going to do Parker, in. don't you also have to do Stuart Pippen or whatever his name was? Now Scarlet Poppy. Uh, 
Charlotte and it's Poppy. Wine and Let's waves. see what, what the video shows. That's it. Yeah, That's one's it. coming down. Tempting lady will be the last to load. Comes forward now. It was a minor bump. Goes in. They're at the post. We'll see. And they're off. There goes Sweet Lily Ben out for the lead, but Pinup Betty is right there to the inside. We started Poppy and from, uh, also are up close in Argon there, along with Tempting Lady. Now, Tempting Lady from the far outside starting spot starts to move forward, tries to clear some of the inside traffic, is still wide, heading on to the first turn because Scarlet Poppy occupies the spot at the rail, and now Tempting Lady starts to move by. Awkward move for Sweet Lily Bet around the first turn, as well as Embark near the back of the pack. But up front, Tempting Lady, as the leader gets over to the rail now, has the lead a length. Scarlet Poppy is right there and Argon moves up to the outside from third pin up Betty back to the inside okay. is in fourth rack and two suspect holiday travels Stuart would have taken it out cat symphony is seventh on the outside yeah, Ryan is eighth, is eighth. break of five back to ready That's for Cheryl or the back of the pack in ninth at the point bump. of the back stretch Argentini Don um, is in tenth sweet Lily bet is in eleventh position and Mark is last to the twelve twenty two point six four Peter Sellers inspector for the opening half mile tempting lady is the leader and Scarlet Poppy is Second, a length separates the top two. Pin up Betty is third back toward the inside by three quarters of a length. And then Rackin Toos, who takes toward the outside and fourth, two lengths off the lead. Now Spaladay is in fifth. Starting to move toward the outside, comes off the rail, still six lengths from the front. Ready for Sherl, is right behind her, but has to go out toward the grandstand side. They turn for home. Scarlet Poppy, pin up Betty, move on either side of Tempting Lady. Ready for Sherl and Spaladay from the outside. Pin up Betty up the inside. Ready for Sherl, Spaladay, pin up Betty to the inside. Ready for Sherl coming on, forward, nine. has a narrow lead. Ready for One. Sherl and Florent Giroud now kicking clear in the closing strides. It is ready for Sherl to one. win it. Stay up one. It'll be pin up Betty second, followed day third. Like Scarlet show, so I wanted that. That didn't get the one to win there, but uh, you know, with the nine winning and the one finishing second, getting the the two out of the top two there. Yeah, but you got to fight with those people with the two for the show money. All right. Um... Let's see. We got four minutes to Goldstream Park. Not Keeneland Park. I thought this race was wide open. At Goldstream. All right, Oldie. I'll put it up on the screen there. I'm she ready. Was... You know, that there was some big GSR moves here. On horses that aren't getting back, do do we trust Sano here? Four percent first race with horse. What's his percentage? Four. 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 Yeah, no good. The Dover Spectre. Let's see. So the, the 10 horse. How often do you get a curl in for Bill Mott at 19 to 1? Not often. <clears throat> Bluegrass Dan is looking for a pick five at Aqueduct. Why don't we get to that since we have 11 minutes to Aqueduct? Why don't we get to that <clears throat> right after this Goldstream race? Okay. Hey. You also have an Omaha Beach Mott mm -hmm. Furster here. Bill and his Mott. Not Riley and his Mott, just Bill? Just Bill and his Mott, yes. We should just call him Apple Juice Bill. He could be he could be Apple Sauce Bill. Or maybe that's Riley. Could be Riley, but Mott makes both apple sauce and apple juice. That's that they are the apples. I don't know if they make Apple Jacks, though. I think that's Kellogg's. Cinnamon Toasted. Hmm? I said Cinnamon Toasted. <laughs> I'm going to go, because why not? How about a Mod Exacta? Mod Exacta? What's it pay? The Mod Exacta. So that is the... 10 over the three or 310. 
So 310 pays 245. 10-3, 275. Box that for two bucks. That's $4 well spent. Yes. I'm going to mop that. Mop that up. I was at the uh, getting some gas yesterday. Ooh. A person in front of me <clears throat> bought like $112 of scratchers. I got my stuff paid for my gas and I walked out and they were the first person when I walked out the door, I said, hey, can you spare a few bucks? And I was like, <laughs> no, but good luck on the tickets. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is this is the first leg of the turf pick three. Hmm. You've got a, I think the pace here is going to be pretty, pretty stout, right? I think so. We got to talk to Scotty about getting these pick threes. We, we thought this last race was wide open though. You got a couple pletchers. You're going to have to take a stand somewhere. Let's just see what we have here. I'm going to go as fast as I can since there's no ticket generator. I mean, the five furlong race, there's nobody who can really raid in that race or has hmm. raided. I'm not a big fan of Luca and his Panini um, rating either. So maybe you take a shot on the Platcher who's almost done it as your single, the 10 Artemis sound. And so let's see here. So if that's my single, let's do this. So what did I have here? It was one, two, four, seven. 10, 12. Let's see, I'm trying to put to figure out if I can put together a ticket here in that manner. One, two, four, 10 through 12. And then we were to single the 10. And then on the last, the four. Scotty was interested in the five. So I go three, four. Three, four, six, twelve, five. I don't know. Ninety bucks. What are you saying? So I played it this way. I'm not seeing what you're showing. I can't show it because it's not oh, me. You know, yeah. I played one, two, four, ten through twelve, singled the ten, and then played three, four, five, six, twelve in the last. All right. Justin's got a pretty big double going in the next race at Keeneland, so we'll want to get out there. Uh, Oldie, why don't you start monkeying around with Aqueduct while we're waiting for uh, them to get to the gate here at uh, Goldstream? All right. Oh, monkey. Monkey. Monked it around with it, real, would you? All right. Budget. Once single. The four to five horse. For Dana and his Jacobson, or yeah, David and his Jacobson. Uh, you know, I'm not sure I love this horse as a single. I was going to try to beat it, but I don't know that I have time to find something else. I may not yeah. have a choice. 
it does go back several generations and uh, looks at uh, the families of the runners uh, when it comes up with the GSR number. James, and if you work here for Bond, James Bond. James and his Bond, shake and not stirred. I'd probably watch out for these first time starters. You got a, a Chad Brown in here. Not working great, but not awful. It's not a great group. First time Dutch row there. I mean, I don't like the seven. I don't particularly like the three, the long shot. We're getting over on the turf course over here at Goldstream. Well, Oldie gets his late pick five ticket up here. Let's see. So the two, no. I'm going to take right. a second horse in that. Keep looking at it. We'll flip back to there in a minute after this race goes off at Goldstream. If you want to take a shot against Thomas those four to five shots, the other this is how I would play it. Yeah, I've got the Goldstream race up. We'll flip back over that in, in just a minute. Bandula. Abangula. Yeah, Jeff, race sim has been I'll on fire. Seek. Just so you guys do, I just want to get a quick screenshot of all these pick five there in case Aqueduct goes off. That's it there. Um, we'll flip right back to that after. The Dover Spectre and a here. full field on turf. There in the gate. Got a couple minutes to offer them. And yep. they're off. Good start inside for every four years who heads off for the early advantage in the middle. Here's Time Song moving up. Splitting horses is Gagalardi, who's down toward the inside and the run to the wire the first time. The leader is every four years, and Edgar Zayas on top by a length. Gagliardi is there second with Time Song in third. At the rail, Double Need is now fourth from a wide-running Dover Spectre. Dela Cruz is in between horses ahead of Midnight Council and Inherent Promise. Inherent Promise, one of the favorites, is about six lengths behind. He works two and a half better than Il Siciliano. Off heels there was Dover Spectre, who angles to the far outside. Reggae Man is toward the rail, and Bandula is at the back with Aurasik just ahead of him. They went the opening quarter in 22 and 4. Less than six furlongs to run on the race every four years. Three wide, time song in between horses. Gagliardi, these three across the course. Racing out the rail, that's double neat. He's racing together God, with I Inherent Promise, who in purpose. the center. Dela Cruz is ticket. in the middle with Midnight Council guarding the inside spot. Length and a half then to the Dover Spectre, who's two in front of Al Rasik, then Il Siciliano and Bandula. Reggae Man is now last. And went the half in 47 seconds flat. They leave the back stretch and move on to the far turn. Time Where song up now with crack at every four years. Third while driven inherent promise on from fourth. Dela Cruz dropping back Gagliardi. Not much running home from the back through three quarters and one ten and four. Off the turn and the stretch drive. Time song has the lead here for Jaramillo and tries to get away. In the middle now, Dela Cruz begins to finish up under Vasquez toward the inside inherent promise. They come past the eighth pole. Time song boots clear up into second. Dela Cruz back to third and Heron Thomas, then Boston. double neat. Time saw in front. That's the one place I've been wrong all day. Huh? So maybe I should stop playing Golfstream today. That's the one place I've been wrong all day. Yeah. All right. So while I get the stage shut up here for Aqueduct, let me get your screen back up here. Is that your final ticket? That is, yes. No more adjustments. All right. That is K K 
giving myself a chance to defeat that one to four, that four to five favorite, but still trying to advance. All right. I do think that the one sorority prank might get an easy lead in race seven. But you also have a Chad Brown second time starter there. Mm hmm. By good magic. Tampa Bay Downs is up next. Uh, we've got 21 minutes to Keeneland. And I think the late pick five at Keeneland. Too. Special. Correct. We'll do Tampa and then we'll get out to Keeneland. Blue plate special to the outside. And it. All set. And they're off. Blue plate special was off slowly. Double ski shows early speed from in between horses. There's Bayou Spirit. Bayou Spirit with a neck in front. Right towards the outside is 12th man who's going to stalk from second three wide. That's Devil's Key. At the rail, Pink Cap Anthracite. Slow starting. Blue Plate Special is eight lengths the trailer. They're chasing Bayou Spirit. Bayou Spirit and Jose Lescano doing it easily enough so far. 12th man is right to the outside here. Is back to within a half length of the leader as they work into the far turn. Devil's Key is three wide. Anthracite with a ground saving trip for Ruiz is tightly at the rail. Going to need somewhere to go. Blue Plate Special starts to warm up to the task, but is still seven off the lead. They went 22.46 for that hot opening quarter as they approach a quarter mile left to go. They're still chasing Bayou Spirit. Bayou Spirit's got a quarter mile left to go at the top of the stretch. Went 45 and three for that half mile time and is kicking away. Devil's Key is in full pursuit to the outside of 12th man. Down at the inside, it's Anthracite. Will Bayou Spirit hold off the oncoming charge of Devil's Key, who's cutting into the margin now? Devil's Key to the outside here of Bayou Spirit, who's still in front. Bayou Spirit, Devil's Key. These two down to the line. Bayou Spirit would not let Devil's Key by. No. Nope. Bayou Spirit wins it over Devil's Key. All right, better price. And one minute, 10.4. You spirit. All right. So we are going to Keeneland now, or are we going to Tampa? Tampa. Okay. Tampa. We have some race sims. We got stuff like that coming up. Yeah, Chris Tampa Larry, race seven. Thirty minutes. I mean, you're getting seven to two on the, well, going down to thirty nine percent horse. Mm hmm. But let's see here. I mean, this horse looks solid for Tim and his yep. ham. Lots of yellow. How about Harpoon Harry? Yeah. Are... Winner last out. Stepping up a bit for. Uh... Jerry Bennett. How about somebody coming late? I think you that would be something you definitely want to look at. Dean likes the 258 box. He likes the six to win place and show as well, journeyman. I'm gonna call it two two six eight box. Two six eight. All right, only they're walking back to shoot. You've I'm got. I'm going two six eight here, and I'll as well. You know, interesting that Camacho is not riding for Bennett here. Mm hmm. I'm going to do two six. Seven eight in a try as well. All or right. should I play it Scotty style and play it two all all? Hmm. You could do both. There's no limit. I know. There's always a limit. It's your budget. 
Sure. I don't think I want to play a fifty-six dollar try. Well, you gotta. We gotta get you to that uh, that next race at uh, Laurel too. Yep. All right. Only take them through Tampa. Uh, the Laurel race is three minutes to go, so I'll be back for that, and then we'll get over to Keeneland, where we have sixteen minutes. Okay. All right. You're teed up for Tampa. All right, Tampa. Getting close to the gate, so I'm gonna gonna bring this up here. Looks like a beautiful day at Tampa. Actually, so we got another approach to the gate. One minute. We'll hopefully get an update yeah, from Justin soon on how he's doing at the track. Lining up now for today's seventh as we start the final pick three on yep. Saturday card. Field of nine here at a mile to sixteenth on turf. Two to one favorite number two grounded. Three to one on the number six journeyman. Seven to two on the number five. Be here. Those are your top three choices. Here is be here moving up. Grounded Thank coming in of the devil. You know, somebody just asked how Justin was doing at the track. Here's Epic Luck. At the moment, I'm in pure madness. Okay, here, down on the, I'm almost to the rail. I'll probably make my way there. Are we at the first finish line? Harpoon Harry, Magical Marriage, and Camino de Santiago will be all set. You're at the first finish line? How are you doing in the contest? Uh, we're live a hundred dollar double to Julia Shiny. Okay, 1400. Uh, so just trying to get a little bit of cash. I'm for sure playing the next race, probably a vertical bet or maybe a double coming out of it as well. Uh, but, but just playing into Julia here, nothing out of it. Yeah, makes sense. I'm a little worried about the pace in that race for you, though, with the scratch of the three. Yeah, I, I thought the three was interesting. Yeah, see, we're like almost to uh, finish line. I'll let the race go here, Oldie. We have a late scratch here by order the or on advice of the veterinarian and by order of the steward. Scratch number two grounded. Number two grounded is a late scratch. We will have refunds on all win play show exact favorite at Tampa just scratch. Five combinations involving the number two. You do still have some time as number two grounded will come back toward the saddling area. So we are going to back out all the other runners. So you do have some time to exchange wagers, get a late scratch here of number two grounded. If you have that horse in the late pick four, five, six, there will be, you will receive the post time favorite here in the late pick four, pick five, or pick six. You had the number two scratch grounded. there. Up for battle here is now with the looks like Justin's going to come back on this year. No, he's on with us in these final few moments again. Late scratch number two just now. scratched at uh, at Tampa. Tampa. We might need to go to uh, hang on to those. There will be Laurel, payouts. Okay, let's uh, here of number two grounded again. Grounded is walking down. Your seven's now got a big pace advantage there, by the way. All right, Oldie, who are we rooting on here? The three. The three for the Oldie double. And burning up the dough. Burning up the dome. My house. In the gate. 
Let's go three. Good break. And they're off. Burning up the dough. Fire is first out of the gate from Irish Bandit and Neil to the King. Little Lance is fourth and three lengths off of speed. Dan's for green. Another six lengths back in Kingdom Forces trailing the field. Burning up the dough as a narrow lead heading into the turn. Burning up the dough and neck in front from tight Irish Bandit on the inside. Neil to the King. Little Lance out of the clear three deep. Here comes Little Lance moving second and chasing. Burning up the dough around the far turn. So burning up the dough at a control clip out there. Leads it by a length and a half from Little Lance. Hey. Irish Sorry. Bandit in third. Neil of the King ridden from over from fourth. Dancer Green ground saving there at top of the line with five to make up in Kingdom Force trailing the field. Burning up the dough still showing the way into the stretch. Burning up the dough has to kick on. Burning up the dough has to spread away by three. Almost four lengths now from Little Lance in second and then it's back to Jump Irish off. Bandit who's third on the inside actually battling along nicely for second but in the meantime burning up the Sorry, guys. at the 16th pole with a three length advantage of Sorry, Lance, and Irish it, burning up uh, the dough with Angel Cruz. Stars in the sack, Mr. Little Lance was second, Irish Bandit third, Dance for Green fourth. All right. Uh, what do we want to do? What should we get out to um, go back to Tampa? Let's go back to Tampa. They're still circling around. We've got about 20 minutes till Chris joins. Yep. Justin, we're just uh, going to catch this Tampa race here, uh, and then we'll get back to you. Uh, looking good there. Sweet. Julia. Julia Shining. Big double to Julia Shining. Big double. Jeff's asking, how does the scratch of the two change things, Oldie? It changes the pace scenario because the the two was going to have a huge pace advantage. Now the seven does because they were the only two real paces in this in this race. So you potentially could get a, heading into the starting game a price on that seven. seven. Get a late scratch here of number two ground, and that puts the favoritism to the number six journeyman at even money. Here's Rare Jewel to the inside. Epic Luck will be next. Harpoon Harry coming forward. QF75 and Magical Marriage are going to be the next two. They go in, waiting on Be Here and Camino de Santiago will be all set for a start. Camino de Santiago, Angel Arroyo coming forward. They're in the gate. And the race is on. Be Here, the gray showing good speed in the center. That Harpoon Harry starting to move up to that one's outside, and those two are quickest here right between them, journeymen. The favorite came away third. The far outside Magical Marriage is fourth. As they come into the stretch, it's Be Here and Antonio Gallardo in front by a length. The Harpoon Harry in second. Journeyman finds a good spot tucked into the rail in third. Then we come back to Magical Marriage. Down along the fence, Rare Jewel is back fifth following the path of Journeyman. Length more back to Epic Luck. Then comes Camino de Santiago. They're right together. And they're two lengths in front of QF75, who's the early trailer. Up front, Be Here is the leader. It's Be Here in front of length and a half. The Harpoon Harry Journeyman. Follows down along the inside. That opening quarter, 22 and 3. Be here, takes them out of the back stretch. A length in front. A Harpoon Harry. Journeyman Seven didn't get the message third. that he was supposed and to be on the outside league. Magical marriage. No, he did and not. Joe are fourth, about three and a half, four off the top. A length more then. A back to Rare Jewel, who's down on the inside of Camino de it's Santiago. Fast. Epic Luck had a little bit of trouble on that first turn. Is now back second last in QF 75 trails. 46 and 2, the opening half mile time. Be here, takes him to the fire, turn a half length in front of Harpoon Harry, who's sent after that one on the outside. Journeyman waiting in the wings down toward the inside was just given the cue to go after them from third. Length more back to Magical Marriage, then two and a half more back to Rare Jewel, as they still got to get to be here. 
B here is the leader. Harpoon Harry took a crack. Now up on the outside, starting to warm up his magical marriage. Journeyman now sees daylight and swings into action. Here comes Journeyman up after B here, and Journeyman grabs the lead. Be here back to second. Magical marriage third on the outside, a final 16 to go, and Journeyman takes off. Journeyman and Daniel Centeno are going to win it here at even money. Journeyman, uh, two and a half, three in the end. Mm. Magical marriage was second. Be here third. QF 75 close. All right, we got one loose race at Keeneland before the late pick five. That's correct. I had two over the one, seven one four here in my notes, but I think the four could, has a shot. Justin's at the finish line here for this race. Minutes to post. Five minutes to post. Justin uh, at the finish line here. He's got a large double in play to Julia Shining. <clears throat> What's the uh, the simulator showing here, Oldie? Let's pull it up. You want to pull it up? Yeah, give me a sec here. Get, get it ready. ready. I'll get you up on the screen. There's the gate. Ready? Let Race me... six. There and you go. On, and then they're off. Now keep in mind the three was still. The three scratched. So it's going to change the pace scenario. Yeah. We're supposed to get staging this week. So next week's show, we should be able to show these uh, um, through the system and not just via video so we can remove those. Yeah. Justin looks concerned about his to Julia Shining, but there it is, the winner. No, he says no, he's ready to go. I, I, I thought it was probably the shock of the, of the day, to be honest, is my opinion. It is packed down here, though. It's it's crazy. Um, it's inside. It's obviously way more chill, but it's beautiful. I, I just thought for this field, I actually like the three oldie before the scratch. You know, I thought it was really interesting with the two, but... I, I just think, you know, much. I think this is a comeback. It's a good spot. I, I think that, you know, it doesn't have to come back and win, win, you know, in any versus a very tough field. That could be a question mark against, though, right? So, but I, I really thought it was probably the chalk today out of all the races. Uh, yeah, Holdy, I mean, what is, what's the will pay on the, uh, on that, uh, on Julia for the double. It's I think, four, I think it's 14 to one, Chris. I have it for a hundred bucks. So it'll, I missed my first entry. This will get it back. And then 
I'll be firing in the next race for sure. All right, let's get Julia home here. At the golf cart on the inner turf. There's no rail on the inner turf. They just got to go through the tree and the uh, and the rail there. Moving into line, race six. All right, feels oldie like the time where we want to ask for uh, likes. Hit the like button, subscribe. Helps the channel out a bunch. Please do. We have a big guest coming up in a couple minutes here. Yep, should be showing up soon. We'll then we'll get into the late pick five. We'll talk value betting. Uh, Chris Laramie with the bet with the best podcast. Magical loot goes in. Bunch of great uh, guests he's had on since he started it. Julia Shining. Little King's Princess. Sultry last, two more to load. Here's Fireline. Musical Mischief, the last one. Going in. All right. First wire at the post. And they're off. There goes Lil King's Princess. Lil King's Princess from between horses comes out for the early lead. Then Fia Shining back toward the inside. Lil King's Princess, though, has the lead. Starts to get closer to the rail as they move into the first turn. Musical Mischief moves up just off her flank into second. Around the outside of Fireline, who's third. Sultry last fourth. Julia Shining, a lane off the rail in fifth around the first turn. And Magical Loot is last of the six. Already Lil shown King's more speed than she's shown in any bird. Quarter, 24, right, races. Seven seconds. Leads by a length. Musical Mischief goes second by three quarters of a length. Sultry last, third upon the outside, then Fireline fourth back toward the inside. With Julia Shining at fifth, five lengths off the lead. She's got Magical Loot right behind her, who travels in sixth as they reach the midpoint of the back stretch. Lil King's Princess dictates the terms here and leads it by two lengths. Opening half mile went in 48.65 seconds. Lil King's Princess leading Musical Mischief, who is second by three quarters of a length. Sultry last third, and then Fireline, who's back toward the inside and fourth. Still three and a half lengths off the lead. Julia Shining is another length behind her, and then Magical Loot against the rail at the back. They're midway on the far turn, and here's Musical Mischief now starting to move up to the outside of Lil King's Princess. The battle for the lead a quarter mile out. Julia Shining and Fireline are coming. Here's Julia Shining. She is swinging up to the Far side at the top of the short stretch, right alongside of Musical Mischief. Julia Shining from the outside, Musical Mischief to the inside, and then Magical Loot who goes to the rail third into the final furlong. Fire line is fourth. Musical Mischief, Magical Loot up the inside. Uh -huh. Julia Shining, Magical Loot, Magical Loot, and Brian Hernandez Jr. got it by a neck. Musical Mischief second, Julia Shining third, Fire Line fourth. Fire. Ah, brutal. What was that? The one, I think. Yeah, the long shot. Yes. Oh, was it? Nice. All right. I'll be back with you guys soon. All right. Sounds good, buddy. So like I played a one, two, four, seven try box there. Mm hmm. Didn't get the four, which I was hoping for, but yeah, with the one on top, it's not going to be bad. No, no, not at all. Not at all. All right, we got two minutes to golf stream. Okay, let me get that teed up for us.
Very good, Dean. You having trouble, Oldie? Very well done, Dean. There we go. There we go. All, All right, right. We're on the... go. I've got a uh, Goldstream keyed up for you. I'm going to refresh my beverage. I'll be right back. Enjoy refreshing your beverage. Raging right. Fury, the three is a little interesting at six to one. Um, I don't see why the the two thirty three three thirty three needs to win this race. You know, is dropping, did come close against 60s, 64s, 62s, 54s. This horse just tends to hang. So if you're going to play exacta, the two might be a great horse to key in second in an exacta or a try. Um, the seven is getting hammered. Low GSR, don't see it. Four is a little interesting for Del Delgado. So let's see if we can put a try together here. Let's clear this. Two. Three, six, see that two in second. There you go, and then play that potentially for multiples. We'll have Chris Larmy coming in in a minute or two here, uh, just waiting for Chris to come back and bring him in. And we have a great guest from the Bet with the Best podcast. I believe he's also an NHC Hall of Famer. So Chris will give you the the full introduction here, but uh, looks like uh, it should be a great afternoon, and I look forward to hearing his thoughts on the late pick five at uh, Keeneland as well. Yeah, we'll get to uh, Chris right after this Gulfstream race here as they dawdle around. He has arrived. I see him backstage, and uh, should be a good little segment for us. Yes, Jeff, the race simulator is just very cool. Um, yes, Jay, I'll have, I'll have one for you too, buddy. So interesting here, Chris. This two horse. Mm-hmm really likes to finish second. Like, finish second against 60s, finish second against 66s, finish second against 54s, 56s, 50s. So put it where it belongs. Put it in second. Oh, I pull up my screen for a second. Still time for your wagers. Oh, Race 6 starts the late pick 5. I keyed it in second. There you go. Three, four, six over the two over three, three, seven. Love it. Six bucks. Let's see if we can get that one home and then we'll get Chris Laramie in here. Yep. Yeah, Keeneland is packed today, Scott. Um, they, uh, Justin said that he believes it's sold out. And of course, Justin didn't need a ticket because he had his Equinage yeah. media credentials. All right, they love to dance around here. Let's see if Pete can get. Are we going to get Chris's thought thoughts on Moncton? 
No, uh, we're not going to get Chris's thoughts on Moncton. I don't think he does 24 furlong races on the turf. I could see him <laughs> backstage. He is like, yeah, no, don't don't ask me about Moncton. To be honest, Moncton, it's not just on the turf. It's through a forest. Yeah. These are timber races, baby. You got to yield timber. Uh, they only they, they race one day a year. They have five races. There's no wagering. Uh, it's just funny that Equinage picks it up because it is through Equibase. So if you want to bet that, you got to bet with your friends. All right. Uh, let's see. Is Pete getting them into the gate here? He sure is. Yeah, we're going to look at the late pick five. As soon as we get done with uh, with this, Jeff, we're going to go straight to Keelan and, uh, and kind of talk through that late sequence there. All this right. is our at the gate. Moving in with Beastly Speed and Tayshawn Hazelwood ready. I Hey, hey, Harry. Time for the late pick five. Early. Early. And they're off. Off a touch slow Apollo code. Good start outside for Hey, Hey, Harry and Beastly Speed. These two race on ahead of Raging Fury, oh, who's angling the outside right in the third. Seven. 333 is at the rail and fourth is the favorite, followed by Southern Dream and playing catch up after a bad break. The trailer Apollo Code and the run to the half mile point. Hey, Hey, Harry taken on now by Raging Fury and the orange colors is moving into second. From 333, who's back to third. Up to the center, that's Southern Dream. Hey, passing hey, Beastly Speed, man. who gets the shuffle. And out the back is Apollo Code. 23 seconds for the opening quarter. They round the far turn. Hey, hey, Harry has a lead by a neck. Here's Raging Fury up alongside for Zayas in second. Two back to Southern Dream, driven together with 333. Trying to get motivated from the back is Beastly Speed. Apollo seven. Code trails. They reach the top of the stretch. 46 and three for the opening half mile. Raging Fury has the lead. He still has work to do, but he's traveling with only yeah. and a half advantage. On the far outside, Hazelwood underway with Beastly Speed. He gives up a ton of ground off the corner and Raging Fury. Oh, an eighth six. of a mile out. Four lengths on top. Beastly Speed tries to catch 333 for second, but Raging Fury has the lead. Here's win 2,500 for trainer Eddie Plisa Jr., a South Florida legend, as Raging Fury reports home four lengths to the good. Beastly me Speed second, third. 333 third. Southern Dream. Well, that's a bummer. All right, let's uh, clear the deck here. Uh, let me get rid of this. Let me add Chris in. All right, Chris Laramie, NHC Hall of Famer, 12-time NHC qualifier, and a guy that everybody should uh, hit the like button for because back uh, a couple of years ago, um, Chris was one of the guys responsible for going to Washington, D.C., and getting uh, the the IRS payouts resolved so that when you hit a $600 winner or more, you're not getting those 1099s. So welcome, Chris. Thanks for joining us. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you, Chris and Oldie, for inviting me on. Um, I'm always enthusiastic about uh, talking horses, and I haven't really done a live stream quite like this before, so it'll be fun and interesting. Looking forward to it. Yeah, well, I'm happy to have you on. I've been following you. Oldie and I and Justin, and we kind of all met uh, during the pandemic era uh, when Scotty first started doing these shows on YouTube. And um, it, it's, it's been a few years, but I came across your uh, your writings and whatnot on how to put your pick five in overdrive and, and your spreadsheet and everything else and have used that many, many times. I don't play as many anymore. Uh, because I run them through that sheet, which takes some time, and it'll show you what kind of value you can get um, on, 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 on that wager and whatnot. And so I, I really love the, the ideas that you had in terms of, you know, not using alls and, and doing multiple tickets and just figuring all that stuff out. How did you come up with that? Well, I've been playing this game for, for a long time. And um, I'm a math guy, so I always tend to come at things analytically. And I've always been kind of focused on the betting side as well as the handicapping side, which I think is um, 
why I started the bet with the best podcast was because I do think most people are kind of fixated on, on picking winners and handicapping races and don't spend nearly as much time thinking about how to leverage their opinion and cash in, in terms of making bets. And especially for things like exotic wagering, like the pick five or, you know, even tries and supers, anything beyond a win bet, you know, the, how you structure the tickets becomes almost as important in some cases, just as important and in some cases, even more important than how you handicap the race. So, you know, I'm trying to help people get better at the betting side. Um, you know, I also love the handicapping. That's the fun part, right? That's the mm -hmm. puzzle everyone likes to solve. And, you know, picking winners is fun. And you get that, you know, feeling of, you know, I, you know, I picked the winner. I knew how that race was going to unfold. Um, but that's, you know, it's kind of, I use the analogy of golf. You know, that's like driving for show. That gets you, you know, maybe down the fairway. But um, in order to make a score, You've got to be able to put the ball in the cup, and that's where the betting comes in. And, and without both tools in your toolbox, you, you really don't have much of a chance of being successful as a, as a horse player long term. So I've kind of focused recently, more recently, on the betting stuff because I think there's a lot of content like what you guys have here on the handicapping side, although I do have a, a, a handicapping podcast that I do, Sport of Kings, with, with um, Scott Carson every week. Um, but the bet with the best is really focused on the betting side. So it's probably a longer yeah. answer than you were looking for, but um, that's no, 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 not at all. I mean, okay. the characters you've had on for, with the bet, with the best podcast, uh, Mike Maloney, Paul Sherman, Barry Meadow, um, Steve Christ. I mean, I don't know how you get Steve Christ, but congrats to you, but people should listen to that Steve Chris one. And then like two days later, listen to it again because there's so much good information he has in there in terms of how he bets, where he bets, the rules he has. I love the blog that he used to do on DRF when, uh, when during Saratoga, because you know, I, I, I lived in California back then and, and, and Steve was a big, and still is a, 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 a pick six player and learning how to bet that thing correctly uh, and, and sticking with your opinion and you know living or dying on it so to speak is just great great content so people should definitely uh, look that up google it bet with the best podcast mm -hmm. um good stuff and your your handicapping show is awesome too so we want to have you on here uh to kind of go through the last five races which i think you were kind of interested in um at keeneland so i'm gonna add i don't know if you've ever seen equin edge it's a it's a just a basic handicapping tool it's got a lot of info here. Uh, Oldie has got- I'll give you a thing, a blank pick yeah. five here. So bunch of info, if you've never seen um, what we have here, but this is all uh, Scotty McKeever developed over, over many, many years. So we've got, as you can see the morning line there, and then an EE morning line where this, the system is generating its own morning line based on multiple different algorithms and factors. Um, under the EE metrics column there, uh, where you see those those three things in there, we, there's a, a win, uh, a win percentage number attached to each horse, the pace, which is its first call, and then what we call the strength of race, which is, um, you know, kind of who they're running against, and that matches that number up there at the top, which is uh, strength of race for this particular race. And then you have, you know, G GSR is our genetic strength rating, where that's more on breeding, uh, jockey trainer stats, et cetera. And then we just had a new release on Wednesday um, that'll show you when you get to that that little uh, badge there that will give you what, what, what we're calling a horse to watch, which is it's rating it at 32% because it's top win, uh, top pick, and top GSR. I believe this one only has a positive 7% ROI. Yes, correct. And then 32% the win. Um, and, you know, I talked about this earlier today. Uh, I'm starting to look at these as, okay, does the win percentage of those matches for this horse, is it higher than the win percentage algorithm? If that's the case, and I see 9 to 1, to me, that has value. 
And then, uh, Oldie, if you go click through here and find maybe a race where we get a Bruno work, that's the other thing that was been integrated in on this past week is we now have the Bruno works uh, inside as he gets over there inside here. So instead of just relying on the generic uh, workout reports, we now have uh, the Bruno workout reports in there as well. If he's got comments, they're published there. And then if there are any videos there. Uh, of I'll see if there's any videos in here. So uh, just interesting stuff. This is kind of like somewhat formulator on steroids because it has a lot of the same information. Uh, just an easier way to get to things. So if you want to go look at that workout, go ahead and put it up, Oldie. I'm oh, sorry. So if we've no, got a video there, we had I one. just got to refine. You know. There we go. So if there's a workout here, there you go. You get it right to their single pane of glass, and now you can watch this horse work. You can see that it's inside of the outside horse. So if you're if you're you're big on workouts if you like bruno reports good way to encompass everything in wall one single pane of glass how how big are workouts for your handicapping well i um yeah i do uh use them not for every type of race i mean like a, a typical claiming race with horses that are you know pretty well established I don't think workouts are too meaningful unless horses are coming off a layoff then i might pay more attention to it but certainly in the um you know horses off layoffs you know young horses in maiden races and nowadays stakes races because they run so infrequently it's like they're off a layoff almost every time they run so that's when i pay attention to them and i do really like having video works i like what um you know bruno has done with that and what xvtv does um, I do like that um, feature, um, but I don't look at every workout of every horse or anything. It's kind of selective, but it, there are times when, um, and I'll, I'll mention a few as we go through this play pick five where I, I watch the workouts and, and you know, factored that into my handicapping. Can, yeah, can I make a couple observations? Because I'm not real familiar with Equine Edge, but I can, just from a betting standpoint, I can point out some of the things I think are really good about it. Um, I don't know what you want to talk about. Um, so go for it. Go for it. This is free well, form, what, buddy. What I really like that, you know, that anybody uses this tool probably has an edge over most other players is that it gives you that what I think is the EEML, but that's sort of like it's fair odds line, what it thinks the, the horse's price should be. Um, so having that and then being able to compare that to you know, the odds, the actual odds, you know, that's probably w without that ability, you know, that sort of tool, that fair odds line, it's really hard to decide when you want to pull the trigger on a win bet, right? But this tool enables you to see where you're actually getting some value. And, um, you know, to me, that's kind of an essential part of being able to be successful at, at win betting is to kind of have in your mind what price you think the horse should be and then don't get wedded to that horse um just get wedded to the bet and so you know you don't want to make the bet if you like a horse and you think it should be two to one and it goes off at four to five you should not be betting that horse i mean you're betting against your own opinion and the whole idea is that you want to bet in a way that's consistent with your opinion so having that fair odds line i think is just a really big important step towards being successful you know better um and being able to cash in on your opinion in a consistent way so you know that just alone that piece alone puts you ahead of most of the crowd right there yeah we have uh we have a whatsapp chat that's pretty active seven days a week uh i don't know three four hundred people in there um they bet mahoning valley they bet parks they bet all of these different things and whenever somebody says i love this horse in whatever race i'm like Fall in love with the bet, not the horse. I think I, I've heard you say that multiple different times uh, uh, as we've uh, as, as I've followed you. It looks like Scotty's going to join us here. Scotty McKeever. Uh, What's going on, guys? Chris, Chris Laramie here. First time, hey, that, uh, first time that uh, that he's taken a good look at Equinedge, and uh, the, the first call out there was the EE morning line in terms of being established that price. So. Yeah, well, that's not hard. Unfortunately, the odds maker has been 
a little rough over at Keeneland this meet so far. So, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, that's not an easy job though. It's just really not like I, I wouldn't want to do that job. It's really hard. Um, and a lot of, a lot of people are forced to do that job. I don't know why the tracks don't want to put good money towards getting a good um, morning line odds maker in my time. That was a, that was a serious job because uh, I will always been under the belief that the more accurate the morning line, the more the track will make because you want people to win being this is tote betting, right? So. I'm surprised you're not advocating, you know, AI morning line. <laughs> so. No, we have Chris. Um, there's been a couple of big tracks that almost wanted to, we're going to use our morning line for whatever reason they, they didn't push through with it. Um, but we are in negotiations with people to do that. I don't know if it's in our best interest because that's actually part of what, we offer our customers too is we, we can help you with uh, a more accurate morning line. Yeah. And you know, also we haven't talked about it, but just the, the difficulty of, of, of un knowing what the actual off price will be because the late odds changes. And that's where, you know, looking yeah. ahead into the double pools and trying to project off odds using that information is useful. I don't know if you do that with uh, equine edge, but you know, that's yeah. a way to help kind of combat the, you know, difficulties you have with morning lines and with you know the current prices you know even a few minutes to post yeah, um, yeah so Chris, one of the things we do have here only if you'll click on uh probables up there is we do have via the tote um the the probables for exactas and then only if you go to the double there um you can also see the double oldie sorry hold on there we go. Yeah. So you can go here and you've got everything kind of on a single pane of glass again. So if you're looking to play a double and you want to go through um, what price you're getting, I like to tell people in our coaching classes that this is your kind of your menu here. What price do you want? Do you want 15 to one? Do you want five to one? If you do, here are your horses. And then Oldie will take you through here um, um, how he generates pick fives and using the ticket generator, which will do things for us, but it also allows you to influence it with your own opinion. Yeah, so it, and it, it really depends on what your budget is too. So if, let's say your budget was $60. So you just plug in $60 and it will actually pick horses for you. Um, and then you can come in and let's say, I don't like this four horse. And I don't like this two horse. I'm just randomly eliminating horses. And let's say in this race, I don't like the three and I don't like the five or, you know, there's no value on those horses. You can then regenerate and it will re-spread your money. And it's a bunch of algorithms that are looking at the win percentage, the the picks and a bunch of our other algorithms that are out there looking for not only the most likely winner, but in some cases where the, the value is on a long shot as well. And, you know, so the, this elimination feature is great. Um, you can obviously put them back in as well. And, you know, you'll see Scotty a lot of times. He'll have something down to two or three horses in a race. Well, and then there's, uh, um, guys, we're, we're, we're working on one right now that's going to be put it, using the horses to watch, the Equine Edge picks and long shot pick. The, the, there's, we're going to make it a little bit more sophisticated instead of being so focused driven on the, on the win percentage algorithm. So it's, I'm really excited about the potential of it. We're, we're in works with it right now. So in yeah, terms of if handicapping this, uh, we've got a, uh, how many minutes we got to Keelan Oldie? Well, it says zero, but that's wrong. We have uh, four minutes to post. All right. So looking through this, Chris, did you kind of look at the late sequence? Did you have any horses to watch, so to speak, things you liked, value you yeah. saw? Yeah, definitely. I mean, in this race, I really liked uh, the horse you had the little badge on bling was sort of the horse I thought was the value play in here. Um, uh, this horse has been really good almost every race, but I think it's best sprinting on turf. 
and um, uh, it's forms a little muddied up because they've been trying everything with this horse and now it's back where it belongs. Um, but I do think Roses for Deborah is just a, a monster. You know, she has crushed every every field she's faced of Phillies and her last two against the boys really weren't that bad. So, you know, to me, she kind of stands out in here. Um, so I'm going to, you know, the way I play it was to try to hook those two up and those would be the only two I would use in like a pick five or any kind of pick. And I'd have a heavy lean on roses for Deborah probably. Um, my, you know, kind of my philosophy on the pick five is you only play it if you think you're creating value in at least a couple of the legs. And, um, uh, you know, I, I, so I'm really focused more on value than, than hitting it. Um, I'm not really that interested in hitting it if it's going to be chalky because even if you play a lot of horses, your percentage chance of actually hitting it when you do the math isn't that great in a pick five. So you want to get rewarded when you do hit it. Um, so that's kind of my philosophy. You, know, you mentioned that a couple of the things I've written about pick fives. That's kind of the main, the main thesis is uh, you've, even though it's a pick five, you can't just play it to cat. You try to hit it. You've got to still look for value if you're trying to make money long term. You know, if you're just trying to go, you go once a month and you want to hit a pick five. I get it, but you know, ten, I think tendency is to overspread, and the tendency is to is to um, single the obvious single and spread in the obvious spread races, and you typically don't get rewarded as much as you think, even when you hit those. So you've got to sort of understand how the crowd typically plays the pick five and you want to try to zig when others are typically zagging so that you can um you know make sure again that you're getting you know some good value when you do cash so that's kind of the philosophy i have in the pick five it's really great advice chris you know i, I played pick sixes my entire life especially when there were two dollar denominations and i would try to find vulnerable favorites no matter what their morning line was because people are influenced by the morning line and i would eliminate those those horses many times and that would give me more bullets to spread in some of the other races so it's exactly what you said right you you have to think outside the box and not go with the grain absolutely great advice yeah one of the worst things to do is to um say you don't like a favorite and then include it <laughs> in your pick five you know, the, the only way you get the value is to beat the favorite. And if you don't like it, why in the world are you throwing it in and like doubling or, you know, the price of your ticket potentially say if you had it down to two horses and you think the favorite's really vulnerable, you know, why would you throw it in? So that I think throwing in the favorite um, because you don't want to get beat by the favorite, you know, like, oh, it's a Chad. I don't want to get beat by the Chad in the turf race, but you really don't like it. You know, that's the worst thing to do. You know, that's you got you have to stick to your opinion and make sure your bet kind of reflects your handicapping opinion. Anytime you're betting against your own opinion, it's a bad bet, regardless of what the result is. That's right. Yeah, and I, I like how you analyze that in the uh, in your your PDF with the uh, with the uh, uh, going all in a race for uh, you know when people people like to do that. Uh, I, I know that I did that in uh, over the course of a few months, a couple of years ago. Uh, I had 32 straight favorites win in all races that I took. And so, you know, you talk about, you know, removing the favorite, um, going, removing the top two contenders. I think if you, like you said, if in an all race, if you really think that, uh, that, that you can get prices there, just drop the top four morning lines and, and include that in there, include that in your ticket and roll with that. Because like you said, even if you get beat by the favorite, yeah, you don't win. But if you do get those bottom six if it's a if it's a 10 horse race and you're only including those and dropping the top four you're really set up to cash yeah they're getting ready to go off here at keeneland so first leg was uh underway all right let me get that race up here
play the music is in seventh. Bling is eighth. Ouvray toward the inside is in Come ninth. On. And then uh, Secret Money is 10th. Breeze Easy is 11th and Kissed by Fire. Last of the 12, BG Warrior is on top. Guides the field onto the far turn, leading Port Townsend by a length and a half. Another length and a half to Elm Drive, who travels in third position. Takes toward the outside now as they come for the top of the stretch. Roses for Deborah Looks to the inside, is still fourth. And running six lengths off the lead, a quarter mile to go. BG Warrior has the lead, leads it by three to Port Townsend. Here's Elm Drive. Elm Drive comes on from the outside, coming after BG warrior port townsend is there roses for deborah tries to get going center of the course still fourth now she's third roses for deborah love reigns roses for deborah love reigns coming after elm drive roses for deborah i ran ortiz jr to win the giants causeway love reigns was up for second elm drive third and secret and money was fourth just in time yeah great great call chris uh yeah well, i mean the horse was the favorite, but that she is a beast. She is really something special in these turf races. She has the ability to, you know, get position in every race, and she always finishes. Um, you know, she just she's a nice horse. Yeah, just a it's great. It's so race. hard to go gate to wire at five and a half, too, for some reason. But yes, that's yeah, my... you know, Go ahead. I was just saying, turf races, you know, the, the five furlong turf sprints are completely different than five and a half. And you yeah. have to handicap them completely differently. Five furlongs, you know, speed is, horses can pretty much run flat out for five furlongs. But that last half furlong is makes a, a big, big difference. And, you know, this BG Warrior, she's a really fast filly, but that's a hard way to win a race. That last 16 just gets them, typically. All right, Aldi. Let's uh, let's look at the uh, the next at Keeneland here, uh, race eight. Um, I think we're on the dirt here, correct? Correct. So let's just. We're, and we have another one of those uh, horses to watch here, the two horse transact. But there does look like, you know, Chris, from looking at and using our pace metric we can see there's four horses within 10 points of each other on the pace metric, which usually means there's four pretty quick horses here. Oli, you want to show the uh, the race sim for this one? Sure. Give me one second to switch that over here. So the next uh, update that's coming to uh, Equinedge is Scotty has developed what he's calling see the race before it happens, which is a race simulator that incorporates all the pace metrics and then will take you through the full race. So Oli is going to bring that up. We don't have it currently in uh, what we're showing on the air. Scotty, of course, has the staging uh, and can show that happen. But we do have a video of it that uh, Oli will get up here in a moment. I'm ready. Yeah, I agree that there. I thought this race was full of full of speed and the Keeneland track going around two turns, even back when people said it was speed favoring, the route races were playing fair, uh, if anything, I thought. And I think today, in fact, I don't know if there's been a route race that's been won wire to wire in an entire meet. And today, I think, if anything, the track is, you know, maybe playing even more towards horses coming off the pace. So that's what I'd be looking for in here. I'll be interested to see what the simulator says. Well, All right, here we go. All right. Uh, So it's going to give us four calls here um, and then get us into the stretch. As we can see, there, the, the speed there is all up there. The five is coming. And then you can see the tractor beam sucking a few back. And then the seven kind of exploding there on the end. You know, there's an old saying as well that that speed kills speed, and um, and that two horse could be very live in that in the race as well. I mean, if that horse gets a clear lead, then a lot of those other pace horses will stop, and then maybe you'll get a horse like the five horse will pick up some pieces. If they go too fast up front, then maybe the five picks them up, and um, or maybe the two goes gate to wire. But that's what I saw out of that seven so right there. 
tell us tell us how much development went into this and and you know the difference between the stretch and the finish and, and whatnot things we've been looking at for like the last month so the the story goes when this this 18 year old whiz kid came up to me about 18 years ago his name is joe and uh comes up and i had a i, I always had a racing form in my hand so i've got the racing form in my hand and Joe comes up. I, I forget how I met Joe, but he comes up and sits in my office. And he was uh, a bit cocky. And he says, hey, he goes, uh, what can I do for you? Is there any work I can do for you? And I'm like, well, what do you do? He goes, I'm a, I'm a programmer. And I'm like, OK. He goes, I go, you see this? And I had the form in my hand. And I threw it on the desk. And I'm like, make this faster. <laughs> and this was 18 years ago. and. So he comes back a week. So I hired him. He comes back. He comes back a week later, and he had a version of a simulated race where he we threw track variant in there, and we we for every point of track variant we we deducted or added a length, if you will. So if you had a forty track variant compared to another horse that had ten, we were messing with that between a half a point for each number and and all that to just to kind of equalize things. I mean that's kind of the way we bit of did it back then but a lot of the uh, the algorithms now the machine learning is well advanced now so but anyways he did that and i start running this race and i'm like wow this is amazing but we really didn't have the technology to really take it very far and uh and i wanted to wait until i had the right team and uh about six months ago we hired um a new developer a front-end developer who's just tremendous hard-working very talented He's, he's done a lot of game stuff, and he, he said, he goes, I can take this on and it, give me a chance to do something with this. So I put my, my uh, data scientist and him together, and they came back, and um, voila, this is what you're looking at. This is, this is like maybe version number 10. There'll probably be another 30 before we release it, but it's, it's coming along nicely, though. All right, let's, uh, Oldie, let's get to eight here. Why don't you flip back to uh, EE and then maybe we can craft a pick four for the folks um, and kind of run through the uh, the rest of this. But do you, uh, Chris, is pace something that is high on your list? I mean, tell us, tell us how, how, how do you handicap these races? What's your, what's your process? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I'm sort of a, a multifaceted, player but definitely pace is a big part of it um you want to know i mean basically you want to know how fast can the horse has the course run before so you need a you know good good information about that and then you have to decide based on you know the development of the horse do you project and its form cycle do you project it to run you know a good race is it potentially going to run a bad race is it potentially going to run a better race than it's ever run before so that's the other question I'm trying to answer. And then, you know, part of that is based on, you know, the race itself and how it's going to set up in terms of, um, you know, pace and post position and, and surface and distance and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I look at all that and try to factor it in. Um, but pace is a big part of it, especially when you think you're going to have somewhat of an extreme pace like you might have in here where, most of the horses want to be right up near the lead. Um, you can't always count on the jockeys doing that, especially in a two-turn race, but it does seem like there will be more than an honest pace in here so that if you like a horse that can come from out of it a bit, you know, it should get the setup it needs. Whereas if this were – so, you know, for me, the five horse, I think Scotty mentioned that one, you know, that horse looks like – you know, could be a value play in here because it's sort of rounding into the form into form it's third race off the layoff and it had some pretty good races last year as a three-year-old so it has some ability and it, it might be ready to run better now that it's four and it may get the kind of pace setup it needs so um you know that's the kind of horse i'm usually looking for um you know it's going to run well that should get the kind of uh trip that you it needs to do its best and that is at a you know a decent price so um you know a lot on the odds board right now that horse is only like four to one but on the double will pays i think it will be a bit higher 
Um, you know, and the other horse is the, you know, the favorite classic catch who, who will, will, will benefit from a, 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 a fast pace. But that horse, I think, is a little better going longer. And this is probably more of a prep. But, you know, you mentioned the video workouts. Well, this is one that I looked at because it's coming off the layoff. And um, it's been training. Its training partner uh, has been regularly Trap It Trice, who's one of the names that's probably familiar to the listeners that followed the Triple Crown last year. Pretty highly regarded horse for Todd Pletcher. And this horse has been consistently um, outworking that horse, you know, really outworking that horse. So I think it's coming up to the race pretty well. Maybe the shorter distance won't be as big a factor since it's coming in fresh. So, you know, those two horses coming from out of the pace are probably what I would lean on in this pick four. But if there's one of the speed horses you think scares you, I think you were mentioning the two. The simulator kind of had the two on top. You know, I kind of like the one giant game a little better, but either one of those, you know, might be ones you would, would include. But my my lean would be towards the five and the seven in this leg. I'm with you, Chris, on on pace because I, I've always thought. Hi, Catherine. Um, I've always thought that you know we've we've always been taught that pace makes the race. One of the things that we're building on the simulator right now is the miles per hour. So at each call, we're going to show you how fast each horse is going now. The fastest horse on record is 44 miles per hour. So what we can you can start doing, we're going to add and go, okay, at this level, the average miles per hour is this. This is what the theoretical miles per hour is going to be at the first call, and each call for that matter. And, and then you can look to go, well, you know what? They're looking to go 42 miles an hour here. There's three really fast horses. I'm going to lean towards horses coming from behind. So that's another thing that we're adding to the simulator. And you know, and, and you probably know this, Chris, but sometimes it's when you see things, it's deceiving when you see closers. It looks like they're closing, but the truth is the horses in front are slowing down even more. And so it's uh, and that's why then you go, oh, man, this horse really closed. And the next time the horse doesn't run at all. It pace makes the race. I truly believe that. Yeah, and you're right on dirt races. They're all slowing down late unless it's a really yeah. crazy early, slow, early pace. But in fact, I remember I, I someone said you know, how fast um, uh, Sierra Leone was was closing in the bluegrass. And I said, the horse was not, not you know, how fast it was accelerating down the stretch. And I said, that horse was not accelerating down the stretch. It was just decelerating at less of a rate than everybody else who was totally gassed. That's right. Um, That's right. Now, turf yeah, races, you do get rate times where they're they're actually accelerating in that last Quarter, Chris, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say goodbye, guys. Chris, it was such a pleasure to meet you, and thanks for coming on. I've got I'm in the tournament right now, the the gamble, and I I need to I need to put some plays in. Good luck, and thanks Thank for inviting so me. On. All right, guys. Thanks, All right, Aldi. Uh, let's uh, why don't you generate a pick four and uh, let's go through this. Let's let's lean on the the, the two, five, and seven there in leg one. All right, hold on one sec here. So I'm just going to – I typically put in a pick four budget like that. All right, so we said 257? Yeah. All right. I, I just want to say one thing here from a handicapping standpoint. McPeak has both the three and the five. I think this three is here to rabbit for the five. You think the three is here what? The rabbit for the five in this case. Yeah, well, you would think even if he's not a rabbit – they're not going to hold him back, right? He's going to go to the lead, and he might be good enough to win, right? But he's not going to be – you don't have to worry about him getting held up by the rider, right? Well, and, you know, that that's what happened last week. You were talking about uh, about Sierra Leone, but Brown put a rabbit in the race. That horse yeah. had no plans of going more than five or six furlongs, but it was to inject an insane pace so the horse could just run by – everybody and everybody's freaking out like you know this is the greatest closer they've ever seen no he had an insane pace to run into and everybody else was dead dog tired yeah we. i mean that's I, what i, I saw for a second but and i was just giving you my my rabbit um spiel if you will for um for last week's race where sierra leone had Chad Brown in there with 
a rabbit at the front that was really only there to run six, seven furlongs. Yeah, he definitely did his job and definitely got a good setup. And the horse is a good horse, but yeah. I think visually it was a little bit deceptive in that he did not really finish that race off very fast. Um, and he did have a perfect setup. So, you know, for me, that's the kind of horse you're usually trying to play against the next time they run. Um, and so that's probably the way I'll be playing the Kentucky Derby. So there's an early preview. <laughs> there you I go. know Chris and I have already had this conversation. I've been shouted down on uh, on Twitter already about it because I spoke out and said, you know, look at the, the fractions. Look how dead tired everybody else was. You can take the that horse as your favorite in the Derby. I'll be elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, and, and the one thing about Sierra Leone in terms of the action, I mean, Bruno talked about this the other night in terms of the way the horse's legs work and the action. Um, I don't know, uh, Chris, I, w I, I spent 30 years in Southern California attending races, uh, watched a lot of Zenyatta up there, and um, the the vanity, the second vanity she ran, she ran against a horse named St. Trinian's that had that same action, the way that leg comes out on the side, and I just don't think that that is going to help the horse in the stretch to be speedy enough. So, um, Aldi, why don't you regenerate here and see what the uh, the ticket generator says for it? So it does it does not single in leg two when you go a little bit narrow, and it adds the six Gina Romanica here. Where were you at in uh, race eight, Chris? Or sorry, race nine. Uh, um yeah, I really like the seven horse surge capacity in that race from the value standpoint. Uh, but, you know, Appleby and Buick, you almost have to include. I think the morning line's off. I think that horse will be the favorite. And, you know, and Gino Romanic is genuine. So, to me, those three, I am i don't like Didia that much. Uh, it looks like the algorithm's picking the nine in that second leg. i That's one I would fade. Um, but the six horse is legit but i think um you know if i had to rate them i would go with seven five six in that race yeah and if you look at the if you look at the seven there uh it has a five to one morning line the ee morning line is two to one on that horse so it does tell you that you're getting some value proposition there for sure uh oldie where were you here with this i i know that the system likes the nine uh didia is a favorite pick uh of a lot of folks but in terms of the i've made union, a lot of money with the nine since uh churchill last since derby day churchill last year um i think that the nine's training very well there's really only two horses i like in this race and it's the nine and um uh, and the five the appleby buick horse and i talk about appleby as in, there's two things to know about Appleby. Is Buick riding or is Buick not riding? So if Buick's not riding, you toss it. If Buick is riding, you have to pay attention to it. And the fact that this is his only mount today and it's and he stayed in the country for this, only this race, you know, the, those are the two things that make me think that this horse is extremely live. Wet turf doesn't hurt either. Um, I did not like either of the Chad Brown horses. I think that even though the morning line doesn't have them as the favorite, I think they're going to take a lot of money. Here and when and Chad seven. has four in, he sends one. Yeah. You kind of talked about that with Sierra Leone uh, race. Yes. I think he's going to send the outside horse um, uh, that – Bo Ch Chache or something. I don't know how you say that, but um, uh, so I, I think the pace will be a little more honest than yeah. you might think on paper because he he'll, he always sends one when he has this many, and that's probably the only reason this horse is in the race, See, you know, the, the 10 horse. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. they win when he does yeah. that. Um, <laughs> but well, that, yeah. that happened in the United Nations a couple of years ago where the, the horse oh, just ran at the same pace and and hung on. I'm trying to blank on the horse's name, but um, yeah. And so, 100% agree. I was just as natural. I, I toss fluffy socks because fluffy socks always takes money and doesn't win very often. 
Only uh, we just want to pull up the sim. You want to pull up the sim real quick? We're going to be running into post sim time. loves the Chad Brown horses. I, I can tell you that already. Okay. Having watched it a couple times. All right. So, uh, Chris, what were the two that you were here? You were. You uh, were I like the seven. I would rate it seven as the value, and then five and six in that order would be the other two contenders. And I, I would fade Didia. I, I think she's a nice, consistent horse, but she's a cut below the top. And usually when she's run against them, she hasn't run as well. So, you know, I'm, I'm, that's the one I would fade of the favorites. Fluffy Sox, you know, I think she's a nice horse, but kind of like Didi. I don't think she's quite this good. And, and she typically comes up short. But watch mm-hmm. Surge. I like to see the simulator on Surge Capacity because she has a, just a monster burst of speed. So I'm, I'm just curious if the simulator shows that or not because she runs that's why i like her so much is she's got that when she sees daylight man she just takes off in the stretch so we'll you pull it up or... yeah. i'm sorry i didn't share that you need yeah. to add it there you go and they're off Now here, where I think the the simulator might get fooled is I think that ten horse will get sent, but we'll see. He'll, some one of the Chad horses will get sent for sure to the lead. The five is not. Yeah, the, and Scotty said that's because it's a a foreign horse and the data just isn't there. So the seven. Yeah, and I've six watched and... that horse's races and they're very good. The uh, that that horse can run, and she's not a drop back type. She's a stock and pounce, so she won't be too far out. And you mentioned William Buick; the guy's just incredibly good turf rider. He and Ryan Moore—they're just they school the riders every time. Um, so you know that's always a plus, like you said, when he's riding. All right, Aldi. Uh, once this finishes, why don't you just go seven five six there and hit regenerate? Let's see what we get. All right, I got to switch this up here again. I apologize to everybody, but it's the only way to make this work so that we can show that large enough for you guys to see it. All right, so if I regenerate here, I will tell you the system, that that's the first time I've seen the system move off the one and the two. Where, in that race? In race time, it loved. I've done like six different tickets, and it loves the one and the two. So what it's telling us in race ten, Chris, is it, it's it's adding more horses there at the. It budget, thinks it's right? more wide open. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and it probably is. I really like the one as the value in there. Um, the yeah. horse has a lot of upside. Um, you know, it's a bit of a stretch, but uh, I I do like that one, and I like the nine quite a bit. Um, Liberal Arts just had two miserable trips as a three-year-old. And, you know, it's a talented horse. So I was looking at, and then the two, you know, you got to, if it fires off the bench. Um, so to me, I kind of rated them in here 9, nine one two or nine two one is probably how I had it. I was going to fade the um, five horse. And it looks like uh, the program is doing it as well, the, the yeah. Hades. Um but that that's kind of how I saw it nine nine one two probably or nine two one. All right. Did you have a budget you wanted to play on this so I can, or just tell us what you like in the I guess in the last and then we can watch. Well, the last watch I the really like the, um, the four uh, the the nine six five is how I and six is the big value play. The horse is twenty one in the morning line. I like it quite a bit. Gorilla Trek. Um, if you listen to my Sport of Kings podcast, I was um, all over that one. So nine six five is kind of how I liked it um, in that last leg. All, all right, so well, that now. is that is a value ticket for sure at forty dollars and fifty cents. And uh, certainly, if you can connect the right dots there and, and get one or two of those value ones, it will really pay, right? And yeah, and I usually play yeah. multiple tickets, so. Um, I probably wouldn't even play this ticket you have up there. I would probably 
play right. several of them where I wouldn't be having all the favorites on the ticket. You know, like I said, I don't usually like to cash for, you know, a hundred bucks or something. So I would split it up, make sure that I don't, I don't, you know, because there's some of those that are favorites. Some of the races we have the favorite off, but um, so that's how I, I would usually split it up a little bit. Like, um, you know, we, we don't go in too much detail, but um, you know, I, I'll usually break it up so that I, I know that if I hit it, I'm going to get some value and it, and it cuts the cost down too. Will you play some of these like not at base too? Where you're not going to play it at 50 cents, you're going to play it at two bucks, four bucks. Oh yeah, bucks. I'll wait them for sure. And like what I usually do is I put my my top play in every race, and I'll play that for you know three or four dollars. Um, and if I I don't usually hit that because it's hard to hit a cold you know five you know straight races, but then I build on that right, and that's where I throw some backup tickets in. And I'll wait that less. And then so I, I kind of have a pyramid structure where, you know, if if my main opinions and I'm using my main opinions aren't favorites um, come in and I get a couple of those, I can have it for, you know, four or five dollars. Um, but if I don't, I might only have it for 50 cents or a buck. But I, you have to use multiple tickets to do that efficiently. You can't you know, this is a nice, simple way to do it. Um, but there's still a chance it could chalk out and we hit it with a pretty chalky play and we don't make that much. We, we won't be underwater with a $40 ticket, but, you know, I, I just try to avoid that. That's why a little extra work and a few extra tickets can really increase your long term term ROI. Um, yeah, I play a lot of uh, turf pick threes, um, Keeneland, Gulfstream when they're good, Santa Anita if it's really good, uh, and Brad Anderson and Matt Miller. Uh, are the same way with the pyramid structure. Uh, and that's who got me to you because Brad was like, hey, go check this guy out um, and, and whatnot. So good stuff there. Uh, let, Oldie, before we we wrap up with Chris, let's take uh, a look at the six horse in race 11 on the simulator. All right, hold on. And then yeah, I'll that try. horse is 20 to one on the morning line and um, really has buried form i think this is the yeah. thing with an unreleased product you end up we have to do these in videos and so i'm hopping around between a media player and the system here chris can you add me in here you mentioned yeah. that the, the turf pick three. I think this late this turf pick three at Keeneland was a really good one. I, I put a pretty good play into that. Um, you know, it started with that race we just watched, and then there's the the race we talked about with you know surge capacity. How do you eliminate the six? This one. From the Oh. We're not gonna see it. Yeah, this is a video. Unfortunately, we're not gonna get the six in here. But we will have this uh, on staging hopefully next week where we can show this. But no six in here because uh, this is just a video. And literally, Scotty was taking 11 videos for me uh, this morning of the entire card so we could run this on here. So, um, you know, quick question. Still in development. No surprise yeah. that he'd want to protect yeah. that. Chris, if you can hang it with us for a few minutes where we'll show this Keeneland race, but a question from the chat. Could Chris give us an example of how he would break out a pick four ticket? Yeah, sure. What I what I I usually try to do is like let's just pick the races we just talked about. You know, the the value horses I like in each race, um, I'll usually play the top line with those value picks. So those are horses that are unless I'm singling, you know, if I'm playing a favorite, usually I'm singling it or I'm using it on a backup ticket. So using my top line horses are horses, I think, add value. So it'd be like in the first leg, surge capacity would be uh, the top line for me. And the next race, it would probably be liberal arts would be on the top line. And um, Gorilla Trek uh, would be on the top line. So those three and in this race, it would be Hayes Strike. So I'd have all four of those on my top line. And I'd, I'd put a bet in for that, you know, just those four as the starting point. 
I mean, it's only, you know, it's one combination. So it does, you can bet wherever, whatever you want to play on that. Um, that's kind of your what Mike Maloney call your kill shot. And then I'll put underneath them um, the horses that I think I'm worried about beating me. So like uh, for Hey Strike, it's Classic Catch and maybe Giant Game or Transact. So that would be on the second line. And then in surge capacity, it would be English Rose and probably Gina Romanica. So I'd have one or two horses on that next line. And then I'm playing combinations with those horses we're like, um, it's kind of like the 1A, 2B, but my A's are the value horses. They're not the favorites. So I might play one where as long as two of my top line, two or three of my top line horses come in and, and, I, and I have my a second line horses beat, or the only, beat them, then I'll, I'll cash. So I might play four or five tickets with, you know, um, four of my top line horses coming in. Three of my top line horses coming in, two of my top line horses coming in with my backup horses underneath. So I might end up with 10 or 12 tickets and I'll wait those a court, you know, I'll, they won't, I won't be playing them all for the same amount. And that kind of, that's depends on how much I like a horse um, and how much I think it's going to pay. But by doing that, uh, your backups, you know, limiting it to two or three backups and, and keeping your favorites down on the backup line, unless it's a horse you're singling it guarantees you that if you cash it, you know, you're beating at least two or three favorites and it's going to pay. Um, and you, by playing multiple tickets, you can, you can get a lot of horses in without a really expensive ticket. I mean, like the top line is one, one combination. And then to say you add a, a race in with a backup that has two or three horses, then it's just three times your minimum bet. And even if you have two races like that with two horses in one race and two horses in another race, it's still just four times your minimum bet. So, you know, for five, four, two, four, six, eight dollars, you can add in a second ticket and a third ticket. Um, and so you end up with maybe spending your fifty dollars, but you got a lot more coverage than if you just played a caveman ticket. But the key Absolutely. is, is it fair know, to say both- that is it fair to say that you 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 don't in a pick five or a pick four? That you're not a big guy of i'm going to single the four to five shot and build around it um if i think the four to five shot really is unbeatable i don't mind doing that as long as i find value in the other legs you know so i'm not against it but I, the only way i'll do that is if i single it right i'm not gonna yeah. spread out all right they're, they're off and, and we'll see if they go fast and they McPeak absolutely the set that three as they head to the first turn the lead battle continues transect from the inside moves up and puts a head in front as they swing around the turn frosted departure is right alongside and now he regains the advantage frosted departure moves up a lane off the rail leads it by almost a full length brigadier general is going to move right behind him moves up into the second position on the outside as transect is now shuffled back into third flanked by giant game and fourth then a gap of just over three more Links back to classic catch who is next to last and Hayes strike. Well, no surprise in the way it's set up. 23.43 anyway. yeah. seconds up the back stretch they go. Frosted departure is the leader. Frosted departure against the rail leads it by three quarters of a length. Brigadier General is second on the outside, a length transect against the rail. Third and half length, the giant the game fourth on the outside. Gap of three more lengths. Hay strike next to last, tucked just to the inside of classic catch through an opening half mile of 47.51 seconds. On to the far turn, Frosted Departure leads. The advantage still is three quarters of a length. And Brigadier General's right there off his flank. He's been there most of the way. Then a gap of two more lengths to Giant Game and third. They're a quarter mile out, coming to the top of the short stretch. Transact, then Classic Catch, who's wide, and Hay Strike is last. Here comes Brigadier General again, coming after Frosted Departure as they move into the stretch. And Brigadier General has a narrow lead. Frosted Departure is still there, though, toward the inside. Classic Catch out in the center of the track, and Hay Strike toward the rail. Frosted Departure is fighting back to the inside of Brigadier general frosted departure comes back and wins it and holds off a closing oh. hay strike oh. by a neck my the value horse just <laughs> missed it by a nose yeah uh, uh so that's that was, that's that was the, the, my yeah yeah the two five and seven just missed it but you're right there in the way to play these i mean you you you, you can play them to cash you can play them to to super cash, so to, so to speak, and we're always going to have losers through these things. So, you know, kind of fighting through that is the uh, the overall goal. 
Yeah, what that a was a wild tough one finish there. in the, the end. It looked like three frosted departure was going to finish. I'm pretty sure yeah. it was the the three. Yeah, the, the, the five didn't quite get there. He needed one more jump. Yep. yep. But look yeah, at the five and seven there. Yeah. Yeah, still like like Railbird said. Still good stuff, right? Because uh, yeah. those are things that over time are going to get you uh, cashing tickets and making nice scores and whatnot. Um, Chris, super happy to have you on. Um, very, very nice to spend an hour with you. Uh, we'll, we'll look forward to looking for you uh, as we get towards the summer racing and whatnot. But uh, everybody should go look up Bet With The Bet podcast. Chris Laramie, L-A-R-M-E-Y. Go find his uh, his pick five sheet and uh, and start working to be more efficient in your wagers and uh, cashing bigger tickets. Thanks. Yeah, and bet just a plug yes. on bet with the best. I have a, um, a deep dive on the Kentucky Derby with Mike Maloney right now. I have a part one out, which is all about handicapping the Derby. Now it's a little bit different than any other race. And then the second part will come out next week about how to bet the Kentucky Derby, which is probably even more valuable. And there's a lot of, you know, it, uh, things that apply to any kind of race, but we really focused on the Derby because everybody's excited about that. And it's an opportunity that you only have once a year. And, and, and if you cash in, you can really cash in big. Yeah, uh, we, we do a big Derby show, so I'll, I'll be in touch. Maybe we'll have you on for a, for a smaller segment there and, uh, and see what we can do. But Thanks a bunch, buddy, for coming on. We appreciate it. Always good value information. Anything that can help uh, people that are that, that love this game. Uh, I, like I said, I spent a long time in Southern California. I used to listen to Roger Stein on the radio. And uh, his big push with this is these are all equine puzzles and not necessarily how to put them, in, put them together, but how to bet them correctly. And it's all about the betting. Yeah, well, you know, it's both. If you have bad opinion, you're not going to be able to make money on, but you can't, you can't, you have, need them both. And you can't just be a good handicapper. Um, I've heard that lament a lot. I'm a good handicapper. I'm a lousy better. Well, you know, there's no reason why if you're a good handicapper, you can't be a good better. Um, you can do them both. Yep. All right, man. Have a good rest of the day. May all your photo finishes be winning ones. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. All right, Oldie, a lot to digest there, right? Absolutely. Okay. Back to our regularly scheduled program. I know we didn't, uh, we didn't talk the about this. Red Colors of St. George Stable. Uh, we're going to go Gulfstream, Oldie, and then I'll leave it to you. I will be... Last one up, CJ Thoroughbred's Song of Norway. Best guess so far. Way to go, man. Norway. And the eighth. There, Remigate. And they're off. They're off. They're off. a break. Bubbly champagne. Bean Pot was away quickly in the middle. Opponent's Hope is poorly positioned. Rip Around is on the go. On the far outside, it's Song of Norway. Taprixi is between horses, and Bean Pot is down at the inside. Artemis Sound toward the back of the field with Ice Coffee just ahead of her. Then back to Bubbly Champagne, and Waterworld is last. They leave the backstretch and move on to the far turn. Opponent's Hope has it by half a length. Rip Around is second. Wide on the course, Song of Norway third. Far, Romeo yeah, and me. Bean Pot well spotted to the leaders while needing some place to go. Tap Rixi is next. Kamichi moving very well under Lenderos. Needs to find some place to go. Chris working to the outside. Off the turn on the stretch drive, Kamichi let go for a run to try to go get Opponent's Hope. From the back, Artemis Sound in between horses, Bean Pot. They come past the eighth pole. Opponent's Hope leads by three. Up into second, Kamichi, but time is running out. Opponent's Hope almost home. Kamichi second, but time has run out. Opponent's Hope wins. Kamichi was second, closer third. Song of Norway, then Artemis Sound and Bubbly Champagne charging in 55-1. and one. That was the race I was talking about that really couldn't figure out who was going to rate there, but the, everybody seemed to want the lead. All right. So we got Laurel and Aqueduct coming up. 
back here. Get my mouse over to where it belongs and we'll, if it allows me to, hold on. There we go. I'm going to reshare this so that you guys can see my screen. This is what we were alive to at Aqueduct. We're to race eight here. No big prices, I believe, here. They're not going to pay huge, but we've beaten a couple favorites. And we have hopefully an opportunity to beat this four to five shot with the four here. Um, also at Aqueduct, not at Aqueduct, at Laurel. I'm very interested in the seven horse getting bat. Um, I thought it was a live long shot, the long shot here. Eight, the bear colt. It has beaten 64s before, um, which was also a non graded stakes race, going nine furlongs. Um, there's really no other pace here, so possible, but bet down to five to one on a 20 to one morning line. So a little disappointed there. A little? A little. I was hoping for 13, 14 to one. Sure. Like the 17 to one shot you had earlier? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And... You know, I don't know that this three needs to win this. We'll see. Uh, obviously, one, two in a row. Uh, you know, pretty impressively in the last one. So we'll see. But going stretching out to nine furlongs and, you know, maybe more pace than it wants to deal with in, in here from the seven without anybody to tire the seven out. Sure. And then, Chris, I also pointed out we're live to what should have been the single, but uh, I decided to take a shot with the four horse against the 74% horse as well, the E second choice there and see if we could make some money. Um, probably means the seven will win that race, but uh, at Aqueduct as well. And I think that is showing zero minutes to post if you want to pull either one of those races up. Now, actually, it looks like Laurel's going to go first. I've got Aqueduct up, and I've got Laurel ready for you here. So let me get over to Laurel. Um, and then, Oli, let's do a late pick three at uh, – um, let's do a late pick three at Keeneland based upon our pick four. And let's kind of do that multiple ticket-wise. We'll take a stab at that because we have some favorites in there. We have some shots and we'll kind of look at that. Thanks, Jay. Got this uh, a few years ago when I was over there at that place, couple of badges there. Uh, those are hard to come by. All right, uh, Oldie, let's get to Laurel. Laurel. Laurel and Hardy Handshake. And I am going to take a quick break. I will be right back for hopefully the start of this race. I will do it after this race. <laughs> yeah, Tony, we're not going to get out to Oakland. Uh, unfortunately, they don't let us show their races. So we're going to stick with the ones that do and go here. So what do you want here, Oldie? Who do you want? Moving Seven. in line now for the native dancer, Magic Seven. Michael. There's Man a friend's scholars. episode about that. Shaft's bullet. Into the gate at six to five. Even got the uh, the Eight Chicago teams. accent in its name. It's Ain't Da Bear Cold. Be better. 
Thanks, folks, for joining us again. Hit that like button if you like what you're seeing. Sizzling if you really like it, log out and then put your spouse's name or your kid's name in there and like it again. Subscribe every time we have a show scheduled, you will get a pop-up. Good stuff. I haven't taken a look, Oldie, after this, after the Aqueduct race, we'll get to the... Um, Aim to be your cold. Um, Golden Gate. Uh, not the Golden Gate, but we'll Lydia. get to off. grade one jam. Break for to beer. Cold Van Scholars right there, too. It's sizzling uh, time away, running in third position. Shaft's bullet allowed to settle about six to seven off the base. Uh, Magic uh, Michael uh, from the rail draw. And B Better's in the back there with Hey Chief. B Better now last on the outside, the two path into the first turn. Toledo has ain't to beer cold up top. Building on that lead now, four links in front, midway around that first turn. On Van Scholars is second, another four lengths back. And it's sizzling time is in third position. Magic Michael on hold out of the rail. And that looked a lot faster than 25. Now some 10 lengths off of Ain't to Beer Cold. In the back, Hey Chief and Be Better. With six furlongs left to go. Opening quarter, very slow. Or ain't to Beer Cold. No. A solid lead by five. A Van little smirk on his face. Sizzling time. Then in between Lighting. horses, Shaft's I, I don't believe that. that. Second flight of Based Shaft's on what I saw. Team to go. Within three and a half of the lead, Magic Pen the way. Be better in Hey Chief. They're swarming the horse, the too. I don't believe this. Just a second. Heading into the far turn run. <laughs> ain't to Beer Cold leads it. Ain't to Beer Cold nursed along up front. Leads about a length and three quarters. Shaft's bullet has moved to second. Van Scholars is right there. Van Scholars now moves up. Van Scholars outside second and chasing Ain't to Beer Cold. Three furlongs out from the line. Ain't to Beer Cold running a big one today. Ain't to Beer Cold has it from Shaft's bullet. Van Scholars on the outside. It's sizzling time is fourth and Magic Michael is fifth. Be better has to pick up from the back of the pack as one beaten. That's Hey Chief, top of the stretch. Ain't to Beer Cold. Ain't to Beer Cold turns in from Van Scholars on the outside. Shaft's bullet in between uh -oh. horses is in third as they come uh -oh. to the last furlong. Ain't to Beer Cold uh -oh. holding on to a narrow lead. Uh -oh. Van Scholars attacks on the outside. Outside. Ain't to beer cold. Broke sharp. Still on top. Ain't to beer cold. Looking Come on, to the seven. Way. Outside go. magic. Come on, seven. Let's, go. Let's, go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Beer cold. Ain't to beer cold. Surging. Man, scholars. Last. And then it was be better. I think we got beat on the last jump. Ah, oh, camera guy likes you. I like that. And it went up to. And at 52.70. Wait for the numbers in the native dancer. Come on, get this seven home, Aldi. Maybe the four will get DQ'd anyways. <laughs> Stuart. It was actually the one in the Yeah, we lost. Ooh. I don't know, man. That is super I think I got cool. it. I have like the hair on the nostril. The hair on your chinny chin chin. Hold on tickets. Seven first. I gave Eight. that one out. To win at, 12 to 1. at like 10 a.m. this morning. Second two. Van Scholars in the WhatsApp five. chat. Be better fourth. Join the WhatsApp chat, people. The seven Toledo aboard Toledo triple. And if I show you my my E, it's a seven live long shot. Mm -hmm. I, I reminded myself of that. Boom. Boom, boom. Boom. Way to go, Oldie. Two big prices today. Well, not big, but two really good prices today. Uh at, at Laurel. And Laurel uh and your hearty is handshake is Certainly. Every so time good. I say that, I get a price, right? Yeah, you do. All right, let's get out to Aqueduct. Time there. here for today's eighth race. Field loading quickly. There's Airport moving forward. Mr. Phil. Breaking. Speed. I'm just gonna say this because you guys have been on here all day. Sometimes you're right. Sometimes you're wrong. Motion to strike. Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Joker boy. Yes, Almond Joy has not smiled stone. Joker boy. I'm not a fan of either one of those candy bars. Me either. My daughter loves mounds. 
which I refer to as the most disgusting candy bar on the planet. <laughs> well, make sure on your way to dinner tonight, you pick up a, 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 a almond joint and give that to her. In between race horses, there comes airport and at the rail. That's motion to strike. That's the leading five. Pink cap moving forward. That's Joker boy from the back four. Plenty is looking for a seam and the trailer. FF Rocket actually far, far back there after that hop in the air at the start. That's anything possible at the back end of the field. 22 and three. Official that quarter mile. It was 71, two, five, three. Eight to be a couple from Matt Spencer, Kelly Joe Cox, and Bonacelli Racing, Kenny Cox trainer. Jerry on Toledo. I don't know. Does airport have some room? Ellie Sail Ruiz is in fourth in hand. Nowhere to go right now at the rail motion to strike. They reach the top of the stretch and Colonel Vargo has kicked. It's Colonel Vargo who's got the lead. Trying to run with this rival is Mr. Phil. Muscling on in between horses. Airport. Does airport have enough? Does get the scene, but Colonel Vargo is still clear. Less than a furlong left to go. Colonel Looks Vargo like trying to Colonel. hold off the charge from an oncoming airport. Yeah. Airport running out of time. Colonel Vargo almost there. Colonel Vargo, Isaac Castillo. They get the win as the favorite. Airport second. <laughs> yes, I know we're we're moving on, but that's not how you want to move on. For you want to make money? No. All right, Oli. Let's see. All right, so I had twenty-five to win on the seven, so that paid three thirty-five. I actually looked, and I liked too many horses in the last. So the double actually wouldn't have paid as well as the win bet. So I just played the win bet. And then I also am alive in the late pick four to the uh, three, five, six, seven, eight in the last at Laurel. Okay. Well, we got Aqueduct up here. Um, you want to get that late pick three going at Keeneland? Sure. All right. So um, let's look at this because I think we have two favorites, uh, one in leg one and one in leg two. Uh, and then we have prices in the last. I think, you know, so let's look here first and see where the money's going. Okay. And the money appears to be going on the – Appleby. So you're getting prices on the two brown horses in Didia. Mm -hmm. So when, when I was going to look at this, you'll see here, that's what I added the five and I pulled the other three from the race. So there. So if I'm looking at this and you can structure yours, however, in your, in the way you want to, but I'd be, so this pulled up Chris's picks here. Yep. But, you know, I dumped the five. Because, yeah, and he talked yeah. about that too, right? He would play multiple tickets here. So if he's got the favorite in legs uh, one and two, he'll play those as singles and then play the five, six, nine of the last and play those at three or four bucks. And it's not going to cost you that much. So like you talked about, you know, if you're going to do – 40 to 80 bucks, somewhere in there, you can do multiple different tickets at, at various price levels. But show us what you got here, Oldie. I'm not going to force right, well, you. We have not watched the race sim yet for okay. the Lexington. So let's show the Lexington race sim. It'll just take me a second to pull up here. That's the only one we haven't watched yet. I pulled it up there. Now I got to get my cursor going here. All right. So at the Lexington, they're off. Every time you say that, you freak me out. Let me go check the video. Okay. 
We'll pander for some more likes. And some more, tell your friends to show up, watch the show. So the, the system likes the nine and the 10, if you mm -hmm. wanted to go narrow here. Yeah. yeah, I know a lot of people like the wine steward here, um, uh, for sure. Liberal arts is interesting to me uh, coming in here. The, the eight is also somewhat interesting as well. Uh, Maybe able to get some kind of a price. But Rico's right. There's not a lot uh, um, happening late, right? Yeah. You could, if you can go back to the. Um, there the is. So I mean, the nine is coming late. The mm -hmm. nine's the one coming late. Yeah. And the eight, nine, eight, four. If you're looking for three horses that are coming late. Yeah, and that four horse is no joke. There, uh, ten to one morning line for sure. Bob wants to know where you're going to dinner tonight, Oldie. We are going to RPM Italian. Nice. Send me some lasagna. It sounds great. It is Bill Rancic's restaurant. From the uh, we, the wife and I have been there. The daughter wanted that. That's where she picked out because she liked the menu. So. Um, uh, you mentioned the four. I will mention Turfway Shipper. Yep. Um, so that to me, that's a vote of no. Um, right, Rico? Does, Stewart, lasagna looks like, sound, doesn't lasagna sound awesome right now? It does. It does. All right, so what do you want to do here? I know what I would do here. Do what you're going to do. Do what you're going to do. And you know the, the 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 peeps out there, they can they can zig and zag and and whatnot. But what what's your play here? That's what I want to get to. I think you got to go narrow somewhere here. So I don't like the one. I think the two could win. I think the nine's coming too late. You know the system likes it, but I think it's coming too late. And how many late runners have we seen there uh, on the dirt at Turf at uh, Keeneland? Yes, but Not this is at eight and a half, and that's the or the shorter finish line. Yeah. So I'm gonna. I know that you guys don't like Hades. Um, I think something I mentioned to you during before that race went off that I thought they were gonna try to rate this horse there to see if it could rate. And that's it. And I still believe that was the case. Uh, and I'm going to go with that. Okay. I also, you know, so I'll look at the six. I didn't see it. Um, for Bauer here, one first time out, and it hasn't fired since, is what I see. So, and, you know, famous last words here. I like the 11. The system likes the 10. So if we keep his six horse and add in the 9, 10, 11. And if you add the 5 there in the last, how much does it cost you? Well, I would take the 11 off then. No, leave the 11. How much does it cost to add the 5? The race sim didn't like the 11 at all. You're, you're right. It did not. So let's dump the 11. Let's add the 5. You're at 12 bucks. $12 for 50 cents. So, you you know, if you want to play that at, at what, uh, $2, it's going to cost you 48 bucks, And you'll hit it a few times. Yeah. You know, and you can monkey around there too, right? Like, because if you like Hades in race 10, I don't. That's fine. Um, you've had two multiple good winners at uh, Laurel. I'm not going to argue with you. But if you just single the five, you're obviously going to drop it down to six bucks. Um, yeah. And you can play that, that ticket along with this one, even if you're playing at base, because if you get your five, 
you'll still hit it multiple times. Scott has the phone DVD pick the eight horse to win. Which which race, Rico? Because that's one you'd want to fade for sure. I don't see any eights up there on oldies board. But uh, the six definitely in the last. Uh, Chris talked about that one as well. So we've got three races left with you. Looks like Tryon's going off now. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the video for that, so we can't show you. But um, well, between Keeneland and uh, and Aqueduct slash uh, um, Laurel, I don't know what the hell's wrong with my brain. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll show a uh, Moncton race. Yeah, well, we'll get a Moncton race in there and show you what a 24 furlong simulated race uh, looks like. All right, Oldie, let's get out to Keeneland. Uh, I think my food might have just showed up. So let me pull up Keeneland here. They all are and uh, great, especially those grade ones here at Keeneland Race Course. We want to we'll take a quick race and we'll two minute break here and get back. We can do race that. Nine, the grade one, Jenny. Yeah, I'm going. One. I'm going to use the facilities. <laughs> So, I'll be right. Radar O'Reilly with the call of the post. We'll be back here for the race in just a few minutes. I can't believe we're getting that we're getting five to one on Didio. To be honest. Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's ninth race, 36th running of the Jenny Wiley Stakes, grade one. So guys, besides what we played, I also, you know, in the interest of playing different tickets and my belief in Didia, I played a pick three that's single to Didia, then I played one, two, five, nine, ten, and then one, five, six, nine through eleven. Moving into line, race nine.
Star Fortress going in. Elusive Princess. Didia. Embrace Me goes into the gate. Here's English Rose. Still getting five to one on Didia. Six to one. Cache will be the last yep. one. Wow. Goes in. They're at the post. Yeah, John, I agree. Hell. So you missed my. I also played a and pick three off with Didia. Jenny and... Wiley stakes. Not bad. Uh, I like that. Fluffy socks from the inside. Here comes Boot to Cache from the extreme outside. English Rose moving forward down to the inside as they head for the first turn. Diddy is up close, then surge capacity. But it is Boot to Cache who's got the lead. But outward from the rail, heading into the first turn. English Rose forwardly placed along the inside. In second, Diddy goes third up on the outside. Walkathon is fourth back toward the rail. Surge capacity alongside her in fifth gap of two lengths to gina romantica one lane off the rail around the first turn in sixth by just a neck fluffy socks is now settling down to seventh on her inside embrace me a wide eighth as they head up the back stretch and then elusive princess who's in ninth star fortress Fast last of the 10 it was 24.18 seconds the time for the opening quarter Boot to Cache has made the top clear, leads at a length against the rail. Diddy a second by a head, and then English Rose third toward the inside. Surge capacity looks toward the outside and fourth, and then Walkathon is fifth. It was 48.65 seconds for the first half mile. Gina Romantica is in sixth position between horses, has embraced me to her outside. That pair six lengths off the lead. They're midway on the final turn. Boot to Cache leads it by a length. Diddy second on the outside a length. English Rose is third. Surge capacity. Fourth up on the outside at the top of the lane. Boot to Cache still has the lead. Didia English Rose toward the inside. Then surge capacity. Gina Romantica is still six lengths away. They're into the final for long. Boot to Cache leads it. English Rose to the inside. Didia is still there. Boot to Cache in front. English yeah. Rose is still two lengths away. Boot it's to Cache in deep stretch here. Chased by one. English Rose. Boot to Cache. 25 to 1 upset under Frankie DeTore in the great wow. one, Jenny Wiley. You know, they booed Frankie yesterday when he uh, won and didn't jump off the horse through the flip. <laughs> he better do it today. Tony had the town in his pick three. All right. It was the other, 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 other Chad Brown. Brown gets his sixth victory in the grade yep. one, Jenny Wiley, and it is with a 25 to one shot. Boot to Cache taking the field from gate you to wire. Nobody really wanted to press her early, and she reeled off modest early fractions. Yeah, just Nobody out. pressured her. We saw a late bid from the number five horse in the late stages of the race, but she could not quite catch her. Boot to Cache going gate to wire. Trainer Chad Brown, Mattaquette, Lab. All right, Oldie, where do you want to go from here? Well, we got four minutes to Laurel and 13 minutes to Aqueduct. The will pays are much better on my pick four at Laurel than they are on the pick five at Aqueduct. All right. I got Laurel queued up four for you. Best turned out runner, Victor Gonzalez. Frankie did. He went to Hollywood there. Yeah. So what are we are we thinking possibly a pick five carryover here? Where at Keelan? Yeah. Possibly. A lot of people betting on this, so you're gonna get a lot of tickets in there. Yeah, but I mean you got roses for Dabra. So th there's that. Mm -hmm. Then you're 1124. Now you're 52 bucks. I don't if you get that six in the last at 20 to one. Could be. We'll find out. If this out four later. wins at Laurel, it is a pick four and pick five carryover. <laughs> the pick four really carries over? It, it says three, three paying three of four, but it's small enough that I think it carries over. 
I don't I, think he liked that ho that ten horse at all. Did he mention that one? I remember talking about not being able to pronounce the name. He did not. He thought he was going to rabbit it and go to the lead. Yeah, which it did, and put everybody to sleep. Yeah. Tony, I, I'm alive, too. There's not much to brag about for that, though. Huh? I said, I'm alive in the Aqueduct Pick 5, too. It's going to make money if it hits, but not much to brag about. Yeah, John's saying that 10 horse we played, for oh, sure. Oh, I'm sure it was played. It's the whether the combination of what's left. Mm -hmm. If you get the one horse in the next. I have seen Keeneland a couple times pay to one winner or two winners in these pick fives, too. Yep. Scotty sitting in the 30th place right now with a 44.57 balance. He's got two more plays. Uh, the leader is at 23,320, um, and that is through race eight. I would love to get the long shot here. Yeah, I'm sure. I'd love to get the long shot every time. No, uh, the long shot pays... Sixteen hundred and sixty bucks on the pick four. Nick wants to know who you have at Laurel. I have the three, the five, the six, seven, and eight. Everything else is between three and five fifty, basically. Three fifty and five fifty. Rico, rooting you on. Thank you, Rico. Got to throw that football over a mountain. Yeah, and and then hit the like button. I don't even know how many likes we're at, Oli. I haven't checked. Have you? I haven't looked, no. Let me pick up my phone and take a look. Maybe we can get a shot in for the end of the show. We will go through the last at Keeneland. And then Oldie will be going to dinner with his birthday dinner with his daughter. Oh, we got to pick her up at cheerleading and then drive. Give her, she's going to change there and then drive down. So it's going to be fun. Good, 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 good. Been a great day. I appreciate everybody. <laughs> <laughs> You sound like Al Bundy. I was thinking the same thing. But yeah. wasn't that five touchdowns in the, or four touchdowns in the state championship, city championship, something like that? Yeah, at least a good dad. That's for sure. And he's got good kids too. Yeah. One of us and is. I'm lucky that I get to do this stuff in the first place and that my family let me do this crazy show we do. Hey, man. We, uh, we, we, we have a great audience. That, you know, Ashley's going to make fun of me in a minute for uh, pumping the audience here. But where has Ashley been today? Uh, yeah, we have not had the, that crew on. Uh, they've all been kind of absent uh, without leave. But we, 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 we also leverage only Sun to do a some uh, some tech stuff for us as well. So that's all good. Keep it in the family. Son did the open for the NHC live for Scotty. Yeah. So yeah, he needs to work on ours next. Goal time vixen. And all right, who do you want here, Aldi? I want the three. The I'm not going to get the three, but. The three is going to go to the lead or try to. Ready race 11. I mean, the only reason I use the three is because it's a long shot. And they're off Calypso Ghost. Sharp nope. away from there with Fainer's Fillets. I like outside it. It's gray. Going along gray. The third position, the outside Ice Cube Baby. Ice Cube Baby quick Wouldn't to move up the, the third, third position. Coming in from Charleston. Now taking that fourth spot. 
Next is Ladner yeah, well, Fakies. Had a few of these has dropped to the shot. back of the pack now. Third last position. Happy Tappy Tim and trailing his gold time Vixen. Calypso goes as the pace on the rail, prompted by Fainer's Fillets there on the outside with Ice Cube Baby right there with a three wide bid at the far turn run. Ice Cube Baby moving up to make three almost across the track. Top three separated by a length and a half or so as Calypso Ghost is still going. Calypso Ghost, the great down to the inside, uh, leads the way and uh, at the top of the stretch now, it is Calypso Ghost trying to hang on to the lead. And the outside, Fainer's Fillets pushing on by. Fainer's Fillets up on the outside. Also is a girl named Jack trying to pitch in. He's not done yet. He's gone. Two's going to win. I'm not going to win anything. Fainer's Fillets on the inside. Mm -hmm. Inside is Fainer's Fillets. Mm -hmm. Seven girl named girl named Jack. Mm -hmm. Seven girl named Jack. 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 With Ladro Defiki to make three chances. A 16th left to go. Ladro Defiki searching. Ladro Defiki. Ladro Defiki. A girl named Boom. Jack right there in the photo. With a Fainers rescue from the five. And and that, 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 I call that a rescue from hey, like, oh, When the sure. favorite has to come and rescue you. Uh-huh. Well, you got the rescue. You've been on fire at Laurel today, for sure. I told fire. you. I looked at Laurel. And I'm like, how are the... Minute this 13, many bad favorites and prices here. Because normally we look at Laurel and we're like, yeah, we can play this. Mm -hmm. Today was the day, for sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Rico, absolutely. The three gave me everything I could have asked for. I but pretty much did what I thought. If the seven would have not gone, maybe the three gets away. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have we could watch a Golden Gate race before the, uh, or we could just wait for the five minutes for Aqueduct here. Well, let's see and then, the folks, we we have the Lexington coming up. Yeah, let's see what the gates do. And only we haven't been out the gate all day. Uh, no Santa Anita this this week they will be back next week taking a week off uh show us what you got at uh at golden gate you find a price there i'm looking right now i honestly haven't looked at golden gate at okay. all we have a horse to watch here i got your okay, here you go three to five a lying ghost Definitely looks like a horse that doesn't have to win. Mm -hmm. We should have another algorithm called horses that don't have to win. <laughs> <laughs> I might suggest that one to Scotty. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll add that to the agenda for this week's meeting. Uh, I mean, there's just not much here. Maybe the three horse coming late. I have one for you too that I'd like to recommend. Horses that suck. <laughs> All right. How about a a four three exacta box or four three? Let's just look here. I want to see your note on the four first. I want to see your note on the four. You got a note on the four. The note. Terrible is trip. trip. Okay. Terrible. Terrible. Terrible, terrible trip, as Charles would say. Yes. So how about a four, five, three exacta box? Four, five, three exacta box. That'll pay pretty well if you can <laughs> get that in there. <clears throat> that um, that one horse that's the favorite, two wins out of 18 races there, Oldie, but six seconds, three thirds. So you take yeah. your top three there, you could slot the one in the second. You could you could slot the one in the third uh, and and build kind of around that, right? Yeah, I I just don't I'm just taking a crack against it altogether because I just don't like sure. anything here. And normally yeah. this is one I would say not to just ignore and not play. Yeah, you don't want to go too deep, but if you're going to throw you know four to eight twelve bucks at something like this, especially if you've had the day that you've had so far. Where you know you've got a few extra bucks to throw at some value things, um, you know six to to run you into eighty or ninety bucks is not bad, because that's probably what you'll get. Look at the problems there, Oldie. Show uh, show the good folks what uh, your little exacta is paying. 
and I will get Golden Gate teed up here. Well, one dollar exact uh, for four, five, six. So yeah. thirty-five to one, sixty to one. So pretty good prices there. Yeah, I mean, you can end up with you know decent stuff if you box those three for six bucks. Um, you're certainly not going to get hurt, that's for sure. Well, the Masters leaderboard has tightened up. Colin Morikara in uh, first place right now. He's minus He's three. off the pace. Huh? He's off the pace. Colin Morikawa. Yeah. Scotty Scheffler had some troubles there. Uh, he's plus two. Should be a good final round. Shambo in second. All right. Golden Gate, where are we at here? They're getting out here. We'll flip this up here. Oldie, and then we'll get to... Uh, let me do our leaderboard refresh here. Oh my God, my EE finally refreshed. Sunny spot goes in, lookout point. Carson's legacy to the outside. All right, Oli, we got 15 minutes to uh, Lexington. So we'll probably wrap up from there and then see what we have in between. And they're Did off. Did you again. ever find our uh, our like number there, and dude? They're off. I did not. Lion Ghost from an inside post setting out for the lead. Lolo Paniolo surging towards the front end as well. And those two are side by side as they take on that first turn. Lookout point behind the dueling leaders in third. And then in fourth, that is Sunny Spot Duel. now reclaiming third. Carson's legacy to the outside of Walking Boss at the back of the pack and about uh, six and a half from top to bottom as they get ready to transition to the back stretch. It's Lion Ghost and Lolo Paniolo who are first and second. To the back Sunny stretch. Spot is rating in Not third scared, carson's yeah. legacy gold clinkers in fourth four and a half off the lead then a link back to lookout point shuffled fifth and a margin of two to it's one the horse. trails the field first mm -hmm. quarter mile hey. 25.10 lying no, goes, spending a sensible pay though there going is going pressure each other. from lolo paniolo in third place sunny spot followed up by carson's legacy who continues to creep towards the inside, up into a almost a joint third. Two length off the lead will have to be patient as Sunny Spot makes a three-wide bid as they make the entry to the turn. Lookout point is in second last, and Walking Boss trails the field as they make the entry into the apex of the turn, and it's Sunny Spot with a three-wide bid. Lolo Paniolo, Ryan goes on, clicking along the inside third. Carson's legacy, on, ready to go in fourth. Click, click. Go to the outside for click, click, Whitaker, number six. comes Carson's legacy, three sixteenths to go. Sunny Spot made that daring move with Come on, six. For the front end. Come Carson's on. legacy trying to run that one. Oh, I should have played the try. Second, point now up into third. 16th to go. Sunny spot. Carson's legacy. Look out point on the outside. Here's the winning line. Carson's legacy win. Close for a second. Sunny you had to try, line. buddy. Out point. Then it I know. Boss. And my <laughs> going to pay bananas. Yes, buckets. Buckets. Long How did shot I not and... play that? <laughs> Multiple tickets for that. Aqueduct, quick. Okay. We're off. I don't even remember what I have here. here and he has it all. Is up by two. Like <laughs> That's the worst Davis, part. He has it all. Take him into the far turn. When I think I have. For that half mile time. Let's see. Iron it is. Ira's right there now moves to the outside here. Two five eight nine. The rail and Iron Man Ira's looming up on the outside. In on it is all in here from third at the rail. Judge rules. Manny Franco is now challenging for that third spot. I don't even see Ruin. the eight to be scratch. The red cap starts to make up some ground from the back. Mugsy Fury and Lane Leslie there on the move, but Iron Man Ira's been nicely throughout. 
reaches the top of the stretch, as tries to kick away its Iron Man Ira, trying to put it away. Iron Man Ira. Yeah, I think you're good here, dude. Got a Black Sabbath going on right now. Suit and is coming after Iron Man. I am Iron Man. Oh, he might not be Iron enough. Every stride inside the I'm afraid if I play the price is right, you can just get an email, so I won't do that. Wow, I mean, look at this. Look at this. Wow, I mean, look at this, dude. I mean, you had that nail. Uh, I said four, five. So Nick had it down as three, four, five. I said four, five, six. Yeah, right? he did. He said four, five, six. Exactly. So that exacta paid a lot. Why did I click on little pays? So the six over the four paid 107 for a buck, according to the. A try is going to. Yes, I played that, Tony, but not the try, just the exacta. Yeah. Super good. Right, should we sh that they still haven't gone official there? No. They they take some just as long as uh, to go official as it does to load in the gate. But then we can show a Moncton race sim. Yeah, let's show a Moncton race sim. Then we'll get out to Keeneland and then we'll wrap it up for the day. Yeah, I'll have to do a quick wrap to get out of here too. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you again, everybody, for joining us. Appreciate it. Smash the like button. We will be back next Saturday. We may have something going on on Wednesday nights here in the future. Uh, stay tuned for that. But um, um, hopefully you all are enjoying the Bruno Works. We will have race sims that we will be able to show you race to race hopefully very shortly when that will be publicly publicly released um you go ahead and add it i'm hoping me. it is going to take some take some time all right so <laughs> these races are 24 furlongs man these guys are actually jumping over downed trees these are timber stakes so um <laughs> it's just crazy that that the, the system picks this up uh, and, and does a race simulator for it. There's a horse to watch in the five, which is crazy to me that it's it yes. these things. So you're and at the, the morning five. line of four to five too, that we can eat morning line this. Yeah, and then that five just draws away. They go through like a forest when they run these races. If you uh, go search Moncton um, on Google, you'll be able to find, uh, of course, these races are already off, but you'll be able to find the replays. Crazy. They actually run over like a two lane road that they dump a bunch of dirt over. And it, it, when I see that, I think about the crossover at Santa Anita, like, yeah, we got nothing on you, man. We're running over a, a, a two lane asphalt road that we're, we're dumping a bunch of dirt over. But uh, backstory on this is that uh, Oldie and I uh, found this last year and we did a show and at the end we just watched all these Moncton races and laughed for like an hour. Uh, it's just crazy. First two Moncton races look really chalky. Mm -hmm. but let's look at the third one here. Yeah, big field at Moncton, eight horses. Yep. They're all going 24 furlongs because that's all they do there. It, it like they don't do five, five and a half, six. No, they do twenty-four. And I'm looking for like one of those big classic Moncton upsets. <laughs> this one might have Moncton's it. known for for its prices, like uh, like at Turfway, and mm -hmm. you know, beat the uh, U.S. Steeple Race. Association and tell them you want a cross forest pick four between Moncton and Tryon. Yeah, because Tryon was running today too.
but those guys are like cheap, man. They they run like seventeen per lunch. Um, I I want a full card of twenty four. Fion has one real flat race too. Oh, do they really? Yeah, every year there's one flat race. Hmm. We believe I think all. We get a big upset me. here. I, I'm gonna go with the with Animal Kingston, the seven horse. I've not watched this race. He's going with a 12 to 1 shot. He's been successful with these all days, folks. But that seven is. Uh, it looks like this. I got the wrong long shot. The six is coming. Uh huh. Boom. Big upset for the six there. And lastly, the, the, the finale of the, the Moncton pick five. <laughs> oh, Buffalo Mike. Buffalo Mike with the comment of the day. The trees are set at 24 feet. Yes. I mean, they literally chop down trees and run over them for these races. It's just nuts. And we would have never found this without the product because we were like, what the hell is monkey? Uh, it, it's in Aquabay, so it shows up on, uh, on EE. So. You don't see a morning line because these are all non-wagering events. They're uh, just for fun and entertainment. <laughs> Us. What's the point if you can't wager on it, you know? You I, people I, Chase I Association. Well, Let they, us they wager. probably don't have an AEW. They probably don't have uh, I know. Any, and any of those types of things. So uh, I'm going to get rid of Aqueduct. We're done with that and that. And we'll get over to Keeneland. They're coming out here on the paddock. Uh, Justin has seemed to be uh, just immersed himself into Keelan, which is good for him. Uh, glad he was able to get out there. Uh, two races left the the short in the grade the one game. Starts the last of the days, rolling double. Scratch the seven. Ever do it. Number seven, scratch. Post time at and less than five. Why isn't there a double, Oldie, from the last race to the next race? Right? Why can't you go like you know the last race until the first race tomorrow at Kingland? Well, why can't you have a Moncton Lexington double? <laughs> I don't know, man. But we're gonna try and have Jim Gibbon on next week to uh, kind of wrap up the Keeneland meet and thank him for rating to the post for the Stone Street Lexington for one secret chat on by Gelfenstein Farm. Okay. Guys, Rodriguez tweet Rodriguez Mike Rapoli and tell me you want him and Pat Rocky. to come on the show. Yeah, exactly. To the wine steward, that would be great. Paradise Farms Corporation. Uh, tweet that out. Tweet it out to Mike. Tweet it out to Pat Cummings. Get them on here. And uh, huh, Tony's ready for Belmont. Uh, Tony, I got to tell you, it's going to be two years before we get to Belmont. Yeah, so, very happy. Yeah, 26. They're tearing down the grandstand, buddy. Uh, the, there's no turf course. There's no dirt course. It's a big pile of sand and mud. But yeah, we would love to have Mike and, and Pat on. And I'm not, you know, I, I'm, I think you and I are aligned here, um, Oldie, is that I'm not here to, to tear either one of them down or put them in a bad spot. Just come and talk to us, man. We have yeah. questions. We have questions. We have ideas. And, mm -hmm. you know, we have a... We have one of the best audiences in all of horse racing, if not the best audience. And the audience that probably spends the most money on on betting on horse racing, too. Yeah, because you guys send it in. We know that. So, you we know, he should he should come on and talk to you guys and tell the quote unquote commissioner should tell you what he thinks and should answer our questions. You know, I some of the stuff he's doing and Pat trying to do is great for the gambler. So, you know, it, it's something we'd love to have him on for. Absolutely. But Tony's looking forward to 420. Aren't we all? 420. What day of the week is that, Oldie? Is that a weekend? Well, yeah, today's the 13th, so the math says it's next Saturday. Oh my lord! We will uh, have. I might, we might have to get some wigs and some. Uh, we might have to theme the show next week. Okay. Well, we got to get 
we got to reach out to Renny Time on Twitter, right, Mike? And we got to reach out to, and we got to get Vic Money. We got to get the uh, the consumers of that product on 420 for sure. Or at least Cheech Marin. And we'll try for Cheech. We'll try for Chong. We'll try for I, anybody. I feel like a, the the old Harry Carey bit that Will Ferrell used to do. Where he'd say the the next week we're gonna have on Albert Einstein. Tony, well, you want Albert to Einstein's dad? We'll try to get him anyways. Tony, if you're gonna if you have a good stable internet connection and mm -hmm. uh, it can come on be a video with a decent background, and same thing with you, Bill. We'll reach out to you guys during the week and bring some uh, and have the segment. Four twenty is an exciting day. Um, should be fun. We're on the it we're on the turf at Aqua. I mean, that should be so great. We'll get some tie-dye. Yeah. We'll just, like, play Pink Floyd all day long and, and kind of good stuff. Yeah. Burn some incense. Burn some incense. Put the towel under the – right at the crack of the door. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Stone Street. Stone Lexington. Street. Do you, think, do you think all the the winner or any horse that runs in this race race has any shot in the Derby? Well, I believe the last horse to win the Lexington and win the Derby was Charismatic. That's a long time ago. It is. So I, I'm going to go with no. I will. You know how many of these horses? actually will get in if they win. Because I believe it's only a 30-point qualifier. Oh, they shorted them here, huh? They always short the Lexington. I'm checking now. And I know it used to be. And I know they shook it up a little bit. In my opinion, you win a derby prep, you should get in. Yeah, I think it should work out it, that way. It offers 20 to the winner, 10 to the runner-up, 42 points total. I do look like uh, – I do like the fact that they they uh, discounted the um, um, the two-year-old money earned uh, in terms of getting on the derby. Yeah, Snoop Dogg on 420 for sure, Buffalo Mike. Buffalo Mike – uh, I, I'm going to, uh, and I think Goldie will support this. I'm going to charge you with coming up with a 420 limerick for next week that we can do on the open. All right, Mike, uh, you've got a week to figure that out. Give us a show 420 related uh, limerick, and uh, I will definitely do that on the open. Jockey trainer combo long shot that he could try here. That's what Richard is asking, Oldie. Jockey trainer combo long shot. All right, let's look. The ten and the four. That's the that that's 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 the trucker exacta. Ten four good buddy. Yes. I same, like it. Same thing with the uh, with uh, the nine to five. The Dolly Parton exacta there. You can work nine the to five. Or you can right. work five to nine. How about the mean John e Enos, uh, Adam Beshezda on the six? They're twenty eight percent. If you want a long shot, here comes Justin. Dilger moves into line. Yo, my brothers. Uh, I will tell you now shortly. Encino. Hey, hey, Justin. Last yeah, so last race for us, buddy. Liberal Arts goes in. All right, we are keyed on the one horse to hit in the try. It just took a ton of money a second ago. Um, but we are keyed to that with the two, the four, and the eight, nine, ten. Preferably, we want the one to hit the board with another price. Yeah, okay. five's going to win this race, so. Encino man, buddy, got away there. 
to the entrance and first we'll turn, and will do so. And Sino moves forward and now starts to work down toward the rail with the early lead. The wine steward will go second right behind the early leader as they swing around that first turn. How's your attitude? Stacks up toward the outside, now moves forward carefully from in between horses into second. And lucky Jeremy third was three wide around the first turn. The wine steward shuffled back into fourth. Hades is fifth on the outside. Secret chat, sixth toward the rail. Footprint is seventh. Dilger is eighth. Liberal arts, ninth and last for the move up the back stretch. The opening quarter, 23.55 seconds. Encino, the leader. Encino leads it by three quarters of a length. How's your attitude? Second, same margin. Sure. Here's the wine Start steward moving up to challenge for third. Yes. Just inside Sorry, of sure Jeremy. They're joined by Sorry, Hades. Now, Hades is fifth. Has to angle to the far outside. Will be caught wide going on to the far turn. Just over two lengths off the lead. And then further back, Secret Chat, Dilger, Footprints, Liberal Arts at the back. It was 47.28 seconds the time for the first uh, half mile. Encino leading the wine, wine steward. steward. The wine steward starts Come to on, move on the rail. Come on, Come on, Juan. Still a length off the lead, though. Secret Chat goes to third. It's so with the... Front. It's Dilger with the... Is fourth on his outside. It's with the Hades chalk. Is still some ten lengths off the lead. Top of the short stretch. And Sino uh, not here, the wine steward, is right alongside. Sir. These two now going at it, moving into the final furlong. Gap of five more lengths to Dilger and then Secret Chat. And Sino with a neck in front. The wine steward is second. And Sino giving everything he's got. Turns back to challenge and wins the Stone Street Lexington with, uh, under Florent Giroux. With the the more they asked, horses. the more he gave. There's Brad. Brad. That was fun, though. It was good. I uh, got my bankroll officially down to zero. I even bet my less $2 on the one. Uh, but that was good. It was fun. Oli, I heard you're on fire. Oh, Oli's been killing it. I mean, killing it at Golden Gate. At Laurel, uh, multiple price horses there. Uh, he he gave out a four five six. I should have been. I should have been playing in a tournament today. I had the, I had multiple fifteen to one or great or greater horses at uh, uh, let's say ten to one or greater horses at Laurel. Yeah. And yeah, the, yeah, yeah. All right, I got to run, guys. Unfortunately. You're good. I'm gonna hop off too, Chris. Just I gotta figure out and clean up in here and stuff are you hopping off right now yes we are right. going to shut her down thank you everyone for joining appreciate all the support hit the like button on the way out justin enjoy your day out there at keeneland tomorrow we will be back at it next week on saturday join the coaching classes thursday friday saturday Join the Scotty and Bruno Odd Couple show on Thursday nights when you're off the chain. And then Scotty and David Harrison with that NHC show, which is really getting some good traction. Join that. Play the NHC tournaments. We'll see you in Vegas next year. Thank you all for joining. Have a wow. great day. Thanks, Chris. Have a good one, folks.